J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program, coming to you from the Ritz Theater in New York City, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, there being just two more shopping days till Christmas, we bring you that fugitive from Gimbel's basement, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you. Jello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And Don, speaking of Gimbel's basement, I never saw so many women shopping in my life. I got shoved around like a blintza in Lindy's. <laughs> Boy, what a mob. Pretty hectic, huh? Hectic. You know, Don, I can understand my derby getting caved in, my muffler torn, and the sleeve of my coat ripped off. But how I lost my pivot tooth, I'll never know. <laughs> That was really an experience. <laughs> oh, I can just imagine what you must have gone through. You know, a funny thing about women, Don, all year long, they're so helpless. You have to open the door for them. They can't light their own cigarettes. They cling to your arm as you walk down the street. They're as delicate as butterflies. And then, about two weeks before Christmas, a mad glint comes into their eyes. And with an umbrella for gouging and a handbag for slugging... Off they go. <laughs> Come on, girls, let's mangle the mail. <laughs> That's their battle cry. Well, Jack, women are a little excitable when they're shopping around Christmas time, but I don't think they're as tough as you say. Oh, you don't, eh? Don, I was in Macy's yesterday afternoon, and a little gray-haired lady, couldn't have been over five feet tall, put down her cane and yanked a washing machine right out of my arm. <laughs> I tried to get it back, and she kicked my hat off. <laughs> Imagine My goodness, Jack You don't mean to say That a little old lady Took a big washing machine Away from you Don, I wouldn't have Minded that so much But it was a demonstrator I'll probably never Get my laundry back <laughs> That is my own fault I guess For waiting so long To shop Oh, hello, Mary Hello, doll Doll? Well Look who's so affectionate Around Christmas You're certainly giving out With that soft soap Oh, no, I'm not, Jack You're not, eh? Then why did you call me doll? Because your hair is glued on <laughs> All right, all right, young lady, that did it. There goes that mink coat I was going to buy you for a present. You were going to buy me a mink coat? Yes, I were, or was. <laughs> I was going to buy you a mink coat. I bet it were, or was, from Rabbit. <laughs> oh, no, it wasn't. You've lost a very beautiful gift. And you know, and you know the kind I hand out. Go on, you wouldn't buy Hedy Lamar a Coca-Cola. For Christmas? What are you talking about? <laughs> Let me tell you something, Mary. A girl like Hetty Lamar could make a playboy out of me. I'd buy her quarts of bubbling champagne. You'd buy cider and put an Alka-Seltzer in it. <laughs> All right, keep it up, keep it up. There goes Don's Christmas present, too. Hey, wait a minute, Jack. I didn't say anything. Oh, pardon me, Don. I got a little mixed up there. Watch out, Don. He's laying for you. No, I wouldn't forget about Don's present. Not after the way he laughed at the premiere last Tuesday night. How'd you like the picture, Don? Oh, I really enjoyed it, Jack. I got a big kick out of it. I laugh like anything. Sorry, Mary. The mink coat is over the dam. <laughs> anyway, Don, now that you've seen Love Thy Neighbor, what do you think of Fred Allen in it? Well, to tell you the truth, Jack... I mean, don't you feel... <laughs> don't you feel that I get much bigger laughs than he does? Well, to tell you the truth, Jack, I think you're very good in the picture, and so is Alan. The honors are mm -hmm. equally distributed. Oh. Oh, I see. Oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Mary. Then, Don, in your fat-headed opinion, <laughs> you think Alan goes over as good as I do. Exactly. You both have a lot to do in the picture, you both photograph well, and you both get big laughs. Well, we both don't pay your salary, so start leaning my way. <laughs> Imagine saying we photograph equally well. That's ridiculous. Jack looks much better than Alan. Why, certainly. And Alan, you can have. <laughs> Mary, one more crack out of you, and you'll be saying, Oh, my goodness, I left my baby in the automat for Olsen and Johnson. <laughs> Remember that. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Well, old pal, you got nothing to worry about. I got your Christmas present bought, packed, and ready to hand over. Oh, so you've been shopping too, eh, Phil? You said it. All day yesterday, one store after another. Well, did the women kick you around much? Yeah, but I got it coming to me. <laughs> You 
said it. You know, Phil, I've been so busy, I haven't had a chance to buy your present yet. Uh, what did you get for me? I ain't saying. You'll have to wait till Christmas. Oh, come on, Phil. Tell me. All right, Jackson, I'll tell you what I bought you. Remember that camel's hair overcoat we saw in the window on Fifth Avenue? The one you were so nuts about? Yeah. Well, I got you a box of nuts. <laughs> oh, well, Phil, unless you're kidding... When Mary is in the audience stooging for Olson and Johnson, you'll be in the lobby trying to get out of a straitjacket. <laughs> Catch on? The way I've been going the last few nights, a straitjacket wouldn't be bad. He's not fooling, folks. <laughs> you know, Phil lives on the 18th floor of the St. Moritz Hotel, and he never uses the elevator. He just goes in and out the window. <laughs> Now, Phil. Yeah? It's about uh, a little quicker on the yeah. You know, when I say now, Phil, you come right back. Yeah, there's no laugh when I say now, Phil, you know. Yeah. It's about time for a band number, so let's have it. What are you going to play? I don't know. This bunch don't speak English. Oh, fine. Well, don't worry about it, Phil. Just pick up your baton and follow him. Go ahead, kid. <laughs> That was Jingle Bells, played by Phil Harris and his Central Park troubadours. Uh, troubadours meaning they are traveling musicians, and Central Park meaning they ought to get a room tonight. <laughs> that joke went over better the first show. It shows you we should change for the night show. <laughs> what a gang you picked up here, Phil. Huh? Well, music is just a sideline with these boys. I know, and I wish you'd tell the drummer to stop pestering me. I've got all the potato peelers I need. <laughs> Those guys sell everything from razor blades to mink coats. Ha uh ha! -huh. What are you all hoeing about? Think the fiddle player has wonderful <laughs> mink. <laughs> I saw him. Hello, Mr. Benny. Uh, hello, Dennis. Boy, am I a wreck. Women, women, nothing but women. <laughs> Oh, have you? Have you been shopping, too? No, I just came from Roseland. Oh. oh, ten cents a dance, eh? Yeah, I cleaned up. <laughs> Say, Dennis. Dennis, I hear that you and Kenny Baker have been stepping out and seeing the town together. Is that right? Yeah, and you know what, Mr. Benny? What? The other night, I made him pay for everything. I stuck him for $2.45. You did? Well, now, Dennis, that's not very nice. If Kenny is kind enough to show you a good time, the least you can do is go 50-50. Or better still, pay all the expenses yourself. It's all right to save money, Dennis, but there's nothing like being a good sport. <laughs> <laughs> What's that for, Miss Livingston? Everybody else knows. <laughs> You see, Dennis, there's only one way to be popular. When you're out with a fella and he reaches for the check, you take it first. And if he should pick it up, you grab it right out of his hand. Grab it. I can't stand this. <laughs> Mary, come back here. Okay. What's the matter with you? Dennis is just a kid, and while he's still young, he's got to be taught how to conduct himself in public and not be a cheapskate. I don't understand you, Mr. Benny. No, you don't? <laughs> I don't understand you, Mr. Benny. You don't understand. Well, look, Dennis, I'll explain it to you. <laughs> Dennis, we'll go out for a bite to eat after the broadcast, and I'll show you what I mean. I'll pick up the check, and you take it away from me. <laughs> See? Then I'll take it away from you, and then you take it away from me. Then what? That's all, Bob. <laughs> Mary, I warned you. Cut it out, kid. Say, Jackson. Yes, Phil? My band number's over, and I still got a lot of Christmas shopping to do. Do you mind if I run along? Why, no, Phil. In fact, I think I'll go with you. There are a lot of things I got to get myself. Don, you can take charge of the rest of the program, can't you? Oh, sure, sure. Don't worry about it, Jack. Come on with us, Mary. I want you to help me pick out a few things. Okay, but don't embarrass me. I won't. You know, there's a swell store near my hotel, the Sherry Netherlands, where I can buy almost... <laughs> Wait a minute. Answer the phone, Mary. Okay. Hello? Hello, Miss Livingston. This is Rochester. Oh, boy, are you going to get it? 
Jack, it's Rochester. Rochester. <laughs> Give me that phone. I'll find out right now where he's been for the past two weeks. Hello? Oh, boss, what happened to you? Where you been? <laughs> Where have I been? I've been on the phone for the last 10 days trying to reach you. I called every hotspot in Harlem that's got a telephone. At the hot ones, you can't hear it ring. <laughs> Rochester, I don't want any flippancies. I want the truth. Now, we arrived in New York a week ago Thursday. The 12th, they tell me. <laughs> yes, the 12th. It is now December 22nd. Just three days before Christmas. Happy Yuletide, boys! Never mind that! <laughs> what I want to know is, what became of the time between December 12th when we got here and December 22nd, which is today? Well? Well? Well, on Friday the 13th, I was right up to the door of your hotel, ready to go to work. Uh-huh. And just as I was about to enter, a black cat ran across my pad. I see. Well, couldn't you walk around the cat? I did and wound up at 125th Street. <laughs> oh, well, so much for Friday. Now, what happened on Saturday and Sunday? I weekend ended up to Harlem. Up a Hudson, that up is. The Hudson. Take it again. <laughs> huh? How did I know when he's on the other side of the telephone? Okay. Well, we'll get to Monday. I must be psychic. <laughs> then we'll get to Monday. After your weekend, Rochester, why didn't you call me at my hotel? I was so full of sherry, I couldn't think of Netherlands. <laughs> now, don't give me that. Look, Rochester, I haven't any more time to argue with you. Where are you calling from? Uh, what's that, boss? I said, where are you right now? Just a minute. What's the address here, Sugar? 31 Lennox Avenue, honey. 31 Lennox Avenue, honey. <laughs> Rochester, who are you talking to? Susan Brown, the sweetest gal in town. Oh, yeah, I spoke to her last week and left a message for you. Did you get it? Just a minute. Honey, did you give me a message from Mr. Benny? Why, Rochester, you knows I did. She forgot to give it to me, boy. <laughs> oh, she forgot to give it to you, eh? Yeah, she's as dizzy as a blonde, but it can't happen here. <laughs> I see. Now, Rochester, I want you to go over to my hotel right away. That made up for the one you muffed. <laughs> I want you to go over to my hotel right away. There's a lot of work to do, and it's got to be done before tomorrow. Yes, sir. Now, how soon can you get over there? Just a minute, boss. Say, Sugar, I don't think I'll be able to take you to the Savoy Ballroom tonight. Oh, that's all right, honey. I'll get somebody else. You better not get somebody else. I ain't going up there alone, Rochester. I want somebody to snuggle up to. You get somebody to snuggle up to, and it'll be your last snug. <laughs> Rochester. And I do mean last. You threaten me, Shorty, and I'll cut them $9 out of your hip pocket. <laughs> Rochester, answer me. I want you to come right over to my hotel. Leaving right away, boss. So long. Goodbye. Now, listen, sugar, don't make any date. I'll run over to see Mr. Benny, put on the old personality, and be back here in a half hour. Rochester, you forgot to hang up. Uh-oh. Oh, Rochester. <laughs> yes, boy. <laughs> I heard your conversation. Don't you believe it? Get over here. <laughs> Goodbye. And the same trouble with that guy every time I come to New York. Come on, Mary, let's go shopping while I'm mad. Yeah, that'll hold you down. Let's go, Phil. Right with you, Jackson. All right, Dennis, let's have your song. <laughs> Boy, what a crowd. Sit close to me, Phil. You too, Mary. I don't want you to get lost. Okay, Papa. Hmm. Are you going to take us to see Santa Claus, Daddy? <laughs> Type down, both of you. Got to have some system here. Now, let's see my Christmas list. I got to buy a compact or something for my Aunt Molly. 
a lawnmower for Dennis, <laughs> a Mickey for my rider. <laughs> Let's see. A deck of cards for Simney. <laughs> Let's see. What else here? Gee, look at that crowd of women at the bargain counter. Where? Oh, boy, what a mob. See you later, Jackson. I'm going over and mingle. See you later. <laughs> Gosh, I wish I knew what to get for Aunt Molly. Mary, I wonder if she could use a lipstick. Has she got lips? What do you think? <laughs> she got lips. Here's a counter. Here. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Uh, I'd like a lipstick, please. Oh, come now. <laughs> Look, it's not for me. I'm buying it for my Aunt Molly. I see. <laughs> a lipstick for your Aunt Molly. That's who it's for. She lives in Chicago on LaSalle Street. What number? <laughs> I don't know the number. Oh, you don't know the number, and yet you want to send a lipstick to your Aunt Molly. <laughs> I'm not going to send it. I'm going to take it to her. I'm going to stop off in Chicago on my way to California. Oh, I suppose you're the only one that ever went to California. <laughs> what are you talking about? I live in California. I got a home there. Well, I've got a home here, but I don't brag about it. <laughs> I wasn't bragging. Now, look, mister, all I want is a lipstick. Am I going to get it or not? Sorry, I've decided against you. <laughs> Next case, please. <laughs> the guy isn't screwy, then I don't know why. More trouble over a lipstick. Mary, I ought to go over to the grocery department and get Don a case of Jell-O. He'll love it for Christmas. And why don't you get two cases so you can fill a stocking? I'll get all the six flavors. That'll do it. And Mary, while we're in the store, I think I'll buy a collar button. I need one. Yeah, your Adam's apple ain't practical. <laughs> it's just an emergency. I lost the button. There's the men's department over there. Pardon me, could you tell me where I can buy an evening gown so I should look like Lena Turner? <laughs> Miss, that's Lana Turner. Lena, Lana, I'll never make it. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, miss. I'm Jack Benny. I'm not a floor walker. I saw your picture. Get ready. <laughs> hmm. well, she looks like Babe Marks. <laughs> Come on, Mary. Let's get that collar button. <laughs> I haven't got much time. You'd have plenty of time if you stopped flirting with that girl. Who was flirting? She thought I was a floor walker, didn't she? Well, you didn't have to roll your big blue eyes at her. Mary, just because my eyes happen to be large and devil may carry. <laughs> Don't have to accuse me of flirting. Here we are. Good evening, sir. What can I do for you? I'd like to buy a collar button. A collar button? Yes, sir. Now, here's a nice one for $85. $85 for a collar button? Yes, that includes dress shirt, tie, socks, patent leather shoes, and a double-breasted tuxedo. Well, that's a good buy, all right, but all I want is a collar button. Sorry, we never break up a set. <laughs> well, now, that's ridiculous. You know, mister, I've shopped in every city in the United States, but I've never been in a store like this. I tried to buy some lipstick a few minutes ago. Lipstick? Oh, come now. <laughs> It sounds silly, but I had a good reason. And the salesman at that counter insulted me. Oh, Jack, look. What is it? Look who's over there at that counter. Where? Right there. Isn't that Kenny Baker buying a camera? Well, sure enough, it is Kenny. Let's go over and say hello. <laughs> Gee, miss, this camera looks swell. I think I'll take it. How much is it? Three dollars. Three dollars? Gee, Dennis would like it all right, but... Haven't you got something for 55 cents? Well, yes, but I thought you wanted to spend $3. I do, but he's already hooked me for $2.45. Oh, Kenny. Hello, Kenny. Huh? Oh, well, well, I'll be doggone. Hello, Jack. How are you, Mary? Gee, I'm glad to see you. Gosh, Kenny, I haven't seen you in a long time. Gee, you're, you're getting to be a big boy now. I sure am. You want a cigar, Jack? Oh, my goodness. Look, Mary, he's got a whole pocket full of cigars. Yeah, I had them left over from Wilkie. <laughs> oh, fine. Same old Kelly. How about a little kiss, Mary? Okay. Hmm. Big boy, all right. Cigars and everything, huh? All right, kids, break it up. Come on. 
Wow, he has grown up. Say, that was a real kiss, huh? Personally, I'm a wreck. <laughs> well, pull yourself together. Come on with us, Kenny. You can buy your camera later. I want to talk to you. Okay. I'll see you later. I've got to buy some hose. All right. So long, Larry. Say, Kenny, how do you like your new job? See, that Fred Allen is pretty tough to work for, isn't he? No, he's swell. We get along great together. Oh. <laughs> but I'll bet you don't have as much fun as you used to have on the old Jello show. Gee, you remember all the laughs and good times and everything? Yeah. But I'm having a wonderful time with Fred. Ah. Gee, talk about laughs. Say, he's a riot. That's so? Yeah. <laughs> and you know what, Jack? Mr. Allen pays me every week. <laughs> hmm. Does, eh? Yep. Pays you every week. Huh? Yeah, none of that see me later, kid stuff. <laughs> Well, you must have a pretty short memory, Kenny. I used to have that envelope for you every week, too. Yeah, but with Mr. Allen, I don't have to play treasure hunt. <laughs> oh, well, good, clean sport. Never hurt anybody. Say, Kenny. Yes, please? Oh, fine. <laughs> Say, Kenny, I just happened to think of something. Remember the time you first came to work for me and I invited you over to the house for a Thanksgiving party? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget how bashful you were. You remember I asked you if you wanted to have some more turkey? Yeah, and I was so darn nervous I said yes. Oh, that turkey wasn't so bad. Have you got much left? <laughs> Same old Kenny. Gosh, I'll never forget the time. Kenny, remember when it was Halloween and I didn't know you were in the backyard? Yeah. All of a sudden, I heard a noise at the window, and there you were. Wasn't that funky? Oh, I sure was, <laughs> Merry Christmas. See you Wednesday, Miss Benny. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this being the fifth day of January, we bring you a man who is still doing his Christmas shopping, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, when you saw me in that department store yesterday, I wasn't shopping. I was exchanging some of my Christmas gifts. Well, that's quite a coincidence. I was doing the same thing. Would you believe it, Jack? Three different friends gave me electric razors. Now, you think that's bad? I got enough bottles of cologne to have people whistle at me for the next 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, Don. I must have gotten 25 bottles of that stuff. Oh, what are you going to do with it all? I gave it to Rochester, and he's going to throw a cocktail party. <laughs> He uh, mixes it with orange ice and calls it a Central Avenue lullaby. <laughs> uh, but when you saw me in that store, Don, I was only exchanging the gift uh, Phil Harris gave me. You were? Why, Phil told me he gave you a lovely present. Oh, it was lovely, yes, but I don't know. I didn't feel right in it. Oh, well, you shouldn't have exchanged it, Jack. You'll hurt his feelings. I don't care whether I hurt his feelings or not. I'm too old for an Indian suit. <laughs> I don't know what's the matter with Phil He gives the darnest Christmas presents Last year he sent me a manhole cover Imagine a manhole cover Oh yes, I remember that What'd you ever do with it, Jack? What could I do? I put Home Sweet Home on it and hung it on the wall <laughs> And I wish you could have seen what the... Oh, hello, Mary Hello, Jack Happy New Year, Don Same to you, Mary What about me? It's a wonder you wouldn't thank me for the swell time I showed you New Year's Eve. You didn't even phone me. I want to do it big. I'm going to hire a skywriter. <laughs> it won't be necessary. You know, Don, I took Mary to the Wilshire Bowl. And boy, was I raring. At the stroke of 12, I grabbed a horn and blew the old year right out. You did, huh? Yep. And at 12.01, Jack put the horn in his pocket and said, let's go home. Mary, the only reason I suggested going home early was because I didn't want to have a hangover the next day. A hangover? From what? Breaking balloons? <laughs> Listen, Mary, don't try to give the impression that I'm an old dodo. I was the life of the party. I had you on that dance floor every minute. Anything to keep me from eating. <laughs> you ate, sister. You... <laughs> Believe me. You had the special T-bone steak with French fried potatoes and choice of two vegetables, including tax, $1.29. <laughs> No, very well, you had a swell time Okay, I had a swell time You 
Darn tootin'. Say, Mary, is Jack a good dancer? I couldn't tell. That was the first time I ever did the turkey trot. <laughs> that wasn't the turkey trot at all. I was doing the laconga. The laconga? Yes. Couldn't you hear me going? One, two, three. Uh. One, two, three. Uh. One, two, three. Uh. What'd you think that was? I thought your rheumatiz was giving you the biz. <laughs> That was very funny, Mary. You know, I wonder why you and Phil don't quit this program and get one of your own. Harris and Livingston, every week an audition. <laughs> You're too smart for this show. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Happy New Year. Same to you, kid. Is anybody an aspirin? Oh, boy, what a head I got. Why, Dennis, I'm ashamed of you. I bumped it getting out of my car. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. I'm sorry. That's all right. You can bump your head. <laughs> I thought you meant you'd been celebrating too freely. By the way, Dennis, uh, where did you go New Year's Eve? I went there. Don't worry. Oh. <laughs> okay. Say, I wonder what's keeping Phil. You went where, Dennis? Never mind. I went there every night, just like you told me to. All right, all right. <laughs> Say, Don, have you seen... Dennis, where have you been going every night? Mary, it's none of your business. It's a good picture, all right, but, gee, I can't laugh all the time. <laughs> Dennis, please. I'd rather go back to mowing your lawn. <laughs> now, Dennis, I don't want to hear another word about it. Why, Jack Benny, do you mean to say you've been sending the kid downtown to laugh at your picture every night? Mary, I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, Dennis, it's time for your song. So let's have it. My girl laughed at Fred Allen, but don't worry, I kicked her. <laughs> now, Dennis, everybody's waiting for your song, so let's have it, please. What's it gonna be? A brand new number called I'm Gonna Round Up My Love. That'll be fine, go ahead. And by the way, if your girl thinks Fred Allen is so funny, get another one. Mary, stop looking at me like that. <laughs> Do you hear? Oh, brother. I wish that kid wouldn't babble so much. <laughs> that was... That was I'm Gonna Round Up My Love, sung by Dennis Day. There you are, Dennis. That was swell. You were in very good form. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> Jack. Why, Dennis, what's come over you? You've always called me Mr. Benny. Well, I saw so much of you last week, I feel like we're old friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. But you know, Dennis, I kind of like the idea of your calling me Mr. Benny. It adds a little dignity to the program and shows uh, your respect for me. Do you want me to call you Mr. Benny, too? That won't be necessary, Mary. Gee... I can call him Jack. And now, folks... Wait till the girls at the May Company hear about this. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Don't get smart, Miss Livingston. Oh, do call me Mary. Now, cut that out! <laughs> you asked me a question, I answered it. Now, let's forget it. Well, look who finally breezed in. Hiya, Jackson. Am I late? No, Phil. Uh, we realize that taking up a half hour of your valuable time once a week is... Quite an imposition. Now, hold on, Jackson. In fact, Phil, I think that next Sunday I'm going to have a microphone installed across the street in the pool room so you can say hi, you folks, without putting your cue down. <laughs> would, you, uh, would you care for that? Now, before you bawl me out, Jackson, I want to tell you that I'm a changed man. You're looking at the new Harris. Oh, I am, eh? I'm not kidding. Oh. On January the 1st, I made a resolution. I'm going to cut out smoking, cut out drinking, cut out gambling, and I'm going to cut out staying up so late. Well, I'm glad to hear it. When are you going to cut out running after women? When they stop running. <laughs> I thought so. Well, Phil, here's another resolution for you during this new year. Why don't you learn something about music? You mean I should be like Stokowski? No, Phil. All I ask, all I ask is when you pick up a piece of paper that has lines across it, and little black dots all over it. Don't look at your boys and say, there's a spy around here. This stuff is in code. <laughs> <laughs> little as they know, it embarrasses them. <laughs> okay, Jackson, that'll be another one of my resolutions. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we will have a number by Phil Harris and his orchestra who will play it not backwards, not forwards, but in their usual manner. They will start in the middle and blast both ways. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, all right, Phil, let's have it. Okay. Say, uh, by the way, Jackson, I got my expense account on our New York trip all made out. You want to see it now? Uh, no, Phil, I'll look it over later. What is it total up to? Three thousand four hundred. Give me that. <laughs> Let me see that expense account. There you are. I got the whole thing itemized. That's itemized. <laughs> itemized. If you don't mind, I'll look it over. Let's see here. Mm, hotel room, $42 a week. That's reasonable. Meals for two weeks, $63. That's very reasonable. You don't have to read it, Jackson. It's in perfect shape. I'll just give it a quick glance. Now, let's see. Hey, Jack, look. There's one item you can't complain about. Where? Right there. Laundry for two weeks, 37 cents. <laughs> Oh, yes, uh, that's not bad uh, Let's see what else he has here Bottle opener, 10 cents Ice, 250 Bromo, $135 What do you want us to play, Jackson? Wait a minute, Phil, I'm not through yet Taxi cabs, 1150 that's okay Charles Bagby, musical arrangements for orchestra 37 cents. 37 cents? That must be the same guy that does his laundry. <laughs> yeah. See, what else is here? IGR, $45. $45? Phil, what's this IGR? I got robbed. <laughs> My goodness, you don't expect me to pay for that. <laughs> You don't expect me to pay for that, do you? Oh, what are you beefing about? I never even charged you for bailing out my guitar player. <laughs> oh, well, that's very sweet of you. Now, let's see. Well, here we are again. Bromo, 100. <laughs> Bill, you and I will talk this whole thing over later. In the meantime, let's have a band number. Okay. Look at this next item, Mary. Elevator, $400. What could he want with an elevator? <laughs> That was There'll Be Some Changes Made, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra, where there will be some changes made. <laughs> and, uh, Phil, getting back to your New York expense account, it's a ridiculous total, and I'm not paying for all of your hilarity. Okay, Jackson. But as long as we're on the subject of the dough, how about that 50 bucks I won from you from the Rhodes Bowl game? That you can take to court. <laughs> I didn't see the game, Phil, so the bet's off. I thought you'd squirm out of it. Well, yeah. Jack, I thought you told me you were going to the Rose Bowl game. I did go, but I, I didn't stay. <laughs> Tell him what happened, Jack. Mary, Don wouldn't be interested. Oh, yes, I would. What happened, Mary? Well, Don, it was like this. The woman for you. Jack got the tickets and told us to meet him in front of Tunnel 16 at 1.30. 1.30, 1.30. <laughs> well, anyway, Phil Dennis and I took a cab. But when we got to the bowl, Jack wasn't there yet. So we waited and waited and waited. You should have seen the crowd, Don. There were thousands of people. Programs, programs. Names and numbers of all the players. Program, miss. No, thanks. Come on, fellas. Let's go in. We can't go in. We gotta wait for Jackson. Yeah, he's got the ticket. I don't see why he didn't come with us. Well, you know how romantic Jack is. He's bringing his girlfriend Gladys to the game, and they're driving out alone in the Maxwell. Say, that little waitress ain't so bad looking when she gets dressed up. I think that Jackson's stuck on her. You said it. Yeah, he said it. <laughs> Dennis, why don't you go get lost in the crowd? Don't think I couldn't. <laughs> Hey, look, Mary, ain't that Jack and Gladys coming this way? Oh, yes. Jack would be wearing a beanie. And get a load of that fur coat on Gladys. <laughs> Gee, Gladys, I, I never saw you looking so good. You're sure pretty when you're all dolled up. Thanks, Seedy. <laughs> I mean it. Get your programs here. Program, mister, 15 cents. Oh, Speedy, can I have a program? You're darn right you can. Here's a half a dollar, buddy. Keep the chain. Oh, boy. Now I can get my two pay out of Hawk. (laughs) 
Well, here's the gang, Gladys. Hiya, fellas. All set for the game? Yeah, oh, I've been yeah. waiting on you, Jackson. Come on. Say, Gladys, you know Mary and Dennis, don't you? Sure. Hello, everybody. Hello. Gee, Gladys, that's a pretty fur. Did you trap it yourself? <laughs> you know darn well I gave it to her for Christmas. Oh, pardon me, honey. Do you know Phil Harris? Do I? Hmm. Hiya, Gladys. I'll have a ham on rye. Now, Phil, <laughs> cut that out. <laughs> Not working today. Come on, fellas. Here's our gate. Let's go. Take it, take it. Hold your own stubs, please. Here you are. Oh, hello, Gladys. Hello, Eddie. How are you? Fine. Taking your old man to the game? <laughs> I'm not her old man. I'm her fella. Come on, sweetheart. Say, where's Dennis? I'm stuck in the turnstile. <laughs> well, push it a little, for heaven's sake. Here's Tunnel 16 over this way. Oh, yeah. Say, Gladys, are you still working at the Shamrock Cafe? No, I'm at a drive-in now. Speedy thought I ought to be outside where it's healthier. <laughs> Darn right. What's the use of being in California and not enjoy the sun? It's great for you. Yeah, I wish I could get off the night shift. <laughs> you will, honey Well, here's the entrance, kids Say, look who's here Hiya, Gladys Happy New Year Same to you, Lefty Lefty? Hmm Who's that fresh guy, Gladys? Lefty Flanagan Boy, can he drive a truck I can imagine Hey, look There's a hot dog stand Let's see Yeah, you want a hot dog, Gladys? I'm not hungry right now Okay, we'll get him inside Better get one now, Gladys. You know Seedy. That's Speedy. <laughs> All right, I'll go over and buy the hot dogs. Everybody wait here so you won't get lost. Hey, mister, five hot dogs, please. Five puppies coming up? Oh, hello, Stranger. Why, slap them up! Of all people, Schlepperman, are you running a hot dog stand now? And look at my sign, Zachary boy. All the hot dogs you can eat for 10 cents. That's fine, but how can you make money with an offer like that? Taste one and you're tasting the answer. <laughs> oh, they're, they're pretty tough weenies, eh? What suitcase handles they would make? <laughs> well, they still look good to me. Give me five of them. Okay, what kind of mustard do you want? Mustard? What kind? Yeah, sure. I got strong, mild, and Chanel number five. Oh, mild, I guess. How much do I owe you? Five hot dogs, 50 cents. Well, that's fair enough. Here's a dollar. Here's a quarter. Thanks for the tip. <laughs> You're welcome. So long, Slep. So long. Get your red hats here. You ain't kept till you dine with Slep. <laughs> Well, here you are, kids. Take your hot dog. Thanks, Jack. Here's my dime. Keep it. Everything's on me today. Gee, I'm thirsty. What are we going to drink with our hot dog? Here you are, Gladys. Put that back in your pocket. <laughs> Phil, just for once, why don't you see a football game where four teams aren't playing? <laughs> now, where's Dennis? He'll be back in a minute. Oh. <laughs> Well, well, he's, uh, he's got his own ticket. Let's go in. Here's the tunnel. Gee, it's dark in here. Huh? So dark in here. <laughs> yeah. Say, Speedy, remember the time we went through the tunnel of love at Ocean Park? Oh, Gladys, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Cut it out. Oh, I'm sorry I slapped you. Gladys, it's all over. Forget it. <laughs> Now, come on. Stubbs, please. There you are. Right this way. Oh, hello, Gladys. Hello, Nick. Where you been keeping yourself? Oh, I've been around where you been. Come on, come on. Show us our seats. <laughs> Listen, Gladys, do you have to talk to every fellow you meet? Oh, Speedy, you're so jealous. I'm not jealous. Here are your seats, mister. Thanks. <laughs> Say, 
Say, these, these seats are all right, aren't they? Yeah, right on the old 40-yard line. Say, Jack, who's playing here today? Two of the finest teams in the country, Stanford and Nebraska. Then why does your pennant say, love thy neighbor on it? <laughs> I gotta wave something, don't I? You know, I kinda like Nebraska. Well, I'm for Stanford. You wanna make a little bet, Jackson? Yeah, I might. Hey, Gladys, how are you? Oh, there's Lefty Gordon. Hello, Lefty. Another lefty. Don't you know anybody that's right-handed? <laughs> well, I used to go with him. Used to, used to. You're going with me now. I wish you wouldn't talk to everybody. Hey, Jackson, what about that bet? Okay, Phil. You've got Stanford, and I've got Nebraska. Oh, yeah, pal. Is this seat back an old pal, old pal? Oh, fine. <laughs> yes, a young man has it. He'll be here in just a minute. Oh, don't mention it, pal. Hey, friend of yours is a friend of mine. <laughs> This would happen to me. How much dough you want to bet, Jackson? Any amount you say, brother. Just name it. Okay, 50 bucks. Hmm. 50, eh? Take another number, Phil. <laughs> oh, no. If he wants to bet 50 bucks, it's okay with me. Quiet, quiet. I want to hear the game. The game hasn't started yet. No, thanks. I never touch it. <laughs> How can you talk to a guy like that? Look, Jack, here comes the Nebraska team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gee, they're a husky bunch of fellas. Yeah, listen to that crowd. Yes, sir. You know, Gladys, I'll bet there are 90,000 people here. That's terrible. Many thousand people without a home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Many thousand people. What are you talking about? <laughs> They've got homes. They're here for the game. Oh, no, no. You're just saying that because I'm your pal. <laughs> You're not my pal. I never saw you before in my life. No, thanks. I never trust you. <laughs> I don't know why I always run into one of these guys. Ignore him, Gladys. I am Gladys, old pal, old pal. Don't you dare speak to her. Here, hold my coat, Mary. He's on the floor already. What do you want? <laughs> Well, he can't talk like that. Hey, look, Jackson, here comes that good old Stanford team out on the field. Oh, hey, those boys look pretty good, too, don't they, Gladys? Oh, they're a swell bunch. Hello, fellas. Hello, Gladys. <laughs> what? Well, I'll be darned. She knows the whole team. Well, that's the last straw. I'm leaving. I'm not even going to stay and see the game. Oh, Speedy, calm down. Calm down, nothing. And let me tell you something else, Gladys. The next time you go out with me and say hello to every Tom, Dick, and Harry we meet, Remember, who can play that? So there you are, Don. That's exactly what happened at the Rose Bowl game on New Year's Day. Jack really lost his head, huh? He sure did. Okay, I'm a fiery, jealous nature. What can I do? Play, Phil. Okay, Speedy. We're a little late, so good night, folks. The Jell-O program brought to you by Jell-O and Jell-O Pudding, starring Jack Benny. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, the Yuletide season is here with all its joy and gaiety. So without further ado, we bring you a star to place atop your Christmas tree, ah. Jack Benny. <laughs> wow. Well, hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And, Don, that was quite a whimsical introduction. A star to place atop your Christmas tree. I suppose you said that because I'm a movie star. Is that right? No, Jack, that wasn't my thought at all. Oh. I meant that you actually and physically resemble a star. Well, I don't, uh... I, uh, I don't get it, Don. What do you mean? Well, for instance, you've got a dash of silver in your hair. Yes. And you've always got a merry twinkle in your eye. Yes, yes. And the seat of your pants is always bright and shiny. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And you're wearing the only pair of pointed shoes in Hollywood. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Don. I'm not going to argue about the silver and the twinkle, and I'll even go along with the shiny pants. But these pointed shoes I've got on are very popular. They're French Shriner and Erner's new bayonet model. <laughs> <laughs> They're, uh... They're very snappy, don't you think? Snappy is right. But personally, Jack, I like a shoe that spreads out. Listen, brother, any shoe you step into is doomed. <laughs> Believe me, 
Oh, I'm not so heavy on my feet. You're not, eh, Don? Your arches fell the first time your mother said, Come on, Snookums, walk toward me. <laughs> but speaking about these shoes I'm wearing... Wow, get a load of them. Did Vaudeville come back? No, Vaudeville didn't come back. <laughs> Just so happens that for a change, I switched to a pointed, tight-fitting shoe. Then where do you keep your money now? <laughs> I've got a hollow tooth. I can go along with a gag, sister. <laughs> Now, let me tell you something, young lady. Any more of those Livingston Lulus tonight, and your invitation to my Christmas party next Thursday is automatically canceled. Remember that. Oh, Jack, speaking of your party, what are you going to serve for dinner? Turkey, goose, or duck? Ham hocks, and not another word about it. <laughs> Come early, Don. You know, a lot of big, uh, a lot of big movie stars are going to be there. Movie stars? Name one. Now, there'll be lots of them. Come on, name one. Oh, they'll be there. Don't stall. Name one movie star that's going to be at your party. All right. Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> I know he's coming because he already sent me a wire by Western Union. Western Union I heard about, but who is Rodney Dangerfield? <laughs> who is Rodney Dangerfield? Well, I'll be... Mary... Did you see the Fargo kid rides the Pony Express on the Santa Fe Trail at the Hitching Post Theater last week? Did you? No. Well, that was Rodney's greatest performance. If you could have seen him jump out of the second-story window of a burning building and gallop out of town on his horse, blazing away with his six-shooter in one hand and playing Tumbleweed Girl, I Love You on his guitar with the other. <laughs> What a scene. Pretty thrilling, huh? Was it? A kid sitting in back of me got so excited, he beat me on the head with a stick of licorice. <laughs> anyway, you'll meet Rodney at my house next Thursday. Well, who else is coming, Jack? Well, you know, I'm making a picture with Carol Lombard, so naturally I had to invite her. And I also told her to ask Clark if he wanted to come. He whiz, is Clark Gable going to be at your party? Well, I'm not sure about him, but I got a definite no from Lombard. <laughs> Let's see, and the uh, Gary Coopers can't come, and the Henry Fondas had a previous engagement, and Bob Taylor and Barbara Stanwyck have a toothache. Be <laughs> Between them? How do I know? And then Claudette Colbert can't come. She sprained her ankle. I saw her dancing at the Macombo last night. With that ankle? Poor kid. <laughs> and then uh, Errol Flynn can't make it. He's in New York, you know. Well, let's see. Oh, yes, Barney Dean. He's coming. I'm, I'm sure of that. Well, here I go again. Who's Barney Dean? <laughs> Who's Barney Dean? Did you see Sergeant York? Yes. Well, he was a soldier in that. <laughs> That's who. Anyway, Barney Dean will be there. And then I invited... Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, bub. Sorry I'm late, but I was across the street shooting pool. Shooting pool? Well, let me ask you something, Phil. Who paid you your salary, me or the pool room? Look, Jackson, if I didn't take the salary I get here and double it over there, I'd have to give up me. <laughs> Too bad about you. Hey, Phil, are you and Alice coming to Jack's party? Oh, I don't know. Who's going to be there? Everybody from Barney Dean to Rodney Dangerfield. Don't run him down. Hey, is Rod Dangerfield going to be at your party? Yep. Oh, that guy's terrific. I think he's darn near as good as Hoot Horowitz. <laughs> what do you mean, darn near as good? Did you see Rodney's latest picture, the Fargo kid rides the Pony Express on the Santa Fe Trail? Yeah, I seen it last week. That was a thriller, wasn't it? You said it. I got so excited I hit some old bird in the front of me with my licorice stick. <laughs> Oh, ho! So that was you. You were at the Hitching Post Theater last Tuesday evening. Not so loud, Jackson. I was playing hooky from uh, my night school. Oh. Well, don't worry. I won't squeal. You better not sponge or I'll have to drill you. A bang, a bang, a bang. <laughs> You're not a drilling me, son. Go round the sheriff. A bang, a bang, a bang. 
Oh, bang! <laughs> this is... <laughs> These two cowboys come to you through the courtesy of Jello, who are open for suggestions. <laughs> Never mind. We'll talk about the picture later, Phil. Now, how about a band number? Okay. Hold it. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Am I going to be invited to your Christmas party? My name is Pigeon. Walter Pigeon? No, Dead Pigeon. A bang, a bang, a bang. <laughs> what a head he's got. That's the only grapefruit I ever saw that can take shorthand. <laughs> he's my secretary, folks. Play, Phil. <laughs> that was Popo Catapetal. Played by Phil Harris and his Yule Tide Orchestra. Yule meaning you'll have to go a long way to hear a band like this. And Tide meaning I wish they'd go out with us. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, but no kidding, Phil. That number sounded swell. It was really the nut. All right, Don. Phil's number was the nut. Oh, Jack, this one is utterly <laughs> absurd. Don, Phil's band number was the nut. You know it wasn't. That's not the point. <laughs> Come on, Don. Phil's band number was the nut. Oh, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, the nut time you go to your neighborhood grocery. <laughs> you see? Why not ask him for a package of Jello with its new locked-in flavor? Now, here's the clever part, folks. Oh, Jack, I'll never be able to face my friend. Don Nuts! <laughs> oh, very well. So whether your name is Hazel or Filbert, you will not regret buying this tempting and economical dessert. Buy hickory. Very good. <laughs> very good. There you are, Don. That was one of the most novel things I've ever written. Oh, Jack, you didn't write that. Yes, I did. All by yourself? All by myself. You mean it came to you like a flash? Like a bolt out of the blue. Keep talking, brother. When I get the right lead, I'm going to murder you. <laughs> oh, don't be so critical. That was a very clever commercial. Wasn't it, Dennis? Hey, where's Dennis? Here I am. I'm back in Mr. Wilson. Oh. Peekaboo. Peekaboo. You got to humor the kid. <laughs> Say, Dennis, have you got a nice song prepared for today? Yeah, but first I want to thank you for letting me come over to the studio the other day. Oh, don't mention it. That was a pretty hot love scene you did with Cal Lombard, by golly. Yes, it was. Gosh, when you grabbed her and gave her that big kiss, I got so excited I was quivering all over. You were? She didn't even move a muscle. Never mind. What's the matter with that girl? I don't know. Look, boy, she kisses Gable when she leaves home in the morning, and she kisses him when she gets back at night. Anything in between is strictly cheesecake. <laughs> well, I don't want to be catty, but... Oh, well, forget it. How about a song, Dennis? What's it going to be? I'm going to sing a medley of Christmas Carol. Good. Oh, say, fellas, that reminds me. I've got to go home early tonight and do some work on my Christmas tree. I want to get it all trimmed up for the party. You want to come and help me, Mary? Sure, why not? Phil, after Dennis's song, you can play a few selections and fill out the program. Well, that'll give me a chance to play a couple of high-class numbers like who's this place? Uh, you know, Andre Costa... What's the rest of this here? Lannis. Andre Costa Lannis. Oh, brother. Well, why do you always embarrass me by making up them big words? <laughs> I didn't make up anything. That's the man's name. He's married to Lily Pond. Her, I can say. Look, Phil, just accompany Dennis a song, then put on your hat and go home. Come on, Mary, let's get out of here. What's that? Come in. Telegram, I mean special delivery for Mary Livingston. <laughs> right here, bud. Give him a tip, will you, Jack? Okay. Here you are, boy. Here's a half a dollar for you. Thanks. I can go along with a gag. A boom. <laughs> you can louse it up, too. <laughs> He had to put a boom on the end of it. <laughs> Wasn't satisfied the way it was written. Had to put a boom. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to see one stooge in this town with hair. 
<laughs> Come on, Mary. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. This letter's from Mama. You can read it in the cab. Come on. Oh, I'll let her read it now, Jack. Mary's mother's a... She's just a, a riot. Oh, all right. I'm glad you got that out, too. <laughs> If we had an hour program, we'd be very successful here. You know that. Don't you? All right, read your mother's letter, Mary. What's the head of Hopper of Plainfield got to say? <clears throat> My darling daughter, Mary, just in line to let you know that Christmas is almost here, and as yet I have not received your X chase. X chase? But don't get me wrong. If your check has been delayed in the mail, I take back everything I'm thinking. <laughs> How can anybody be so mercenary? Your sister Ethel and her husband are here for the holidays and will spend several weeks with us. Inasmuch as they live right next door, I think this is an imposition. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Quiet. You ought to see your sister's new baby. Everybody says it's a regular little doll. And they're right. It looks just like Popeye. <laughs> Well, no wonder, after all, your sister is no rose. <laughs> and that husband of hers, does he still sell blueing house to house? <laughs> no, he's a vanilla extract man now. <laughs> oh, vanilla extract man. Oh, he's going places. Come on, finish the letter. Speaking of Christmas, I saw your father tiptoeing up the stairs last night with a great big package over his shoulder. I was thrilled to death until I found out the package was your Uncle Willie. <laughs> Boy, was he full of vanilla. <laughs> no more news, except that your brother Bacardi... Bacardi? Papa named him off a bottle. Oh, oh. Except that your brother Bacardi was turned down by the army on account of flat feet, chest, and head. <laughs> <laughs> also, his hands drag on the ground when he walks. <laughs> Gee, his nails must be a mess. <laughs> Love to all, Mama. Well, I'm glad that's over. Oh, wait a minute. Here's the P.S. Tell Jack I heard him do Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde on the program a few weeks ago. What a pew foreman. <laughs> pew foreman? Let's see that. Well, I'll be darned. Hmm, if I'd have known this was going to happen, I'd have put another cup of water in that perfume I sent her. Sing, Dennis. See you Christmas, fellas. Come on, Mary. Let's get over to the house. Right up here, buddy. It's that big white house with the iron reindeer on the lawn. Okay, pal. Boy, look at that meter. A dollar and a half. Hmm. Oh, driver, how much do I owe you? Like she said, a dollar and a half. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, how would you like to match? Three dollars or nothing? Double or nothing? Okay, pal. I'm matching you. Just a second. Okay, here goes. Come on, lift up. Hmm. Well, <laughs> so long, pal. <laughs> Darn that Rochester, why doesn't he answer the door? here all night? Oh, take it easy, Jack. Calm down. What three dollars? It's not the money. I don't believe in gambling. <laughs> don't talk to me. I feel awful. Why don't you take off one of those shoes and cut your throat? <laughs> Mary, I'm in no mood for any... Good evening, boss. Happy Yuletide. Rochester, you were late answering the door, and I'm going to teach you a lesson. I'm fining you three dollars. <laughs> You understand? I wish the stock market would come back that fast. <laughs> Never mind. Any messages, Rochester? Yes, sir. Mr. Charles Boyer called and said he won't be able to attend your Christmas party. Why not? You got me, boss. He gave his excuse in French. <laughs> well, 
Well, that's the sneakiest thing I ever heard of. <laughs> Any other messages? Yes, Lady Mendel phone. Said she got your lovely invitation, and who are you? <laughs> Did you ever go to the movies, for heaven's sake? Come on, Mary, the tree is in the library. Bring my slippers, Rochester. Your slippers? Yes. Lounging, bedroom, or ballet? <laughs> I'm in no mood for a ballet dance, believe me. Bring in my lounging slippers. Yes, sir. Come on, Mary. While I'm putting the star on top of the tree, you can be hanging popcorn balls on the branches. Oh, is your tree going to have branches this year? <laughs> yes, it's going to have branches. <laughs> well, I think the one you had like. Uh-oh, here comes your border. Yeah. I wonder why he's carrying that hatchet. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Billingsley. Good afternoon, Mr. Benny. Home a little early, I see. <laughs> yes, yes, I have some work to do around the house. Oh, Mr. Billingsley, what are you doing with that hatchet? Are you a Boy Scout now? No, I'm going out to dinner later, and when I say chop chicken liver, that's what I mean. <laughs> Oh, uh... Oh, I, uh... I see. Well, goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. Keep him flying. <laughs> hmm. I can't... I can't understand Mr. Billingsley lately. You know, Mary, he slept under his bed last night. He hung onto the springs like a bat. You know? Weird fellow. Well, there you are. There's my Christmas tree, Mary. Isn't it nice? Yeah, that's the biggest one you ever had. Where'd you get it? Got it just north of Redwood City. Well, let's start with the decorations. Mary, you hang up these candy canes and I'll... Rochester, what happened to that box of popcorn balls we had in the closet? I got bad news, boss. There's nothing in there now but a big fat mouse. <laughs> Darn it, I'm short of ornaments. Got to have something to hang on that tree. Yes, those socks look awful by themselves. <laughs> the socks are coming off as soon as they're dry. I wanted popcorn balls to add a little... Say, I have an idea. How would oranges look there? Oranges? Yeah, I've got a backyard full of them. I'll go out and pick some. Meanwhile, start with those candy canes, Mary. I'll be right back. Jingle bells, jingle bells, yum, bum, 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 bum. Three dollars. I had to match them. Yum, bum, 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 bum. Oh, well. A jingle bells, jingle bells, yum, bum, bum. Let's see. I think there's some big ones in this tree over here. Yeah, these will be fine. A nice, big, juicy one. I'll take about a dozen. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Hello, mister. What are you doing? Hello. Six. Oh. Oh, hello, little girl. Where did you come from? I was just looking around your yard. Where's your polo bear? My polo bear? Oh, he's asleep for the winter. Do you live around here? Yes, we just moved into that new house next to Ronald Coleman's. Oh, next to Ronald Coleman's. Oh, that's swell. We're, we're going to be neighbors, aren't we? Uh-huh. You're Jack Benny, aren't you? That's right. <laughs> that's who I am. Uh, gee, I heard you do Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde on the radio. What a performance! <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was pretty good. Say, little girl, your face is kind of familiar. Haven't I seen you in pictures? You might have. My name's Carolyn Lee. Oh, Carolyn Lee. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is certainly a surprise. So little Miss Lee is my neighbor. Ah, uh, you can call me Carolyn. Ah, <laughs> uh, good. And, and you can call me Jack. Okay, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, she's cute. Say, Carolyn, are you going to be busy Christmas morning? I don't know. Why? Well, I had a telephone call from Santa Claus last night, and he told me he was going to leave a beautiful present under my tree, especially for you. Well, let's analyze this. How did Santa Claus know you were going to meet me? Oh, he even knows about things before they happen. He knows everything. Then and why that's are you... why we've got to be real good, especially around Christmas. Then why are you picking Mr. Coleman's oranges? Look, Carolyn. 
These aren't Mr. Coleman's oranges. What hangs over the fence is mine. Now, let me tell you something about Santa Claus, Carolyn. Every year at this time, he makes a list of good little boys and girls, and when they wake up Christmas morning... Hey, boss, boss, come in here! I'll be with you in a minute. And, Carolyn, if these old boys and girls have been real good... You gotta come in now, boss. Mr. Billsley's chopping down the Christmas tree. What? <laughs> chopping down the tree? See you later, Carolyn. Mr. Billingsley! Mr. Billingsley, Mary, stop him! It's too late now! Timber! Oh, my goodness. I knew I should have taken away his hatchet. We're a little late, so good night, folks, and Merry Christmas to all. The Grape Nut Flakes program, coming to you from Fort Devens near Boston, Massachusetts, and starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Dennis Day, Rochester, yours truly, Don Wilson, and our guest conductor, Abe Lyman. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Fort Devens near the historic city of Boston, Massachusetts, we bring you that leftover bag from the Boston Tea Party, Jack Benny! Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, that was a very clever introduction. <laughs> a leftover bag from the Boston Tea Party. <laughs> you sure like to rib your old boss, eh, Donzie? Yes, Jack, because I realize that you have a grand sense of humor. I see. Uh, well, Don, remember last Christmas when I gave you that nice fat check? I certainly do, Jack. Well, this year you'll be lucky if I have your girdle retreaded. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> anyway, Don, here we are at Fort Devens, and I'm, I'm glad so many soldiers could get in here for our show tonight. You know, it shows you how popular I... Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? On behalf of the boys in the guardhouse, I want to welcome you to Fort Devens. Well... <laughs> Well, uh, thanks. Uh, by the way, uh, where is the guardhouse? Uh, right here. You're our punishment for today. <laughs> well, I, I should have known this was the guardhouse. When I came in, the sentry handed me a paring knife, a sack of potatoes, and said, don't quit till you see the whites of their eyes. <laughs> Anyway, I'm having fun. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Gosh, isn't it cold up here in Massachusetts? Yes, Mary, it's pretty near close to zero. But of course, I, I don't feel it. I'm the rugged type, you know. I, <laughs> I can take it. Well, don't blow your nose. It might fall off. It is a little blue, isn't it? But after living in a warm place like California, my blood is pretty thin, you know. What blood? I've got plenty. Didn't I go to the Red Cross blood bank last week? Yeah, and you were sure sore when they wouldn't give you any. <laughs> I was not. Well, say, Mary, uh, thanks for that Christmas present you sent me. I'm just dying to open it and see what's inside. Oh, I didn't open mine uh, either, Mary. Uh, what did you get me this year? Well, remember that gold wristwatch you saw on Tiffany's window, the one you were so nuts about? Yes. Well, I got you a box of nuts. <laughs> I'm glad you told me that, Mary, because now I'm going to return that beautiful evening gown I bought for you. Oh, you could never find that push cart again in a million years. I can try, sister. Hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, oh, hello, Dennis. Uh, come on over here. Is it all right if I finish these potatoes later? Well, why not? We've already peeled enough for supper, I think. Uh, well, we're just talking about Christmas, Dennis. Uh, what did you get for your old Uncle Jackie? Hmm? I didn't get anything. <laughs> Uh, you mean yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Listen, kid, I don't want to hint, but uh, I saw a beautiful gold wristwatch in Tiffany's window that I admired very much. You can get it for 75 bucks. $75 for a Christmas present? Yes. Gee, that's a lot of money. It'd be different if you were my girl. That's my girl. <laughs> get it right. Now, if you're smart, Dennis, and I, I think you are, you'll buy me that watch. And now, folks... All of a sudden, I'm smart. <laughs> Just remember what I said, that's all. Now, Dennis, are you ready for your song? Yes, sir. Good. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, by special request, uh, Dennis Day will sing White Christmas, accompanied by Abe Lyman and his sensational question mark orchestra. Um, go ahead, kid. Wait a minute, Benny. What do you mean by that question mark stuff? Oh, oh, pardon me, Abe. Uh, fellas, I'd like you to meet our guest conductor this week, Abe Lyman. Well, you, you got a nice hand there, Abe. Never mind that. What do you mean by insulting my orchestra? Well, it's only a, it's only a joke. I, I always kid Phil Harris and his boys. You well, know? we don't happen to be like Phil Harris. I've got a very fine aggravation of musicians. <laughs> aggravation? What's the matter with me? Can't I get one orchestra leader who can pronounce words with over one syllable? With what you pay me, why should I talk good? Well, I'll tell you one thing, Abe. You're making a lot more money now than when you used to drive that taxi cab around Chicago. No kidding, Abe. Did you start out as a cab driver? Yes, ma'am. Well, how'd you happen to become a band leader? Oh, the click, click, click of that meter gave me the sense of rhythm. <laughs> you killed the rhythm of that sentence, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the click of the meter, eh? That gave Jack a nervous breakdown once. <laughs> it did not. Anyway, Abe, I'm really glad to have you on my program. And we're friends, aren't we? Yeah. Let's shake on it. Put her there, kid. <laughs> well, I can throw that hand away. <laughs> What a... what a grip he's got. Huh? Say, Mr. Benny, I don't think I ever met Mr. Lyman. Oh, pardon me. Abe, uh, this is Dennis Day. Hi, kid. Hello, Mr. Lyman. It's sure nice to meet a man that can put guess who in his place. <laughs> now, just... just a minute, Dennis. Uh, who are you referring to as guess who? I'm waiting, kid. I don't know what for. I'm trapped. <laughs> <laughs> Well, just don't try being subtle. Now, go ahead with your song. That was White Christmas, sung by Dennis Day. Now, Don, uh, you and Abe will have to carry on with the rest of the program. I have to run along with uh, Mr. Tucker, the man with the sleigh, is waiting outside. What do you mean, the man with the sleigh? Oh, didn't I tell you? Oh. You see, Don, uh, I rented one for a little trip I want to make to Fitchburg. I found out there's a, there's a house near there where George Washington is supposed to have spent the night. <laughs> I don't get it Well, it's very simple, Mary I see, I just finished a picture with Ann Sheridan Called George Washington Slept Here There's a house near Fitchburg that George Washington slept in And that's where I'm going to spend the night Oh, fine I suppose if it had been in the man who came to dinner You'd want to sleep in a veal cutlass There's no connection Now get your coat, Mary uh, You and Dennis are coming with me So long, Don See you later, Abe <laughs> Boy, isn't this a thrill to be riding in a sleigh? Come on, kids, let's sing. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Rochester. Boy, it's cold. Uh, what's the uh, temperature, Mr. Tucker? Well, it's about four below zero. Below zero? Rochester, put that jug down. <laughs> Now, put away that apple, Jack. We've been riding for an hour. How long before we get there? Uh, how far is the old Peabody place, Mr. Tucker? Just a piece up the road here. Good. Dennis, will you stop that wiggling? I'm n -n 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 not wiggling. I'm c -c -c cold. Uh, well, pull the robe around you. Can't you hurry a little, Mr. Tucker? I wouldn't be in a hurry to get to that Peabody place if I were you. Everybody says it's haunted. Haunted? Roger! <laughs> put that down. Gosh, it sure, sure gets dark in a hurry, does not it? There's the old Peabody place up ahead. Gee, it's spooky looking. Yeah. Say, the caretaker must be in. 
There's a light flickering in the upstairs window. Here we are. Oh, Peaches. Take it easy, girl. Peaches. It's a fine name for a horse. Named after my wife. Looks just like her. <laughs> Carry my grips, Rochester. Come on, Mary. Dennis, let's go inside. Oh, no. I'm going back to town. But, Mary, this is the house George Washington slept in. Look at that old stone chimney and those... Those gables on the roof. I wouldn't care if Clark was hanging out of them. I wouldn't go in. What about you, Dennis? You want to spend the night here? No, 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 thank you. Hmm. Well, that's three of us. So long, boys. You're staying here with me. All right, Mr. Tucker, take Miss Livingston and Mr. Day back to town. Okay. So long, Mary. So long, Jack. Goodbye, Dennis. Go, 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 go. Oh, the heck with it. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Here, Peaches. Boy, that... That night wind is sure chilly. Sure is. Uh, let's not stand out here all alone in the dark. Let's go in. Yeah. Knock on the door, Rochester. I'm holding the jug. <laughs> okay. I'll knock, you scaredy cat. <laughs> Nobody home. Let's go. Come back here. Hey. Hey, look through the window. There's a there's a light coming down the hall. It's an old man. Who's there? What do you want? Oh, uh, pardon me. Are you uh are you Mr. Stubbs, the caretaker? Maybe I am, maybe I ain't. Hmm. Well, I'm I'm Jack Benny, and I wrote you about spending the night here. Did you get my letter? Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. Well, do you mind if we come in and look around? I'm very anxious to see... Ah! Good heavens, what's that? I didn't hear nothing. Nothing? Gee. Well, what are you waiting for, Rochester? Come on in. Come on inside. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. <laughs> you... You come in here. You know, mister, I don't take in bodies as a rule. Oh, I'm... I'm prepared to pay for it, Mr. Tucker. Now, if you'll please tell me which room George Washington slept in, I'd... I'd like to go to bed. You can't miss it. It's the big one at the top of the stairs. Thank you. Now, if you'll just show me... Ah! Gee. There's that nothing again. <laughs> I don't like this. Well, what are you waiting for, Rochester? Take my suitcase upstairs, light the candles, and turn down the bed. You want me to go upstairs alone? Of course. Nothing's gonna hurt you. Boss, nothing around here is something. <laughs> you go upstairs and get the room ready. Now, Mr. Stubbs, uh... How much will it cost uh, cost me to spend the night here? Uh, would 50 cents be too much? Well, uh... Does, uh... Does that include breakfast? <laughs> hmm? Yep, bake them eggs, hot cakes, and coffee. Okay, it's a deal. Well, I... Might as well go upstairs now. Oh, Rochester! Yes, boss! How does the room look? I'm right here behind you! You get upstairs. Now, Mr. Stubbs and I will be up in a minute. As long as we're all going up, let's make it a convoy. All right. Lead the way, Mr. Stubbs. <laughs> Hey, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, here's your room right here. Well, good night, Mr. Stubbs. Good night. 
Well, here we are, boss. Yeah. Let me have that. Let me have that candle, Rochester. Wow, this is a big room. Wow, this is a big room. That echo again. I'm Jack Benny. I'm Jack Benny. I'm going to spend the night here. I wouldn't stay here for a million dollars. <laughs> What does he mean? Gee, look. Look at that old four-poster bed. Well, I might as well turn in. Just think, Rochester. George Washington slept in this house. Uh Right here in this very room. Uh Gosh, if this bed could only talk. If that bed says one word, I'll bounce through Boston. That was just a figure of speech. Well, I guess I'll... Guess I'll get in bed. Oh, say, Rochester, open the window, will you? Yes, sir. oh Darn those shutters. Rochester, reach out and close them. Let whoever's out there reach in and close them. <laughs> There's nobody out there. Oh, good night, Rochester. You're going to sleep in the next room. Alone? Yes, alone. Good night, boss. Gosh, I'm tired. Just think. I'm sleeping in the same bed George Washington slept in during the Revolutionary War. Gee, it doesn't seem possible. Uh, sure was a thrill riding in that sleigh. Gosh, I, I haven't done that since I was a kid. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Yes, General Washington. General Washington? Which room is mine, Mr. Stubbs? It's that big one at the head of the stairs. Thank you, sir. Here's your 25 cents. 25 cents? I'm paying 50. Maybe he isn't going to eat breakfast. Yeah, that's it. Oh, oh, hello there. Well, this room seems to be occupied. Oh, pardon me. Pardon me, General Washington. I'm Benny. Jack Benny. Oh, yes. We've enjoyed your program so much during these long, cold nights at Valley Forge. (laughs) Gee. Gee, thank you. Thank you, General. I'm getting tired. Would you please move over, Mr. Benny? Of course. Of course. It's a large bed. Uh, Climb in, General. Uh, Just a moment. Do you mind if I hang my wig right here next to yours? No, no, no. Go right ahead. See, I got to get one of those white ones with curls. See, that's a beaut. Do you mind if I try it on? Do you mind if I try it on? You get out of this bed. Get out. Well, I c- 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 cold. <laughs> Darn echo. Well... Hop in bed, General. Thank you. You know, I snore a little bit, but I'll try and... Woo! That's cold. Pardon me, General, you forgot to take your sword off. (laughs) So I did. I'm always forgetting that. Well, uh, good night, Mr. Benny. Good night, General. Just think... I'm sleeping in the same bed. <laughs> Who are you? 
I want to be a student nurse. I'm between the ages of 18 and 35. Right to Box 88, uh, New York City. They need you. Are you quite comfortable, General Washington? Maybe I am, maybe I ain't. Just a minute. You're not George Washington. General. General, where are you? I'm having breakfast, Mr. Benny. It's time for those toasty browns sweet as in that grape nuts flake. What? They come in the big 12-ounce economy size package. You're John Wilson. Where's General Washington? I'm over here getting dressed, Mr. Benny. Already? Yes. I must leave now. I've got to cross for Delaware. Oh, yes. Yes, I saw it on the calendar I got from the If You Live, We're Hooked insurance company. <laughs> it's a beautiful painting. Well, goodbye, General, and good luck. Thank you. Or Gee, he's a nice fella. I never expected to bump into... Well, I'll be darned he took the wrong wig. Oh, General! Oh, General Washington! General, General, come back! You got my wig! That was the last number of the 12th program of the new Grape Nuts Flake series. And we'll be with you next Sunday night at the same time. Now, to all you fellas listening in at the Portsmouth Navy Yard, we'll be seeing you tomorrow night with our USO show. And the following night, we'll see all you boys at Camp Edward near Buzzard Bay. Good night, Joni. The Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, Mary Livingston has been off the show for three weeks because of laryngitis. So now that she is fully recovered, we take you to her house where we find Mary and her maid, Butterfly. Gee, Miss Livingston, you sure have pretty hair. Well, thank you, Butterfly. <laughs> Ouch. Be careful with the comb you're pulling. Oh, excuse me. Say, Miss Livingston, was your hair always this color? Of course, I never bleach my hair. Neither do I. <laughs> well, I'm glad you told me. Now, Butterfly, co uh, comb the ends into a roll. Yes, ma'am. You know what, Miss Livingston? What? I think your hair is even prettier than Mr. Benny's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Butterfly, you're just saying that. Anyway, you've never been close enough to Mr. Benny's hair to appreciate its beauty. Oh, yes, I have. Yesterday, I was over to Mr. Benny's house. Oh. He wasn't home, so Uncle Rochester showed it to me. <laughs> Your Uncle Rochester has no right to open Mr. Benny's safe. <laughs> uh, now, Butterfly, will you get my blue dress out of the closet, please? Never mind. You answer the door. I'll get the dress myself. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to buy a paper doll that I can call my own. A doll that other fellows cannot steal. <laughs> Hello, Butterfly. Come right in, Mr. Benny. May I take your hat? Yes, thanks. Here's my coat. Yes, sir. Shall I take your shawl, too? <laughs> That's a muffler. <laughs> Here. Now, Butterfly, will you tell Miss... Oh, here she is. Hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Gee, you're looking swell, and your voice sounds okay, too. Thanks. I feel fine now. That's good. Say, Mary, I brought you a box of candy. Over a hundred pieces in it. <laughs> Here you are. Oh, thanks, Jack. Just the kind I like, Sen Sen. <laughs> well, I'm glad you do. You know, it, it cost me extra to have it wrapped as a gift, you know. Oh, Jack, you're so nice. I know. <laughs> but maybe I shouldn't have given it to you now. It'll make your Christmas present look like nothing. <laughs> well, let's not worry about that now. Come on, we'll go into the living room. All right. Is there a fire in the fireplace? No, but we can build one. Okay. Gee, I haven't had a fire in here since I've been sick. Well, there's nothing as homey as a fireplace with a cheery blaze. Here goes. First, a little paper. And throw on some kindling. And now, now for a log. 
Hmm, there must be a smaller log around here somewhere. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> Hey, look. Look, that log came from the tree that used to be in your backyard. Yes, I know. Gosh, Mary, look what it says on it. I love Jack Benny. Isn't that sweet? Yeah, I remember the night you carved it there. <laughs> yeah, it was so romantic. I'll never forget that night if I live to be 40. <laughs> you know, I... <laughs> Jack, if you... Don't answer that. <laughs> I know what you were... I'll take it. Hello? Plainfield, New Jersey calling? Yes, I'll hold on. Oh, Jack, it must be Mama. Oh, is she out on parole again? <laughs> <laughs> Jack, you ought to be ashamed of you. Hello? Oh, hello, Mama. Yes, I'm feeling fine now. <clears throat> That's right. I was off the program for three weeks. What? Oh, don't worry. Jack's going to pay me. <laughs> hmm. He will pay me. Oh, Mama, he is not. And where'd you ever hear a word like that? <laughs> hmm. Uh, that's what Papa calls you? <laughs> Mary, tell your mother. Quiet, Jack. No. Say, Mama, did you get the packages I sent? Good. But I don't want either you or Papa to open those presents till Christmas. What? Papa couldn't wait. He did. Well, Mama, call a doctor. That was shaving lotion. <laughs> Mary, what was that word your mother called me? It starts with an L. Oh, L. Uh, say, Mama, tell me, what's happened at the home lately? L. Could be liar, louse. <laughs> louse isn't so bad, is it? <laughs> what? What, Mama? Cousin Harry was made a sergeant? Oh, that's too bad. What's bad about it? Last week he was a lieutenant. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, yes, Mama, that was Jack's voice. L. L. Yes, he's sitting right here beside me. L. Mama, stop it. What's the matter? You can drop the L and start working on D. <laughs> hmm. Say, Mama, what are you and Papa doing tonight? D. Dope. Dunce. Oh, you expect company, so you're making a fire in the living room? Dumbbell, that starts with a D. <laughs> but, Mama, you haven't got a fireplace in the living room. Oh, there's a hole in the rug and you wanted to cover it up with something. <laughs> Mary, hang up, will well, you? Well, Mama, I think I better... Uh, just a second, operator. Mama, give my love to... Oh, darn it, we were cut off. Oh, operator, operator, why did you... I don't care if my mother does drive you nuts. It's none of your business. <laughs> See, Mary, you see, I'm not the only one that's allergic to your mother. Oh, Jack, Mama's only kidding. She doesn't mean half the things she says. She does, too. I never saw a woman like that. She's always hounding me. She doesn't hound you. Well, she's got the face for it. And let me tell you another thing. Your mother takes delight in uh, aggravating me. Every time she calls me up, she pans me. And I never say anything about her. Ever. All right, all right, Mary, I'm sorry. Well, you ought to be. Every time we talk about my mother, we get into an argument. You're right, Mary, we shouldn't argue. Let's kiss and make up. Okay. Now, how is that? Let's argue. <laughs> oh, yeah? That was all right, and you know it. Now, straighten your lipstick. Oh, you and your wet lips. Every time you kiss me, you skid. <laughs> Now, what do you want me to do? Have him retreaded? <laughs> I skid. You can't say one nice thing. There's someone at the door. That's all right. Butterfly will get it. You can't say one thing without trying to be funny. Oh, Jack, you take everything so seriously. Where's your sense of humor? Sense of humor? Listen, Mary, you have no regard for my feelings. And in the first place... Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Dennis. In the first place, I only came here to visit... Hello, Miss Livingston. Hello, Dennis. I only came here to cheer you up because you've been ill. Well, this is a fine way to do it. Just because I pull a gag on you once in a while, you hit the ceiling. I hit the ceiling? What's going on here? Look, Mary, when you had laryngitis, <laughs> I was a constant visitor. I'm the best friend you ever had. Do you mind if I sit down? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no, go ahead. No, sit down, Dennis. You know, Mary, I even brought you a box of candy, and what thanks do I get? What do you expect for a box of cents and a kiss for every piece? <laughs> no, Mary, but the least you can do is show your appreciation. Oh, you're having an argument. <laughs> Dennis, why don't you please be quiet? Gee, everywhere I go, there's an argument. Oh, where have you been, Dennis? Home. <laughs> now, Mary, as far as I'm concerned... At my house, it's louder. <laughs> Dennis. They ought to be breaking it up by now. The argument? No, the house. <laughs> Dennis, we're not having a fight. It was just a little misunderstanding, that's all. Now, Mary, let's not argue in front of the kid. Mm, you're right, Jack, and especially about such a silly thing. I'm a dope. Well... I'm a dope, too. You want to know something? What? It's nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> well, you should know. Thanks. Well, I guess I'll run along now. Wait a minute, Dennis. What'd you come over here for? Oh, I forgot. I came over to visit Miss Livingston. You did? Well, sit down and stay a while. Okay. Well, guess I'll run along now. <laughs> Dennis, you just got here. What's that package under your arm? Oh, I made a record of a song and I wanted Miss Livingston to hear it. Well, that's fine. We'll play it later. Oh, Butterfly, see who's at the door. Yes, Miss Livingston. Oh, it must be Rochester. There's my new car out in front. That yellow one? Why, it looks like a taxi cab. Well, it was, Mary, but it's the only thing I could get. Anyway, I converted it strictly to private use. Oh. If it weren't for the color, no one would know it used to be a taxi. Oh, hello, Rochester. Hello, boss. You better hurry. The meter's running. <laughs> <laughs> well, turn it off, silly. It's only us. <laughs> why, Jack, <laughs> if you're using that taxi for your own private use, why do you have a meter on it? He never knows when he's going to give a friend a lift. <laughs> Well, Rochester, it pays to be nice. It pays him. <laughs> oh, that's not the reason at all. Anyway, Mary, it's not a bad car, is it? Mm, it looks all right. It rides smoothly, too. Yes, sir. Did you ride in it, Dennis? 30 cents worth. <laughs> Dennis. That's my raise. Five dollars worth of free rides a week. <laughs> Listen, kid, I give you those rides because... <laughs> I, I, give, I give you those rides because I like you. I'm not in business with that taxi. I don't haul people around. Oh, boss, come now. <laughs> Rochester, I told you, I only give my friends a lift home. <laughs> What's so funny, Rochester? All of his friends have trunks and live at the Union Station. <laughs> Rochester, stop making things up. And you better hurry or we'll be, we'll, we'll be late for the super team. <laughs> I mean, stop mixing me up. I know what you mean, boss, but we gotta go Christmas shopping. Oh, that's right. Let's get going. I want to do my shopping while the stores are still loaded with stuff. So let's... Oh, Butterfly. Butterfly, there's someone at the door. Butterfly, where are you? Oh, well, I'll answer it myself. Well, of all people... I locked myself out. <laughs> oh. Well, come in, Butterfly, and get Mr. Benny's things. He's leaving. I got him. Never mind. Come on, Rochester. Let's go. So long, Mary. Goodbye, Miss Livingston. Goodbye. I'm gonna buy a paper doll that I can call my own. A doll that other... Oh, Dennis, I forgot you were still here. Yeah, I just put my record on the phonograph. Would you like to hear it, Miss Livingston? Sure, I would. Go ahead and play it. Okay. Say, Miss Livingston, would you like to... Oh, well. What, Dennis? Never mind. Let's sit this one out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'd rather just listen to it. Rochester, Rochester, don't turn the corner so fast. Don't worry, boss, these taxi cabs can really take it. Rochester, I've told you a thousand times, this is my own private car now. It's not a taxi. Anyway, I'm going to have the color change. It's getting to be ridiculous. Rochester, you're coming to a red light. Watch it. I see it, boss. Hey, bud, mind if I share this cab with you? I'm sorry, mister, but this ain't no... Driver, no one's asking you. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
certainly, uh, certainly, mister. Hop right in. Okay. Maple Avenue, driver. Uh, nice, uh, nice day, isn't it? Yeah. How far are you going, buddy? Oh, I'm going much further than Maple Avenue. So you pay me and I'll pay the driver. <laughs> That'll save time. <laughs> I wish he'd step on it. I'm in a hurry to get home. You are? Yeah. I don't want to miss the Fred Allen program. What? <laughs> there. Gosh, boss, how could you reach the brake from the back seat? <laughs> Never mind. This is where you get out, mister. Why? What happened? What did I say? Get out. Get out. You can't put me out of this cab. Hey, driver. I'm sorry, mister, but you'll have to get out. Oh, I do, hey? Well, my name is Brown, and I'm going to report you to the president of this company. Mr. Brown, you may not know it, but you were thrown out by the president, <laughs> vice president, secretary, treasurer, and star of stage screen, and taxi cabs. <laughs> That's telling them, Rochester. Let's go. Gee, it sure is crowded in this store. I wish I'd have done my Christmas shopping early like I did last year. You gonna buy any gifts in here, Rochester? No, I already did my shopping. You did? Where? It's Saks Central Avenue. <laughs> now, let's see. I want to get something for my girl, Gladys Zabisco. But I don't know what. Why don't you ask the floor walker? Yeah. Oh, mister. Uh, mister, are you the floor walker? If I'm asked that question again, I'm going to smash somebody right over the head. <laughs> What are you mad about? I just asked you if you were the floor walker. You see this carnation in my lapel? Yes. Oh, what do you think I am, a long stem? <laughs> <laughs> oh, then, uh, then you, you are the floor walker. Of course, I'm not rugged enough to be a customer. <laughs> now, what can I do for you? Well, I'm interested in something for my girlfriend, uh... What, uh, what would you suggest? Well, what does your girl look like? Well, she's kind of thin and scrawny, and her hair is sort of stringy. But she really has a nice personality. She has a little turned-up nose, and she has two ears, and they, uh... Well, everybody's got two ears. On the same side? <laughs> Rochester. That's the way she combs her hair. It's a large bun. Well, I don't know what to suggest. Why don't you try our harness shop? <laughs> oh, don't be so smart. Come on, Rochester. I'll find things myself. Let's go over to this counter here. Pardon me, miss. Is this the perfume department? No, this is the cold cream counter. Can I smear something on you? <laughs> No, no, thanks. I'm not interested in cold cream. You know, we're short of help, so they split my week between cold cream and hot water bottles. Oh. Three days a week I'm greasy, and the other three I'm overheated. <laughs> well, I, I feel sorry for you. You know, for 20 years I was behind the perfume counter. Nothing but perfume for 20 years. Perfume, perfume, perfume. Well, that's too bad, Miss, uh, Miss, uh... Just call me Stinky. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Miss, I have to buy something for, uh... Hey, boss, look. Here comes Mr. Harris. Where? Oh, yeah. Hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Chester. Hello, Mr. Harris. Doing a little shopping, Phil? No, I came out here to see Don Wilson. Don Wilson? Yeah, he's playing Santa Claus here this year. No kidding. <laughs> well, how... How'd he get the job? It wasn't easy. He had to take off 20 pounds. <laughs> Gee, can you imagine Don being Santa Claus and talking to all the little kids, telling them about, hey, wait a minute. Have I got a wonderful idea. What is it, Jackson? Let's pull a gag on Wilson. Now, Phil, you go over to the boys' department and get dressed up like a little kid. Yeah? And I'll go down to the women's ready-to-wear and dress up like a woman. See, I'll be your mother. Okay, and I'll be the mean widow kid. <laughs> Boy, will, will we fool Don? <laughs> 
Rochester, wait for me out in the car. And Phil, I'll meet you in front of the toy department. Okay. <laughs> Gee, I wish Jackson would hurry up. I feel like a dope standing here dressed up like a little kid. Oh, boy, look what Jackson's missing. Hiya, babe. Shut up, it's me. <laughs> now, come on, let's fool Don. Come on, we'll go and fool Wilson. Remember, I'm your mother. Now, gather round, children, gather round, and I want to talk to each one of you in turn. Now, uh, let me see. Who's next? Uh, my little son is Santa Claus. Oh. My little son is Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, madam. Now, where is your little boy? Now, where is he? Oh, clear water. <laughs> clear water. Doody, doody, Santa Claus. Doody, doody, Santa Here I is, Mommy. <laughs> Isn't he a darling? Yes, he's a cute little rascal. Now, Clearwater, tell Santa Claus what you want for Christmas. Go ahead, don't be bad. No, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. No, I don't want to do it. Now, Clearwater, clap saddle. <laughs> tell Santa what you want. No, I don't want to do it. I don't Clearwater! Want to do it. Clearwater, take your foot out of your mouth. There. Now, the other one. That's better. Now, little boy, tell Santa what you want for Christmas. I want some grape nuts flakes. Grape nuts flakes? Yes, my mommy and my dad, what he tells me that they're toasty brown and they're sweet as a nut. That's right, my smart little man. And they're a whole grain cereal. You're absolutely right, Santa. Oh, how cute. Look at that nice little boy sitting on Santa Claus's lap. Such pretty golden coils he's got. Yes, that, that little boy happens to be mine. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> hmm. Now tell me, Sonny, wouldn't you like to have a bicycle? No, I want a drape nuts flakes because they're delicious, nutritious, and not rationed. That's right. <laughs> That's right, and what else? Well, there are basic seven food, the kind of food my dad would he wants me to eat more of. Well, 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 you certainly are a good little boy. You should be proud of him, Mrs. Clapsaddle. <laughs> Oh, I am. Now, Clearwater. <laughs> Clearwater, say goodbye to Santa Claus. Goodbye, Santa Claus. <laughs> goodbye, Santa Claus. Goodbye, Phil. So long, Jack. <laughs> oh, darn it, he knew it. He knew it all the time. What are we going to do now, Mommy, dear? <laughs> oh, shut up, you little jerk. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. Well, folks, that finishes uh, another program, and we'll be back with you next Sunday night at the same time. Meanwhile, my cast and I want to send Christmas greetings to all of you, to all of you here at home and to all of our boys and girls in the service here and abroad. Good night, everybody. <laughs> the Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to turn the clock back about 20 hours and take you to Jack Benny's house. It's Christmas night, and Jack is expecting a few of his friends over. It's about a quarter to eight, and Rochester is preparing for the arrival of the guests. I'm gonna buy a paper doll that I can call my own, a doll that other fellows cannot steal. Mm, this living room hasn't been clean in weeks. I think I'll surprise Mr. Benny and dust it. Well, that's done. <laughs> and then those flirty, flirty guys with their flirty, flirty eyes. Gee, the boss sure is a nice Christmas tree. Only it seems to be leaning a little. I better get down on my knees and straighten the top up. I am the doll that I can call my. Uh oh. Look what I discovered here behind this curtain Mr. Benny's box of cigars. Mm -hmm, they show sure look tempting. No, I guess I better not. But I don't think he counts them anymore. There ain't no notches on the lid. 
<laughs> Should I or shouldn't I? Get thee behind me, Satan. I can't reach the box with you standing in front of me. <laughs> no, I won't. Oh, well, I'll take just one. There. I guess I'll take another one. Satan enjoys smoking, too. Well, now I better sweep up a little bit. I'm going to buy a paper doll that I can call my own. A doll that other fellows cannot steal. boy, Satan. <laughs> Rochester, Rochester, what are you doing? Just dusting around a bit. Okay, I'll be right down. Mm, I better go in the next room and get rid of this cigar. <laughs> I'm gonna buy a paper doll that I can call my own. A, a doll, doll that, that other fellows cannot steal. What was that? <laughs> Must be an echo. An echo that sings harmony? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's Christmas. And the flirty, flirty guys with... Hmm, I, I smell cigar smoke. Oh, Rochester! Yes, boy! <laughs> what is this I'm smelling? It ain't Chanel number five! <laughs> Rochester, come here. Now, Rochester, anytime you want a cigar on Christmas, just ask me for it. Hey, I think our guests are beginning to arrive. Isn't that Miss Livingston's car pulling up? Yeah, I'll go to the door, boss. No, Rochester, I'll go. I'm going to surprise Mary. I got some mistletoe over the door, and the minute she comes in, I'm going to kiss her. <coughs> Shh, quiet. <coughs> surprise! Gee, and do I get a Christmas present besides? <laughs> Dennis. I thought it was Miss Livingston. Well, she drove me over here, and she's parking the car. Oh, darn it. I hung that mistletoe up there especially for Mary. I wanted the kiss to be a surprise for her. Go on. You trap me this way every year. <laughs> oh, quiet. I wanted Mary to get the kiss. Hey, she's coming up to walk now. Get in here, quick. She didn't see the mistletoe, so there was still time. Now, be quiet, Dennis. Dennis, I was supposed to do that. <laughs> For heaven's sake. Hello, Jack. Merry Christmas. Same to you, Mary. Give me a kiss. There. Jack, I was hoping for a white Christmas, not a wet one. <laughs> oh, you liked it all right. Say, Mary, come on in the living room. I want to show you how I got things fixed up. Okay. Oh, by the way, I sent my maid Butterfly to help out. Is she here? Yep, she's in the kitchen. Say, you have got the room fixed up nice. It looks swell. It sure does. And Mary, do you like the Christmas tree? Oh, Jack, it's very pretty, and I don't think the year in the garage hurt it a bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it didn't. And you know how it is, Mary. These days, you have to conserve trees and wrapping paper and things like that. I know, but don't you think you're overdoing this conserving business? What do you mean? After all, Jack, using an old toupee for a welcome mat. <laughs> Mary, it isn't an old toupee Oh, no? Every time somebody wipes their feet on it, you have to run out and comb it again <laughs> Mary, stop clowning, will Say, you? Say, boss, if you're expecting guests, you better get Mr. Billingsley out of the house Today he's crazier than ever He is not Well, right now he's in his room wrapping up a Christmas present for you And he's wrapping it in wallpaper Oh, what's he giving me? A wall! <laughs> Well, we can use one in the bathroom there. Say, uh, Mary, come in. I wonder who that is. Hello, Mary. Hiya, Jackson. Merry Christmas. Merry yeah, Christmas, Merry Christmas, Bill. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And say, you brought your band with you. That's swell. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad they're here, but you'd think they're, they're coming to a party. They'd dress up a little. What are you talking about? They shaved, didn't they? <laughs> yes, but why aren't they wearing shirts? Well, that's where they shaved. They want people to see you. <laughs> Well, your guitar player shaved two clothes as a rib sticking out there. <laughs> anyway, take the boys in the next room and they can set up their instruments. Okay. Oh, by the way, Phil, maybe the boys would like to have a drink first. No, as long as they're here in the house, they might as well stay. <laughs> Phil, they don't have to go out for it. There's a big bowl of punch in the next room. Punch? Okay, come on, fellas, punch. Oh. Say, Mary, let's... Uh... Gee, there must be some more of the gang. I'll get it, boss. 
It's probably Claudette Colbert or Barbara Stanwyck or Ann Southern. You'd be happy if it was Lassie coming home. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I've invited a oh, lot Oh, Mr. Of... Benny! Mr. Benny, your riders are here! My riders? Well, let them in. The front way? Of course. <laughs> Hello, fellas. Come on in. And now go, go into the den, fellas, and when you finish tomorrow's script, you can join the party. Me too, Mr. Benny. Why, certainly. Wait a minute, I only have four writers. Who are you? I'm the guy who writes for them. <laughs> oh. Oh, so that's how I get my joke. Uh-huh. It ain't no picnic, I can tell you that. They beat me and kick me and twist my arm to force witticisms out of me. <laughs> they beat you and kick you? Yeah, and that ain't all. They tie me in a chair, then the first guy shines a bright light in my eyes, the second guy blows cigarette smoke in my face to torment me, and the third guy says, give us a joke or we'll send you back to Harvard. <laughs> That's terrible, a fine bunch of... Say, wait a minute, what does my fourth rider do? Oh, he stands behind me and hits me over the head with a blackjack. Oh, oh, well, as long as they're all working. <laughs> I wish you'd fired those guys. Well... Except the one that hits me over the head with the blackjack. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I knew the boys were turning in pretty good stuff, but I didn't think they had help. Well, anyway, go on in with the rest of the boys and finish the script. Hey, Phil, Phil! Yeah, Jackson? Let's get this party going. How about some music? Okay. I had to get something to get him away from that fruit, you know. <laughs> More punch, fellas. That was swell. No kidding. Say, Mary, the band sounds pretty good in here. Yeah. Mm. Jack, you ought to uh, get the food out. Is it ready yet? Well, I think Butterfly should have it prepared by now. Well, let's go out in the kitchen, see how she's getting along. Okay. Hello, Butterfly. How's everything going? Oh, fine, Miss Livingston. Now, Butterfly, did you put the long stem glasses on the table like I told you to? Yes, sir. Well, what about the bucket with the ice cubes in it? I took care of that, boss. Here it is. And I put the bottle in the bucket of ice. Yes, the bottle's okay. Uh-huh, there's enough cracked ice around it. I put a clean napkin over it. And, Butterfly, just before you serve it, you're supposed to turn it slowly in the ice. Like this. See? Oh, boy, what you go through for a bottle of Pepsi-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mary, I want everything to be perfect. Here. I know. Now, Butterfly, when the guests are at the table, you serve from the left and take away the dishes from the right. Hmm? I said you must serve from the left and take away from the right. Oh, well, okay, if you're superstitious. <laughs> hmm. No, no, Butterfly, it's not a superstition. That's just the right way to do it, according to Emily Post. Oh. Was she your last maid? <laughs> <laughs> Butterfly, we'll explain it to you some other time. Come on, Mary, let's go. Oh, Miss Livingston. Yes? Please, could I be able to leave right after I serve tonight? I have a date. Why, Butterfly, you have a boyfriend? <laughs> oh, come on, Butterfly, tell us. Have you really got a boyfriend? Mm-hmm. He's in the army. Oh. Private? No, I split him with another girl. <laughs> Well, I'll be... All right, Butterfly, you can leave as soon as you finish serving. Come on, Jack. Hey, Jackson, we're waiting. How about the grub, Bob? It's coming, it's coming. Say, Don, when did you get in? Oh, just a minute ago. And, Jack, I want to thank you for the bonus you gave me for Christmas. Well, I couldn't think of anything to buy, and I know cash always comes in handy. What'd you do with it, Don? What did I do with it? You see this diamond stick pin in my necktie? Yes. Well, I took your bonus, added a little of my own money to it, and bought the tie. <laughs> I knew it would come in handy. Come on, Don, let's join the gang. We'll sing and play games and have some fun till the food's ready. Say, Jack, here comes that screwy boarder of yours. Oh, yes. Hello, Mr. Billingsley. Good evening, Mr. Benny. Having a merry uh, Christmas, I see. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, we're celebrating. Um, would you, uh, would you care to join us? Oh, no, thanks, Mr. Benny. I must be running along. I've got to drive into town. 
Drive? But, Mr. Billingsley, you haven't got a car. I haven't? No. <laughs> My, and all the money I've spent on parking lots. <laughs> hmm. Oh, by the way, that reminds me. Of what? I wish I was a sleigh bell in honor of Kris Kringle. I jump upon my pogo stick and jingle, jingle, jingle. <laughs> <laughs> say, say, that, that, that's very good. I wrote a poem for Thanksgiving, too, but we didn't have a turkey, so I ate it. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. Well, naturally, at your age. <laughs> What a guy. Come on, Jack. Let's join the crowd. You said we were going to play games and everything. Yeah. Well, is everybody having a good time? Shh, quiet, then? Jack. Dennis is going to sing for the gang. Oh, he is? Oh, yeah. Dennis, that was very, very good. You sang those carols beautifully. Sandwiches, sandwiches, here you are. Come and oh, get boy, it. Oh, boy, oh, boy, no, boy, no, no, no. Hey, take it easy. Take it easy, Hey, fellas. what kind of sandwiches are they? Thin ones. Oh. <laughs> they are not. Now, look, fellas, those sandwiches... Now, who can that be? Come in. Hey, look who it is. Hey, Bob! Andy Devine! Christmas, Andy. Oh, God. Well, Andy, this sure is a surprise. You know, we haven't seen you since last Christmas. Yes, sir. It must be six or seven months. <laughs> well, come on, Andy. Grab yourself a bite to eat, and then we're going to play games and have some fun. Hey, wait a minute, Buck. Ma sent you a Christmas present. It's in this box. Well, thanks, Andy. What is it? Our pet homing pigeon. You remember that silver gray one? Oh, yeah, but gee, your ma was so fond of that pigeon Yeah, I know, Buck, but, but she wants you to have it now Well, won't she miss it? Yeah, but what's the difference? It died this morning <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's not the gift, it's the sentiment behind it that counts Well, anyway, Andy, I'm glad you're here to liven up the party Yes, sir Hey, what's going on? Is somebody going to make a speech? Speech nothing, me and Mary's going to sing a song you and Mary, huh? Yeah, we're going to sing a duel. <laughs> a duel? Phil, when two people sing, it's a duet. Oh. Well, what is it when I sing by myself? Lousy. <laughs> Come on, let's have a song. No, let's play games. Yeah, 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 yeah let's, let's play, play games. games. Let's play games. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. We'll take a vote. Who wants a song? Yeah, a song. A song. A song. Who wants to play games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. play games. Who wants to hear me play the violin? Well <laughs> Doggone it, audience You crabbed a good joke <laughs> You see, and you fellas think I play lousy That's so <laughs> Nobody was supposed to applaud there well, anyway, the majority rules. <laughs> but, Jack, nobody wants to hear you play. Quiet, Mary. My vote is as good as theirs. <laughs> you know, I've been playing this song for years. Maybe I better learn a new one. You ought to learn that one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this party's getting dull. We ought to do something to liven it up. I an idea. Let's sing Jingle Bell. Okay, let's go.
Mr. Bentley's resident, star of stage, screen, and radio, but he ain't doing so good right now. <laughs> Hello, may I speak to Mr. Benny, please? Just a minute. Mr. Benny, telephone call for you. Oh, darn it. You folks will excuse me, won't you? Oh, go answer the phone. Hmm. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Jack. Merry Christmas. Oh, hello, Gladys. Hey, that's Jack's girlfriend, Gladys Abisco. Well, Gladys, I'm waiting for you. Why aren't you here yet? I'm sorry, Jack, but I can't make it. Hilda didn't come to work today, so I have to wait on her tables, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gladys, honey, even if you are waiting on Hilda's tables, that won't keep you busy all night, will it? No, Poochie. <laughs> But when I get off, I'll be so tired And I have to take two streetcars and a bus to get to your house <laughs> But Gladys, this is Christmas Why don't you take a cab? You're getting Hilda's tips <laughs> You know I'm sorry, Rosebud Well, you can't, I guess you can't Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow night I'll meet you at our usual rendezvous All right Gee, I hope there's a full moon it's so dark in the La Brea tar pits. <laughs> yeah. Well, see you there tomorrow night, Gladys. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, honey. Yeah? Don't forget to wear your hip boots. <laughs> well, fellas, Gladys won't be here, so what do you say we... Hey, Rochester. Rochester. Yes, boss? Where is everybody? Have they gone home? No, boss. The party's just starting. They're all out in the backyard. Oh, good. What are they doing? Bearing your violin. <laughs> Bearing my violin? Well, for goodness sake, you'd think that Miss Livingston would stop them. Stop them? She was the head Paul bear. <laughs> well, I'll show them. Imagine bearing my violin. <laughs> I'm sure glad I won't be hearing that thing anymore. I hope they bear that fiddle so deep I'll ne it'll never get out. Yes, sir. I'm going to buy a paper doll that I can call my own. A doll that all the fellas can steal. Oh, hello, Satan. Satan, you here again? Come on, boy. Let's get some more of those cigars. <laughs> Well, folks, before we're back with you again next Sunday, it will be 1944. So on behalf of my cast, my sponsor, and myself, I want to extend to all of you in America and to all of our armed forces and allies everywhere best wishes for a happy and victorious New Year. Good night, everybody. Jack Benny program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Tis the night before Christmas, and at Jack Benny's house, there are presents for all, even cheese for the mouse. <laughs> Jack is up on a chair, then he's down on his knee. But you have to do that when you're trimming a tree. Well, we're all through, Mary. Gee, it was nice of you to come over and help me trim the tree. Well, if I didn't, you'd never get it done. Say, Jack, shall I put the snow around the bottom now? Not yet. I want to see if the lights are working. I'll hold up the bulbs, and when I say ready, you plug it in. Okay. Ready? Ready. Pull it out! Pull it out! Pull it out! <laughs> My goodness. Oh, Jack, why did you make me shut it off? Those lights were so pretty, especially those two blue ones that kept flashing on and off. Those were my eyes. <laughs> must have been holding on to a bare wire. Well, it's your own fault. Every time you fool around with electricity, something goes wrong. It does not. I know plenty about electricity. Oh, sure. Remember what happened two years ago when you fixed your doorbell? What happened? I pushed the button and it burned down Crosby's house. <laughs> oh, stop.
Stop exaggerating. Anyway, hand me that roll of tape. Give me that tape. I'll fix this bare wire right now. Here you are. Thanks. It comes to electricity. I know what I'm doing. See, when you see a bare wire, you just tape it up like... like this. And that way, it's an insulated against outside elements. There, that ought to be enough tape. All right, Mary, plug it in. Okay. Pull it out! Pull it out! Pull it out! <laughs> For heaven's sake. <laughs> what happened, Jack? I taped my finger to the wire. <laughs> Oh, gee. And that time it is even prettier than before. What do you mean? Your nose lit up, too. <laughs> it did not. Let's get this tree finished before the gang gets here. But, Jack, what about the lights? We'll have to let that go until later. Now, hand me one of those... Oh, uh... Mr. Bevy! What is it, Rochester? I baked that cake like you told me to. Good. Did you have enough whipped cream to spell out Merry Christmas on top? Yeah. Say, boss, how many R's in Merry? Two. Oh. So you better add one. Add one? I better cross one out. I got three. <laughs> well, leave it. It's better than ruining the cake. Okay. Oh, Rochester, will you please take these Christmas tree lights and fix them? Fix them? Yes. I ain't fooling around with electricity. Now, what are you afraid of? I ain't gonna get hit by nothing I can't hit back. <laughs> oh, Rochester. Imagine being afraid of electricity. Suppose Robert Fulton was afraid of electricity. He never would have invented the electric light. <laughs> Woody. Jack, you're thinking of Thomas Edison. Edison? Well, then what did Robert Fulton do? He said, don't give up the ship. <laughs> that was John Paul Jones. Now, let's not start that again. Now, Rochester, please fix these lights, will you? Okay, okay. Let's see. Now, in electricity, there's the electrons and the electrodes. <laughs> then there's the positive and the negative. But I ain't positive which one is negative. <laughs> hmm. Then there's the atoms. Now, the atoms are supposed to go from the positive to the negative. Or maybe they go from the electrons to the electrodes. <laughs> then again, maybe they go from Natchez to Mobile. <laughs> Rochester. Now, as long as these atoms keep passing each other, everything is all right. Yeah. But when they meet halfway and start fighting, they're going to turn on anybody who tries to butt in. Rochester, I'm not interested in the scientific details. I just want you to fix those lights. And I promise you, while you're holding the wires, no one in this room will turn on the switch. I know, boss. While I'm holding the wire, you ain't going to turn on the switch. And Miss Livingston ain't going to turn on the switch. Of course not. But way up there at Boulder Dam is a little man sitting in a room with thousands of wires around him. What? How do I know he ain't gonna do something just to break the monotony? <laughs> oh, all right, I'll fix it myself. Go back in the kitchen. Come in. I'm looking for Mr. Benny. Mr. Jack Benny. Me? Yes. But you're a policeman. Well, now, what do you know? This blue uniform has given me away again. But, uh, but, but officer, Mary, say something. But, but officer. Is that all you can say? That's all you said. <laughs> now, now, officer. Mr. Benny, I hate to be doing this to you on Christmas Eve, but I have a complaint about you disturbing the peace last week at Moore's department store. At Moore's department? Oh, that! Well, officer, that wasn't my fault at all. You see, first I had trouble with some crazy floor walker who kept hollering, stop breathing on my carnation. And then... A little sore, please. I'm writing it down. Yes, sir. How many R's in carnation? One. Then. And then some silly guy kept following me around, asking me what I thought I ought to buy his wife for Christmas. Now, I didn't mind it the first time or the second time, but he kept hounding me. And just before the real trouble started, I was standing by the perfume counter when all of us... I was trying to buy some perfume for my sister, Flora. Here's your change, sir. Thank you. Come on, Mary. Let's get over I beg your pardon, mister. Oh, it's you again. What do you think I ought to buy my wife for Christmas? I told you before, I don't know what you should buy your wife for Christmas. Figure it out yourself. Figure it out yourself, he says. Figure it out yourself. Fine Christmas spirit. Look, I don't care what you buy your wife for Christmas. Don't buy her anything. Don't buy her anything? We've been married for 12 years. What are you trying to do? Break us up? 
Look, I don't know your wife. I've never seen your wife. What's going on here? What's the trouble? That man's been caught stealing somebody's wife. What? At your age, you gray-haired wolf. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Well, I know what I mean. One time, let me through. What's going on here? What's going... Oh, it's you, my little cupy with the droopy toopy. Now, cut that out and don't blame me for this because it... Stop breathing on my carnation. <laughs> I'll breathe on it as much as I like. <laughs> You're darn right I'm mad, and this is all your fault, mister. Ask me to buy your wife for Christmas. For all I care, you can buy her a dog collar. What side? What side? There you are, folks. You see what a crazy guy is, and you blame me. Why, it's not my fault. I'm not the type that would start trouble. I'm a peaceful home... Ah, shut up! <laughs> oh, come on, Mary. Let's get out of here. And that's... That's exactly what happened, officer. Believe me. By golly, it's amazing. It sounds like something you'd hear on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm convinced it wasn't your fault, and I'm going to forget all about this complaint and be wishing you folks a Merry Christmas. The same to you, officer. And a Happy New Year. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Say, Mary, he was a nice fellow at that. Yes, he? he was. Now, come on, Mary. Let's put the presents around the tree before the gang gets here. Huh? <laughs> Well, well, Mary, we got all the packages under the tree. It looks nice, doesn't it? It sure does. Jack, if you're not going to use the Christmas tree lights, let's put on the candy canes. Okay, here's the box, and you can... Hey, wait a minute. I had 12 candy canes, and now there are only 11. Where's the other one? Don't look at me. I'm not looking at you. I'm asking you. All right, I ate it. Here's 10 cents. <laughs> Smarty. I bet you'd be surprised if I took it. I wouldn't be surprised if you sued me. <laughs> Mary, let's get this finished, will you? Jack, you better pick up those lights off off the floor before somebody steps on them. Oh, yes. Now, where can I put them? You know, I'll put these lights up here on the chair, this chair right here. And, Mary, here's Rochester's present. I forgot that. Slip it under the tree. Boy, will he be surprised. But, Jack, how'll he be surprised? You've got toilet water written all over the package. Well, you've got to do that with Rochester. When he opens the package and finds a bottle, he never stops to read the label. <laughs> last, last year, I gave him a miniature ship and a bottle, and the mask stuck out of his mouth for three days. <laughs> Every time I asked him something, he had to answer me through the crow's nest. <laughs> Believe me, Mary, I, I know what I'm doing. Well, Jack, I guess that does it. Tree's all finished. Yeah. Gee, it looks swell. I'm kind of tired. I think I'll sit down for a minute and smoke a cigarette. Mary, have you got a match? No. Oh, well. Oh, say, boss! What is it, Rochester? Are your socks dry yet? My socks? I think so. Well, people will be here soon. You better take them off the tree. <laughs> Oh, that's right. You take them off, will you, Rochester? I'm tired. I want to sit here a while. Yes, sir. Say, this tree looks all nice, but it's kind of dark. Oh, no wonder the lights aren't plugged in. Uh, I'll fix that. Pull it out! Pull it out! Pull it out! <laughs> For heaven's sake. Well, what's the matter, Jack? I was sitting on the wire. <laughs> as long as you're here, Rochester, give me a match. You don't need it now. Your cigarette is lit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Thanks, Rochester. Don't thank me. Thank that little man up at Boulder Dam. <laughs> Rochester. I wonder how that guy at Boulder Dam knew I was... Oh, uh... Come in! Hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Merry Christmas, everybody. Same to you, Phil. Hey, Jackson, that Christmas tree looks terrific. Yeah, it is a nice tree, isn't it? Not only that, it's grown about two feet since last year. <laughs> Phil, this isn't the same one. You know, Phil, I believe in the old-fashioned way of getting a tree. I know when you get up early in the morning and bundle yourself up warm, and you throw an axe over your shoulder and go out in the woods, you know, way out in the wilderness and... Chop down your own Christmas tree. Yeah, you're right, Jackson. Where'd you find this one? In the lobby of the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. <laughs> you said it. Timber! Yes, sir. Say, Jackson, you ought to see the tree I got in my house. 
I got it all decorated, and then right on top, I got a big red star. A red star? Phil's supposed to be a silver star. I know, but this way I get five red points. <laughs> oh, Harris, you humorous. You're the Mark Train of your generation. <laughs> Mark Train? Phil, it's Twain. Twain. Wheelie? <laughs> Phil, after a gag like that, your lucky Santa doesn't scratch you with his claws. <laughs> say, say, that was pretty good, too. Don't bother sending us Cracker Jack, Mother. We're now getting corn by the ton. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Mary. I thought that was pretty cute. Hey, Phil, what do you got in that package there? Oh, I forgot, Jackson. It's a Christmas present for you. For me? Yeah, me and the boys in the band all chipped in and got it for you. Well, thanks, thanks. I'll put it under the tree. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. Open it up right now. Okay. See, it was certainly nice of you and the boys to think of me. You know, I really didn't... Oh, Phil, thanks. Gee, a beautiful turtleneck sweater. Gee. Well, look inside of it, Jackson. Inside? Oh! <laughs> oh, Phil! What is it, Jack? A turtle. <laughs> A fine present. I'll fix him. Imagine bring me a turtle for anything, Barry. Come here, Phil. Phil, sit down on my chair. Well, thanks, Jackson. Are you, uh, are you comfortable, Phil? Sure. Good, good. Mary, Mary, push in the plug. Oh, Jack, you wouldn't dare. Hand me the plug. I'll give it to him myself. Hey, Jackson, what about my present? Yes, sit where you are. You'll get it. You'll get it. <laughs> it's a surprise. Mary, watch him jump. One, two, three. There. Hmm. <laughs> Phil? Phil, don't you feel anything? No, why? Hmm. Well, what about the surprise? What's the matter? Uh, we're having a little trouble at Boulder Dam. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, I, I can't understand what went wrong. Phil, stand up a minute. Okay. Let's see. There must be something wrong with this thing. <laughs> Pull it out! Pull it out! Pull it out! I think to do to a guy on Christmas Eve. Well, it's your old fault for trying to play a trick on Phil. Oh, so that's it, eh, Jackson? Trying to give me a hot seat. Oh, it was nothing, Phil. I was just trying to have a little fun. Pull it out! Pull it out! Jack, that's a doorbell. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Come in. Hiya, Don. Hello, Larry. Oh, Don, 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 Larry. Hey, I'm glad, I, I'm glad you fellas were able to come over. Oh, say, Mr. Benny. Yes, Larry. Well, last night I went to the movies and I saw a picture called Hollywood Canteen. You did? Yes. And you want to know something? What? You were in it. <laughs> yes, yes. I know, kid. I, I happened to see the picture. Eight times. <laughs> what? On the days he can't go, he sends me. <laughs> Rochester. Between you and me, that seat never gets a chance to cool off. <laughs> never mind. Well, say, Jack, I saw the picture, too. You did, Don? Well, Don, tell me, how did my violin solo go over? Well, Jack, this will amaze you. Really? When uh, you started to play, the man next to me got all excited and enthused. <laughs> oh, I get it, Don, I get it. You don't have to... Okay, talk. Mr. Benny, I got the cake and coffee on the table. Good, come on, fellas, let's have a little bite. Oh, oh, yeah, come on, come on. Now, take it easy, fellas, take it easy, take it easy. There's enough for all. Yes, folks, you don't have to crowd. Just line up to the right and have your ticket stuff ready. <laughs> Rochester, this is Christmas. Oh, oh, yes, excuse me. Now, fellas. Hey, who can that be? Come in. Well, I'll be darned. Hi there, Buck. Hello, everybody. Oh, yeah. Well, what a surprise. Andy Devine. Well, who'd you think I was? Frank Sinatra? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, 
Andy, your voice and figure are both a little huskier, I think. Uh, hey, Andy, there's Don Wilson. Oh, yeah. Hello, Skinny. <laughs> Hello, fatso. Uh, that's the first time I ever heard a pot call a pot a pot. <laughs> Say, Andy, Andy, how's your mother? Oh, she's swell, Buck. Hey, you know, it, it's nice the way you think of her every year. Oh, I always call my friends around the holidays. Well, you don't have to worry about Ma. Buck, she wouldn't think of buying her Christmas cards from anyone else but you. <laughs> I know, that's why I always throw in a couple of extra ones, you know? Here you are, folks, here's a... Oh, hello, Mr. Devine. Well, hello, Rochester. I'm glad you dropped in on the boss. Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without you. Well, thanks, Roch. You know, the holidays wouldn't be the same if I didn't see all of you folks. <laughs> Those are the two voices that drove Gravel Gertie into hiding. <laughs> Say, come on, Andy, you're just in time to have a bite to eat. And listen, I've been saving a bottle of champagne just for this occasion. Let's drink a toast. Champagne? Oh, come on, yeah. fellas, everybody. Oh, yeah, sure. oh, Rochester, give me that bottle of champagne. Here you are, boss. Shall I open it? No, I'll open it myself. Thank you. <laughs> now, let's see. <clears throat> champagne corks are so tight. <clears throat> see, they're hard to get loose. Um. <clears throat> The of a revolt. For goodness sake, fellas, don't just stand there. Pull a the cork out of his mouth. <laughs> okay, hold your head still, Jackson. I'll pull a cork out. Now, there. <laughs> there. Jack. Jack, say something. <laughs> Boy. Here, Rochester. Rochester, fill the glasses. Yes, sir. Hey, fellas, how about a toast? Hey, huh? I got one. You got go toast. ahead, Andy. A toast? Go ahead. Here's to you, Buck, Mary, Phil, and the whole gang. We've been friends for a long time, and I hope it always stays that way. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, Andy! Merry Christmas! Jack, can I give a toast, too? Sure, sure. Go right ahead, Mary. A Merry Christmas to everyone, everywhere. Well, yeah, Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everybody. Merry, 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 Christmas. Christmas. Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good night, folks. The Jack Benny Program. The Lucky Strike Program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, two weeks ago, Jack Benny had dinner at Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman's house. And tonight, as a typical good neighbor, Jack has invited the Colemans over to his house. So let's go out to Beverly Hills, where we find Jack preparing for the arrival of his distinguished guests. Well, I'm almost dressed, Rochester. Uh, how, uh, how do I look in my, um... How do I look in my striped pants and swallowtail coat? You look like a master of ceremonies at Forest Lawn. <laughs> I do not. Now, Rochester, when you're serving dinner tonight, remember, serve the tomato juice first, then the salad, then the meat, and then the vegetables. I'm glad you brought that up, boss. I wanted to ask you about the peas. What about the peas? Do you want me to spoon them out or count them out? <laughs> Uh, spoon them out tonight. There's nothing too good for the Colemans. And um, <laughs> uh, don't forget, uh, for dessert, we're having a flaming plum pudding. How do you fix it, boss? Well, you take the plum pudding and put it in a bowl. Uh-huh. Uh, then you take a pint of brandy, good brandy, you know, real old brandy, and you pour it over the pudding. Continue, boss. You fascinate me. <laughs> <laughs> then you take a match and set fire to the brandy. You what? You take a match and set fire to the brandy. Boss, I doubt if I'll have the heart. <laughs> well, J 
just, just do as I tell you. See you later. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle dum da ding da dum 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 Gee, I hope the gang got all those contest letters cleaned up. I don't want the Coleman's to find out that so many people can't stand me. Huh? <laughs> well, kids, are you about finished with the mail? We're all through, Jack, except for those entries over there in the corner. Why haven't you opened those? They're still ticking. <laughs> ticking? You mean... Hey, there's one that's smoking. Quick, Don, throw it out the window. Okay. Hmm, I wonder why... The... <laughs> Fine Christmas spirit. That that thing could have. Hello, Mr. Penny. Huh? Who are you? I was just passing by and something blew me in. <laughs> oh, oh, well, Merry Christmas. The same to you. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Now, kids, we've got to get all these letters read because the contest ends tomorrow night, December 24th, you know. Say, Jack, listen to this letter I just opened. I think it's from a Scotch girl. A Scotch girl? What does it say? I can't stand Jack Benny because his nose is warmer than mine. Sign Lassie. <laughs> oh, she's just mad because she read that big story about me in Newsweek. Anyway, kids, never mind the rest of those letters. Mr. and Mrs. Coleman will be here for dinner soon. I also invited their friend, Jack Wellington. So please be on your best behavior. Especially you, Phil. Me? Yes, you. Just for tonight, don't bring your jug to the table with you. <laughs> please. Now, wait a minute, Jackson. Have you ever tried eating that meat straight? <laughs> I know it's awful, Phil, but do it just as a favor to me. And another thing, Phil. When you take the jacket off the baked potato, you're not supposed to go... It's only a potato. <laughs> and Don... Yes, Jack? Don, when Rochester offers you a third helping, try to refuse, will you? Or at least say well before you dive in. <laughs> and Mary... Oh, Jack, don't try to tell me anything about eating. You better listen to him, Libby. He was eating 30 years before you were born. <laughs> Bill, your Christmas present isn't so big that I can't carry it back to the store. So don't try to... Give... Oh, hello, Polly. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> Say, kids. Kids, don't you think uh, my Christmas tree is a beauty? Look how big it is. It sure is, Mr. Benny. Where did you get it? Well... I'll uh... tell you, kid. A man drove through Beverly Hills with that tree laying on top of his car, and Jackson was right behind him. Phil, Jackson knew about the sharp curve in the road and the man didn't. <laughs> Phil, please, Christmas trees are very sentimental to me. In fact, I used to go out in the woods and cut down my own tree, but I gave that up. Yeah, it's so hard to find one with packages under it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this is the best Christmas tree I've ever had. And look at all those presents. Say, Mr. Benny, what's in that great big box over there all tied up with that red and green ribbon? That's there every year, kid. It's a decoy. <laughs> It is not. Oh, oh, boss, boss. What is it, Rochester? For dinner tonight, do you want French bread, raisin bread, or English muffins? Hmm, English muffins. Are they the real English muffins? Are they? I cut one of them open and found two tickets to a cricket match. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't go. You've got work to do. And by the way, I hired, I hired an English butler to help me serve tonight uh, so the Coleman's will feel at home. He should be here any minute. Gosh, I'll bet right now Ronnie and Benita are sitting on pins and needles waiting to leave their house. Oh, Ronnie! Ronnie, where are you? Right here in the library, Benita. Darling, it's almost 8 o'clock. It's time for us to go over to Mr. Benny's house. Have you forgotten? Oh, no, no. I haven't forgotten. It's been on my mind all week. <laughs> hey, uh, perhaps we can phone and make some excuse. No, no, darling, we can't do that. He's probably gone to a great deal of trouble preparing dinner. In fact, just this afternoon, his butler... Uh, oh, what's his butler's name again? Um... Manchester? Yes. <laughs> Well, he came to the back door and wanted to borrow some sugar, so I gave him a saucerful. 
You gave him a saucerful? Yes, they already have all our cups. <laughs> yes. Yes, I, I wondered why Sherwood served my afternoon tea in a Dixie cup. <laughs> but I guess you're right, Benita. Maybe we should go. I'll never forget when Benny invited us to his house three years ago and we didn't show up. You know, it made him so angry, he wrote a letter to Britain asking for his bundle back. <laughs> Probably sensitive. Well, it's getting late. You better start dressing. Oh, yes, yes. And I mustn't forget to take Jack Benny's shoes back to him. His shoes? Yes, he, he slipped them off when he was having dinner here two weeks ago. <laughs> you know, I, I'd never seen such interesting shoes. There's so many secret pockets in them. <laughs> and there's, there's a little device in there where, where you wiggle your toes and it makes change. <laughs> belong to Mr. Benny. I should have known they weren't yours when I saw the box spring in the arch support. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that too. Uh, by the way, Benita, who's invited to the dinner besides us? Well, I understand there'll be Mary Livingston. She's on his program, you know. Mary Livingston. Uh, didn't she at one time work behind the stocking counter at the May Company? <laughs> yes, and I can't understand her giving up a good job like that. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yes, besides Mary Livingston, there'll be that uh, Phil Harris fellow. Oh, yes. Ham, hocks, and turnip greens. <laughs> say, Benita, couldn't we phone and say that Uncle Oswald is ill and oh, that yeah. we have to go and visit him? You, you can't do that. After all, Mr. Benny lives right next door. He'll see our lights and know we're home. Oh, yes, yes. Even that 30-foot fence doesn't keep him from peeping in on us. <laughs> Creeping along his side of the fence with a periscope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I a most do... remarkable fellow. I do hope Mr. Benny doesn't insist on playing that violin tonight. No, no, why, Benita, why did you have to bring that up? For ten years I've been plagued with love in bloom. I've hoped, I've wished, yes, even prayed for a minor disaster, a fire, a tornado, even termites, anything, but destroy that violin. Oh, well, if he can't be stopped, then in the name of heaven, let him play right. Give him the will. Give him the strength. Give him the talent to hit that high note. <laughs> Perhaps he's got short fingers. <laughs> well, every day for ten years, it's been love in bloom. And now it's a new one. Kiss me once and kiss me twice and da 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, dear, but I didn't mean to lose my temper. Well, cheer up, darling. I'm sure we'll have a lovely evening at Mr. Benny's. Yeah, I hope so. Mm, perhaps he'll eat a lot and fall asleep early. <laughs> uh, Jack, do you want to come in the dining room and see the table looks all right? Uh, in a minute, Mary. I'm busy. <laughs> your violin tonight. I am, too. <laughs> the Coleman's are pretty high-class people. They don't go places just to eat. Now, let me track it. <laughs> I'll have to get a new string. That was a door buzzer. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh. Oh, say, maybe that's the... Never mind, Rochester, I'll get it. Yes? I was a little bit long, and I just wanted to go all the hell the two. I was a little bit long, and I Oh, yes, you're the English butler I ordered. Have you had much experience at oh, serving? Yes, yes, I've served the butler in England, so that you're going to the other part of the world, and you're going to the
Well, good, good. Uh, go right. <laughs> go right. Go right in the kitchen and get started. Uh, what's your name? Bertrand <laughs> Fool. What? What was that? What's your phone Oh. Well, tonight, tonight, I'll just call you Nottingham. <laughs> Jack, who is that? It was the, uh, it was the English butler I hired. For tonight, I'm, go I'm calling him Nottingham. Uh, do you think that's English enough? Uh, why don't you call him the White Cliffs of Dover? <laughs> no, no, that's too long. Uh, maybe hey, I Hey, Jackson, why don't you call him Heathcliff? Heathcliff? Sure, you're trying to pull a bluff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Filthy, they ought to hang you up instead of your stocking. <laughs> you can say that again. <laughs> oh, oh, that must be the Coleman's now. I'll get it. No, no, Rochester, that's why I got the English butler. Uh, Nottingham, uh, answer the door, please. No. <laughs> Good evening. Mr. Benny is expecting us. Oh, come on, come on, come on. I'm cold the waiting room in the drawing room. <laughs> uh, what was that? I said, come on, sir, come on, sir. I have to call the waiting room in the drawing room. Oh, Ronnie, Ronnie, Benita, I'm glad you came so early. Hello, oh, Jack, old boy. So good of you to have us over. Oh, it's a pleasure indeed. Nottingham, take Mr. and Mrs. Coleman's hat, coat, and canoe. <laughs> You know, Jack, I just made an awful mistake. I didn't know you had a second butler. Oh, yes, yes, he's English, you know. But his English accent is so thick. Well, he's been there twice. <laughs> uh, twice, you know. Well, if he ever goes back again, he'll choke to death. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, come, uh, come, let's go into the drawing room. By the way, Mr. Benny, where is Manchester? What? What did you say? Uh, where is Manchester? Oh, oh, Manchester. Well, you go out Sepulveda Boulevard, East Culver City, and you turn left at the no, second no. traffic no, light. No, Jack. No. Uh, Jack, Benita means Manchester, your butler. Oh, oh, that's Rochester. Rochester. Let Nottingham do it. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. Benita, my butler's name is Rochester. He's in the cut, uh, kitchen getting the grub, getting dinner ready. Uh, come, let's go into the drawing room. I want you to meet my associates. Here we are, Mr. and Mrs. Coleman. This is my radio cast. How do you, How do, you do? do? How do you do, Mr. and Mrs. Coleman? Hiya, Ronnie. Benita, what do you hear from the tea and crumpets? <laughs> well, you know, Ronnie, he's still such an unruly blighter. <laughs> You should excuse the expression. <laughs> By the way, Ronnie, I have a little surprise for you this evening. I also invited your friend, Jack Wellington, to dinner. Wellington, splendid. Did you hear that, Benita? Yes, isn't that nice? Uh, sit down, folks. We'll have cocktails in just a few minutes. I hope you'll pardon the way my house looks, but I've been so busy opening mail. You know? Oh, that reminds me. How is your I Can't Stand Jack Benny radio contest coming along? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Of course, it ends tomorrow night. So, Benita, if you want to get your letter in, be sure it's postmarked before midnight, December 24th. You know, Jack just received a citation in Congress because of all the national unity his I Can't Stand Jack Benny contest is promoting. Was that national unity? Yes, it's the first time in history that the Republicans and Democrats agree on the same thing. <laughs> yes, sir, that's me. <laughs> yep. Oh, Ronnie, look at that Christmas tree. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, it certainly is. I suppose you folks have a nice Christmas tree, too. Well, we bought a nice tree... But while we were driving home, a peculiar thing happened. <laughs> yes, Ronnie made a sharp turn, and that's the last we saw of it. Oh, oh, that's a shame. Well, how about some cocktails? Um, uh, what, what would you like, Ronnie? Oh, nothing right now, thanks, Jack. But after dinner, perhaps a little B&B. &B. Oh, so will I. For dinner, I always have an S&S. S&S. Now, what's that? Half soda and half sympathy soothing syrup. <laughs> yes, it's awfully good. Whole news, blues, willing the royals. What? Oh, he must mean that Wellington is here. Oh, come right in. Come right in. Hello, Benny, old boy. Ronnie Benito. Wellington. Mr. Benny told us you were coming. Uh, Mr. Wellington, this is my radio gang here. Miss Mary, Phil, Don, and Larry. Oh, oh no, 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 no
We're all here now. Hey, Wellington, you lost half your glasses. Phil, that's a monocle. <laughs> half his glasses. Say, uh, uh, Wellington, I should tell you, we... We had a letter from Wickersham the other day. Wickersham? Well, well, how is the old duffer? Oh, he sounded cheerful enough. What a sense of humor he has. <laughs> yeah, Willie, that reminds me. Why don't you tell Mr. Benny and his friends that amusing anecdote Wickersham always tells at dinner parties? Oh, yes, yes. Now, let's see. Now, how does that go? Now, while you're thinking about it, I can play a solo on my... Oh, I have it. I have it. Good. Good. <laughs> Well, tell that amusing story. <laughs> well, it seems that there was a rather old codger in London who was somewhat hard of hearing, and he was riding on a westbound tram towards... No, 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 Wellington, it was an eastbound tram. Oh, yes, he was riding on an eastbound tram. Yeah, no, and... he was going to Trafalgar Square, so it must have been a southbound tram. I joke, Benita, you're right. It was a southbound tram. Well, anyway, he wanted to get off at Wembley Station. Oh, you see, Jack, uh, Wembley is a station where the tram stops. Oh, good, I thought the man wanted to jump off. <laughs> Well, anyway, this old codger turned to the woman standing next to him and said... Wasn't it a man standing next to him? No, no, it was... By Jove, it was a man. Anybody here care to shoot a game of pool? <laughs> Mary. <laughs> anyway, he turned to the man standing next to him and inquired, is this Wembley? And the man said... No, no, wait, wait. You forgot to mention that the second chap was hard of hearing, too. Oh, yes, yes, that's important. <laughs> well, he turned to this stranger and asked, is this Wembley? And the stranger who was hard of hearing said, no, this isn't Wembley, this is Thursday. So the old codger... I say, did I tell you that this old codger was also hard of hearing? Oh, yes, yes, you told them that when you mentioned it was a westbound tram. Uh, a southbound. Oh, yes, 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 Trafalgar Square, that's right. Uh, so the old codger who was hard of hearing said, Thursday, so am I. Let's get off and have a drink. <laughs> 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 hmm. <laughs> Southbound tram, Trafalgar Square. Oh, it was a very amusing story, Mr. Wellington. Very funny. Uh, would you folks care for a cigarette? Yes, yes. Thank, yes. You. thank you. Southbound tram, Trafalgar Square. <laughs> 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 that is a clever anecdote. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, that's a hootie. Oh, oh, here come the cocktails. Uh, set them right over here, Nottingham. Oh. <laughs> well, folks, dinner will be ready pretty soon, and I can't tell you how happy I am that you were all able to come over, particularly at this time so close to Christmas. Oh, thank you, Jack. Oh, thank you. And since it is so close to Christmas, I think it would be nice if we had Larry Stevens sing an appropriate song. Oh, good, good. By all means. Are you ready, Larry? Yes, Mr. Benny. Go right ahead. Here, let me sit next to you, Mary. <laughs> Thanks again to Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman and their friend, Mr. Wellington, for spending the evening with us. And I and my whole gang want to wish everybody everywhere a very Merry Christmas. Good night. <laughs> The Jack Benny Program. The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, the contest ended at midnight December 24th. However, there were so many people that couldn't stand Jack Benny, <laughs> it will take a couple of weeks to finish reading all the letters, and the winners will be announced shortly afterwards. So let's go out to Jack's house in Beverly Hills, where we find Jack, Mary, and Rochester busily sorting the latest entries. Gosh, the way this mail has been pouring in the last few days. Yeah, there sure is a lot of it, boss. Yes, sir. <laughs> Quiet, Polly. Daddy's working. <laughs> hmm. Look at this mail. It's absolutely amazing how many people can't stand me. <laughs> yeah, and Jack, look at this pile of letters over here. 48,000 of them are all from St. Joe. 
Now, wait a minute, Mary. There must be some mistake. They love me in St. Joe. <laughs> you remember when I was there last year, they put up a statue of me in the public park. Well, they're sending it back. There's a hunk of granite in each envelope. <laughs> Oh, Mary, you're just making that up. No, I'm not. Here's a note in one of the letters. What does it say? Uh, we're sending back all of Mr. Benny's statue except the ears. We're keeping those for bird baths. <laughs> Let me see that note. It doesn't say that at all. Gee, it does at that. <laughs> what am I going to do with all these pieces of my statue? Well, why don't you glue them together and set it out on your front lawn? No, no, I'd look silly out on the lawn without any ears. <laughs> well, maybe a couple of snails will crawl up and go to sleep in the right places. <laughs> no, no, you can't depend on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, let's try... Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Polly, Polly, Christmas is over. Now I got a teacher to say Happy New Year. Polly, now listen, Polly. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. No, 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 no. It's Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. No, no, Polly. Now listen. Listen, Polly. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Come on now, Polly. Say it. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And a girl. Isn't it wonderful how you can train a Mary? It sure is. And now, Polly, a very happy New Year. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Smart parrot. Well, she's just a little nervous since I told her that the carrier pigeon she's engaged to is coming back from overseas. <laughs> He'd be here now, but he couldn't get a train out of San Francisco. <laughs> he may have to fly. <laughs> now, let's see. We got to finish sorting the... Rochester, why did you tear up that letter? This one was a mistake, boss. It says, I can't stand Rochester. <laughs> Who signed that? The gas man. <laughs> well, we haven't heard from him in about five years. <laughs> Mary, what are you laughing Forget at? Get this letter. I can't stand Jack Benny because he plays the violin. Signed, a dead cat. <laughs> That's probably from somebody. <laughs> Probably from somebody who doesn't like me. Mm, could be. Certainly, huh? Oh, boss, boss, you won't believe it. What is it, Rochester? Here's a letter from the Big Three. The Big Three? Well, what does it say? We couldn't stand Jack Benny before the contest. <laughs> Sign Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. <laughs> no, they just think they're smart because they're on the way to Palm Springs. <laughs> Anyway, uh, there's the phone. I'll get it. No, no, Rochester, you stay with the mail. I'll have Nottingham answer it. Nottingham? Jack, have you still got that English bottler around here? I thought you only hired him for last week to impress the Coleman's. Well, we're so busy with the mail, I kept him on to help out. Uh, Nottingham, answer the door. <laughs> Isn't he classy? He even puts on his coat to answer the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Nottingham, who was that? <laughs> All right, Mary, now we'll have... Uh, Jack, what did Nottingham say? He said my lawyer was on the phone. I thought he said the grocer. No, no, Mary. Grocer is grofful. <laughs> he used to confuse me at first, too. You know. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Libby. Happy New Year. Uh, Happy New Year, Phil. Glad you came over. Say, Phil, did you have a nice Christmas? Well, Liv, I got a lot of presents. And look at this. Here's what the boys in my band gave me. What is it? Well, it's one of them new fountain pens, and it's guaranteed to write two years without having to refill it. Well, what good is it to you? You can't write. A lot of things can happen in two years, though. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. And while I'm thinking of it, Jackson, I want to thank you for the present you gave me. Well... What was it, Phil? A pair of black and pink lounging pajamas with a bare midriff. 
and they're a little snug, but I wore them all day. Yeah, those were for Alice. <laughs> a bare midriff. Well, surely Alice must have known those pajamas were for her. Yeah, but I looked so cute at them, she just hated to tell me. <laughs> Oh, brother. Say, Libby, what did Jackson give you for Christmas? I gave her a fur muff. There it is over on the chair there. It's sable. It's rabbit. It is not. It's sable. Rabbit. I wore it at the farmer's market yesterday, and it snapped at a head of lettuce. <laughs> well, a lot of sables are vegetarians, too. <laughs> Believe me, Phil, uh, the muff I gave Mary is sable. It's rabbit. It's... Would I pay $19 for rabbit? <laughs> Would I? You wouldn't pay $19 for $20. I would, too. <laughs> now, Phil, as long as you're here, stick around and help us read some contest letters. Jackson, you know better than that. <laughs> All right, then open the envelopes. At least you've got muscle. Come on, open the envelopes. <laughs> Gosh, I never saw so many contest letters. Take two weeks before at least before we can finish reading them. Hey, Jackson, listen to this letter. Phil, stop showing off. We know you can't read. This one's got pictures on it. <laughs> oh. Now, the first six words must be, I can't stand Jack Benny because. Yeah. And then there's a picture of your face and the body of a jackass. There is? Yeah. You know, Jackson, if you didn't need to shave that jackass, it'd look pretty good. <laughs> Oh, yeah? Oh, boss, boss. What is it, Rochester? Nottingham would like to see you. Well, have him come in here. He can't at the moment. He's indisposed. He's standing in the kitchen in his shorts and socks. My goodness, what happened? Well, after lunch, we decided to idle away a few minutes in a game of chance. <laughs> Rochester, you didn't gamble with Nottingham. Uh-huh. I won everything but his English accent. <laughs> what? I'd have got that, but he wouldn't open his mouth. <laughs> I think that's awful. Imagine leaving him standing there in his BBDs. I got an IOU on those. <laughs> well, I want you to go in there and give Nottingham his clothes back. Okay, okay. Imagine anybody doing Hi, that. Hi, Rochester. Hello, Miss Wilson. Hey, Don. Hello, everybody. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. <laughs> no, no, Polly. <laughs> Polly, it's Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy. That's it. Happy. Happy. Happy what? Happy what? <laughs> I wish that carrier pigeon would get here. Don, uh, how did you happen to be around this neighborhood? Well, I just wanted to drop in and thank everybody for their Christmas gift. Hey, Donzie, what did Jackson give you? Well, Jack didn't give me anything for Christmas because he gave me a birthday present and he thought my birthday was too close to Christmas. Uh, when is your birthday, Don? The 23rd of August. <laughs> What did Jack give you for your birthday? A rabbit's foot. <laughs> no wonder my muff limped. <laughs> Never mind. And as long as we're on the subject of presents, what about that gift you kids all chipped in and bought me? Well, we thought it was a good idea, Jackson. Something you could use. Hmm, something I could use. A fluorescent toupee so people can see me at night. <laughs> When I sing Rise and Shine, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Some gift. Merry Christmas. Polly, it's Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I'm going to train that bird if I have to yeah, get... Yeah, now with a whip and a chair. <laughs> I'll talk to him when we're alone. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, hello Mary. Mary. Hi, 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 hello, Kim. Well, I'm glad you came over. You can help us with the mail. Well, I have to run along. I just dropped by to wish you a Happy New Year. Oh, same to you, kid. By the way, Larry, I got a lot of compliments on your song last week. Well, thank you. I've got another one I'm working on for next week. You have? Well, come on, let's hear it. Yeah, yeah sing it, Larry. Come on. Okay. Smoke it once and smoke it twice. <laughs> Holly, Larry's going to sing now. Hey, that was, that was swell, Larry. I'm glad you picked that one. Now, kids, let's try and get the rest of this contest mail finished so we can try... Nottingham, answer the door. Hello, 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 Bradley 
is the name Steve Bradley. I'm Mr. Bennett's press agent, and I'm here to see him. Hello, guys. Hello, John. Mr. Bennett's bringing you on. <laughs> uh, huh? What'd he say? Hello, guys. Hello, John. Mr. Bennett's bringing you on. Well, thanks, and a happy new year to you, too. <laughs> Benny. Now, <laughs> oh, it's you, Steve. Well, hello, hello, hello. Long time no see. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy, Happy New, New Year, Steve. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Well, Benny, guess you know why I'm here. The contest is over. Yes. Yes, I know. Yeah, all we have to do now is finish reading the letters, pick the winners, and then award the $10,000 in prizes. 10000 Steve? Look, Steve, wouldn't it be more sporting to forget about anything so commercial as money and keep the whole thing on an amateur basis, wouldn't it? Huh? Wouldn't it? Benny, are you crazy? You can't do a thing like that. Well, I don't see why we... Look, let me put it here this way. Which do you value more, $10,000 or your reputation? <laughs> uh, better put it to him another way. <laughs> Oh, well, all right. And a boy, Benny, now just hand me over that $10,000 and I'll buy the victory bonds for the prizes. But, Steve, we don't know the winners yet. We still got mail to read. Yeah, I know, I know, but you don't want anything to hold us up. I gotta go out now and buy those bonds and have them ready. Okay, okay. I'll have to go down to my vault and get the money. <laughs> but, uh, before I go, I want you all to repeat the oath after me. <laughs> <laughs> I promise not to reveal that Jack Benny has a secret vault hidden in his home. I, I promise not to reveal that Jack Benny has a secret vault hidden in his home. And if I should tell anyone, either consciously or unconsciously... And, and if I, I should tell anyone, either consciously or unconsciously... <laughs> may I lose my umbrella during the rainy season. <laughs> may I lose my umbrella during the rainy season. Now, everybody bow their heads while I... <laughs> while I go down in the vault. my pants on the barbed wire. <laughs> now, I better be careful about those landmines. Halt! Oh, who goes there? Friend or foe? Friend. What's the password? Greenberg's on third. <laughs> oh, it's you, Mr. Benny. That's right, Ed. Uh, and here's a little present for you. A present for me? Yes, Ed. Uh, last week was Christmas. Oh, did you have a nice New Year's? Uh, no, no, Eddie. You see, it isn't New Year's yet. You see, New Year's comes after Christmas, you see. Oh, well, I've been away from it so long I kind of forgot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. You know, Ed, this, this year things are going to be a lot better. They're make, uh, starting to make automobiles again. Automobiles? Yes. Yeah, they're like buggies, you see, with motors in them. You know, you drive them down the street. Well, uh, won't they frighten the buffalo? <laughs> No, no, no. You see, buffalo are extinct. There are very few of them around anymore. Well, I got to get into my vault now. Shall I turn my back? No, 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 Ed. You're, you're bonded. <laughs> now, let's see. The combination is right to 45. Left to 160. Back to 15. Then left to 110. There. Glad the factories are reconverting. Now I'll be able to buy a louder burglar alarm. <laughs> Mr. Benny, 
How much money are you putting in? I'm not putting anything in, Ed. I'm taking some out. My, this is thrilling. <laughs> well, well, so long, Ed. Happy New Year. Same to you. Whoopee. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> all right. All right, Steve. Here's the money for the prizes. Ah, thanks, Benny. See you next week. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy, Happy New, New Year, Year, Steve. Happy New Year. Well, kids, that's that. Just think, another year almost gone. Boy, how they roll around. Imagine, it'll soon be 1946. I wonder what the new year will bring. I wonder what new things will come out. Science is certainly wonderful. Heliocopters, jet propulsion, atomic energy. It's amazing. I wonder what they'll... Hmm, it's kind of late. I wonder who that can be. Oh, hello. Hello, you're Jack Benny, aren't you? Why, why yes, yes, little boy, who are you? I'm the New Year. The New Year? But all the other little New Year's have always come on January 1st. You're early. Maybe he's trying to pick up a couple of tickets for the Rose Bowl game. <laughs> Don't be silly, Phil. Maybe there's something wrong with our calendar. No, no, I came early because 1946 looks like it's going to be a good year. And I'm raring to go. Got a lot of work to do. Automobiles, prefabricated houses, vacuum cleaners, fluorescent toupees. <laughs> Oh, oh, yes. How about nylon stockings? There'll be plenty of those. Oh, good. I was lucky to get this pair I'm wearing. They make my legs look so nice. See? <laughs> <laughs> well. Hey, this kid's really ahead of time. <laughs> well, look, uh, Sonny, uh, how about radio in 1946? That is, uh, what I mean is television. Uh, what, uh, what are my chances in television? Would you really like to know? Yes. Sit down, Mr. Benny. Thank you, thank you. Well, all right, kid, I can take it. I mean, tell me, what are my chances in television? Well, first of all, tell me, how old are you, Mr. Benny? Sit down, kid. <laughs> Quiet. What, uh, what did you say, Sonny? I said, how old are you? <laughs> Uh, 37. Uh, 37? That's a joke, son. <laughs> it is not. Now, what were you going to say about... Oh, the... Jack, look out the window. There's an old man coming up the wall. Yeah, and he looks like Father Time. Father Time? What is this, anyway? <laughs> Hello! Hey, you're not Father Time, are you? Father Time? I don't know what you're talking about, bub. I'm looking for my grandson. I was told to come in here. Oh, you mean... He was supposed to be in a New Year's play. The kids were given at the schoolhouse, but they run away. Oh. Oh. Oh, so that's it. Hiya, Grandpa. Oh, oh so there you are, you little shaver. Come on back to the schoolhouse. The people are waiting for the New Year. Come on, let's get going. Get on my ear. Yeah, take it easy on the little fella. I just told you, Bubby's my grandson. He's in a school play. He ain't for real New Year. <laughs> well, he sure fooled me. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's, so he's going to be in the school play, huh? But isn't he a little old to be wearing those diapers? He just got out of the army and he can't buy any clothes. Oh, <laughs> oh fine. Well, take him along, man. Goodbye, Grandpa. So long, Sonny. So long. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year, Year, Sonny. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. <laughs> oh, boy. What a, what a cute kid. See, I remember, I remember when I was his age. I was in a little New Year's play at school, too. You know, I was so good. Well, uh, so long, Jackson. I got to beat it. Yeah, me too. Happy New Year, Mr. Benny. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Anyway, Mary, I was so good in this school play that I held the audience spellbound. 
In fact, just recently they made a picture of it, you know? I'll never forget how cute. I'll never forget how cute I was in that play. In fact, you know, that's what gave me the idea that someday I'd well, be Well, I gotta go. Happy New Year, Jack. Happy New Year, Mary. Anyway, I'll never forget it. Yeah, I walked out on the stage wearing a little pair of wings, and across my chest was a banner saying, Happy New Year, 18... I mean, 1912. <laughs> And when I spoke my first line... Boss, boss, who are you talking to? Huh? Oh, oh, they've all gone. Sit down, Rochester. Yeah, Rochester. I walked out on the stage and I looked so cute with my long curls and blue eyes and dimpled cheeks. And when I got all through, there was so much applause that the teacher came right over and kissed me. She said, Jackie, you're the best New Year's Eve we ever had. Happy New Year, everybody. The Jack Benny Program. The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, Christmas will soon be with us, and millions of people are rushing around making hasty last-minute purchases. So let's go back to last Monday and look in on a local department store in Beverly Hills. Have you made up your mind yet, mister? Well, well, I don't know. That was Monday. We now bring you up to Wednesday. Same store. Now, look, mister, you've examined them both very carefully. Haven't you made up your mind yet? Gee, I... I don't know which one I want. That was Wednesday. We now bring you up to Saturday. Same store. <clears throat> Gosh, I... I wish you hadn't shown me both of them. Let me see that first one again, will you? Look, mister, I got a wife and five kids. <laughs> I haven't been home in a week. Now make up your mind, will you? Gosh, I... I can't decide... This one looks nicer, but the, the other seems to be more durable. Oh, Jack, for heaven's sake, shoelaces are shoelaces. <laughs> Mary, when you're buying a gift for somebody, you don't rush into things. <laughs> now, let's see. If I take the... Oh, pardon me. Hello? Yes? Oh, thanks. Thanks for telling me. Goodbye. Gee, it's so hard Look, to... mister, I want to go home. I got six kids now. <laughs> oh. Well, congratulations. A new baby. Do you mind if I buy something for the little fellow? No. No, why don't you buy him a razor? <laughs> a razor? Yeah, by the time you pick it out, he'll be old enough to use it. <laughs> hmm. That's an old joke. It was new when we came in here. <laughs> well, look, mister, I'll take these shoelaces, the, the shorter ones. Well, thank heavens. Now do you want the metal tips or the plastic tips? Here we go again. I'll take the plastic ones. The metal ones rust. You're right, Jack, but of course you know the plastic ones crack. Oh. Well, then wait a minute. Uh, let me see. If that phone rings again, I'm going to punch you right in the nose. <laughs> All right, all right. Give me the metal one. Yes, sir. I'll pick them up later. I'm opening a charge account. <laughs> uh, come on, Mary. Mary, you have my Christmas list, haven't you? Yes, here it is. Uh, what does it say? It says, uh, Dear Jackie boy, I couldn't meet you last night because a customer spilled a chocolate soda all over my uniform, so I have... The list is on the other side. <laughs> Give it to me. Wait a minute, Jack. Who's Josephine? The little blonde car hop at Simon's Drive-In. She used to work at the Glendale branch, but they promoted her to Beverly Hills. <laughs> Gee, I, I hope that chocolate soda incident doesn't send her back to Glendale. <laughs> you know, she's very pretty, Mary. The drive-in uses her picture in all their newspaper ads. Oh, yes, I remember. She was Miss Cheeseburger of 1945. <laughs> 
Yeah. She'd have made it this year, too, but her mustard was on crooked. <laughs> Just goes to show you, fate. A little thing like that. Let me see that list, Mary. Here. Can I help you, young man? Help me? Yes. You've been standing in front of this counter for ten minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm confused. Well, that's understandable. You're confused because it's Christmas time. You've got the Christmas spirit. You're doing your Christmas shopping, and you're looking at so many different things. Well, that explains why I'm confused in December. What about the other months? <laughs> Well, I wouldn't know about that. I'm a coal miner by trade. I'm just doing this to help pay the fine. Oh, well, gee, I'd like to get something for my parents. Oh, your mother and father, eh? Yeah, how did you know? I, uh, I just figured it out. Oh, I know. I think I'll get my mother a new corset. Well, don't you think she, she should come down and pick out her own corset? Oh, Mother hasn't left the house for three days. Is she sick? No, the string broke on her old one and she can't get through the door. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. We were spending a quiet evening at home when... Boing! Oh, my goodness. Was anybody hurt? No, but my father got pinned to the wall. <laughs> anyway, wrap me up that size 44 corset, and I'll take it with me. Yes, sir. <clears throat> now, let's see, uh, let's see that list again, Mary. Oh, yes, a dozen blades for Phil, some handkerchiefs for Rochester, some little toy for Dennis. You told me at Ciro's last night you were going to buy Dennis a grand piano. Last night, I had four glasses of Muscatel. <laughs> I'm all right now, so where's the toy department? Oh, wait a minute, Jack. What about your producer, Robert Ballin? Oh, yes. I don't know what to get him. Oh, Jack, look. Why don't you get him one of those new canvas golf bags? Yeah, he'd love that. And it's only $15. Oh. <laughs> Gee, I just happen to think he, he doesn't play golf. Well, why don't you give him a nice cocktail shaker? Say, say, that sounds good. And it's only $12.50. Hmm. I just happen to remember, he doesn't drink either. Uh, what else can I buy him? A knife and fork. Let's see you get out of that. <laughs> oh, stop, will you? I'll think of something. Now, let's see. Hi, Jack. Long time no see. Huh? <laughs> what? Oh, oh, hello. Come on, Mary. Uh, who is that? Oh, he's a racetrack tout I used to see at Santa Anita. You remember we ran into him at the Union Station last year? Oh, yes. Say, Mary, I want to get a watch for my sponsor. I wonder where the jewelry department is. Well, there's a floor walker. Ask him. Oh, yes. Oh, floor walker. Floor walker. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you tell me where the jewelry department is? Yes, but you'll hate yourself in the morning. Look, I didn't ask for any wisecracks. You either give me a civil answer or I'll report you. Now, where is the jewelry department? It's on the third floor. Thanks. Like fun it is. <laughs> Never mind. I'll find it myself. Hmm. It's a fine store to do business with. You walked in here, Lotus Blossom. Nobody dragged you. <laughs> Oh, quiet. Come on, Mary. We'll find her. <laughs> Mary, let's go upstairs and get that watch for my sponsor. We'll take one of these elevators. Well, number five is just about to go up. Yeah, let's hurry. Hey, uh, Jack. <laughs> hey, Jack. Huh? Oh. Oh, it's you again. Yeah. Come here a minute. What is it? Where are you going? Upstairs. Which elevator are you taking? Uh, number five. Uh-uh. <laughs> what? Take number three. It'll beat five to the top by two and a half floors. But, 
But number five is about to go up. I know, I know, but she's carrying too much weight. <laughs> well, I don't know. What do you think about number one? Uh-uh, local. Can't go the distance. <laughs> oh, well, what about number two? Slow starter. Well, it really doesn't make any difference. I'm only Christmas shopping. Okay, it's your money. <laughs> I wonder where he gets his information. Jack, are we going up or not? So far, all you bought is a pair of shoelaces. Well, at least the... Say, Mary, I was thinking. Maybe you were right about those plastic tips. I think they're better than the metal ones. I'll go back and change them. Oh, Jack. Come on, I'm going to change those shoelaces. Pardon me, miss. Uh, would you mind waiting on me, please? Why, yes, sir. What can I do for you all? <laughs> well, well, honey, a child. Where y'all from? Alabama. You know, that's down south. Well, corn my pone and mint my julep. Shake hands with a fella rebel. <laughs> oh, are you from the south, too? Am I from the south? Just run your hands through my hair and feel those bowl weevils. <laughs> well, I declare. See, wait a minute. Your voice is awful familiar. Haven't I heard it before? Well, I show you have, babe. I'm Phil Harris, the Texas Toscanini. <laughs> well, imagine that. Just wait till I tell the other girls that I waited on Phil Harris. Now, what would you like to buy? Well, sugar, uh, I don't know. How would y'all like to see something nice in lingerie? Now, honey, <laughs> you know you shouldn't throw me a line like that. <laughs> So cute. Yeah, everybody notices it. Uh, you know, Mr. Hatch, you're so much different than I pictured you to be. On the radio, you're such a braggart. You sound so conceited. I know, but it ain't really like that, honey. But Benny's writers always write me that way. His writers? Yeah, every time they get a hold of a beautiful hunk of man, they make him conceited. <laughs> now, look, let's see what I can get for my wife. Oh, I know. Give me one of them negligees there. Yes, sir. Shall I wrap it as a gift? Yeah, and fix the package so she can't peek into it. You know, seal it over with some of that there scotch and soda tape. <laughs> I'll have it wrapped up for you in just a minute. But look, Mr. Plastic Tips and Metal Tips, what difference does it make? Well, it's a gift, and I want it to be right. But those other shoelaces are more expensive. I don't care. I'll take them anyway. When he buys shoelaces, money is no object. <laughs> That's right. Give me the expensive one. All right, all right. You're not hurting me. I work on commission. <laughs> Just wrap them and I'll pick them up later. Come on, Mary. Uh, Jack, I want to stop them at the lingerie counter. <laughs> I like this shade, miss. I'll take this pair of two-thread hose. You're wrong, lady. This hose is three-thread. Oh, no, it's two-thread. I beg your pardon, but it's three-thread. Listen, sister, don't argue with me. Not so long ago, I was standing right where you are. <laughs> That's selling her, Mary. Mary, uh, Mary, while you're buying the stockings, I'll go over to the toy department and get something for Dennis. All right, Jack. I'll see you later. Well, there you are, Mr. Wilson. How does that shoe feel? Oh, it fits perfectly. I'll take that pair. That's fine. And would you like some extra shoelaces? No, I always get a pair for Christmas. <laughs> well, that must keep you excited. Yes, I never know whether I'm going to get plastic tips or metal tips. Oh. Well, I'll have these shoes wrapped for you in just a minute, Mr. Wilson. Fine. Oh, hello, Don. Well, how are you, Jack? Doing your Christmas shopping? Yeah, I was just going over the toy department. I just came from there, and I bought you the most novel thing you've ever seen in your life. For me? Yes. In fact, I'm not even going to wait till Christmas. I'm going to show it to you right now. Well, what is it? Look. But, Don, that's nothing but a set of toy wooden soldiers. That's not for me. Just watch what happens when I wind them up. But, Don... Yeah. Never mind, Don. I don't want to, but it was a nice thought anyway. See you later. Uh, don't bother wrapping them as a gift. Here you are. Well, thank you. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Miss Livingston. Gee, am I tired. I just walk up to the sixth floor and back. Walk? Why didn't you take the elevator? Well, I was going to take elevator number three, but some man came over and told me it was scratched. <laughs> Oh, yes. He's a 
kind of jacked. What are you doing here in the music department? Oh, I was just going to buy some records. Here's a swell one, Mary. You want to hear it? Yes, put it on. Okay. <laughs> Mary, I was looking for you. Where have you been? Oh, I was just talking to Dennis. Oh. Now, let me look at that list again, will you? Here you are. Gee, I still have to get a present for my old girl, Gladys Abisko. <laughs> I don't know what to get her. Do you think she'd like a lipstick? I don't know. Has she got lips? <laughs> oh, don't, don't be so catty. I, I think... Uh, I think I'll buy her a bottle of, uh, I think I'll buy her a bottle of perfume. Let's see what else. Oh, yes, I'll have to send something to Fred Allen. Fred Allen? I didn't know you and Fred exchanged gifts. Oh, sure. This year, I'd like to get him something he needs. I wonder what department sells plasma. <laughs> oh, well, come on, I'll get the perfume first. I think it's right over there. Oh, by look, the... oh, look, there's Jack Benny. Hello! <laughs> What, what's that? May I have your autograph, Mr. Benny? My autograph? Yes, it will make me so very happy. Yes, indeed, so very happy. <laughs> well, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be glad to. There you are. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Benny. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Who, who was that guy, anyway? What's the difference as long as he's happy? <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the perfume counter. What? Here's the perfume counter. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, pardon me, sir. Uh, I'd like to buy some perfume. Okay, mister. What kind of perfume would you like? <laughs> Well, uh, I don't know. What's popular right now? Well, here's something that's not too strong, yet leaves a trail of broken hearts. <laughs> oh. It's called Avec Trey Je Tambou My Cherie Trey Bean. What, uh, what does that mean in English? Condensation of steam that's been forced through a motorman's glove. <laughs> They go to so much trouble. No, no, I don't think I'd like that. Well, here's some other perfume called Essence of Smog. <laughs> well, I don't know. Mary, do you think I ought to take a bottle of this? Duh, certainly. Uh, how much is it, mister? This is 25 bucks an ounce, and the other one I showed you is 30 bucks. Well, haven't you anything a little more reasonable? Yeah. I even have some perfume for 25 cents an ounce. 25 cents an ounce. What kind of a bottle does that come in? It don't come in no bottle. We keep it on tap. <laughs> on tap? I bet they serve pretzels with it. Well, I don't think I'll take any. By the way, mister, how come they put a fellow like you behind the perfume counter? Oh, my regular job is in a delicatessen department slicing Limburger cheese. <laughs> Limburger cheese? Yeah. Once a month, they send me here to neutralize me. <laughs> I'll get the perfume later. Let's go home, huh? I'm, uh, I'm tired. Well, don't forget to stop at the notions counter to pick up the shoelaces you bought, the ones with the plastic kit. The shoelaces? Mm -hmm. I bet... Hey, wait a minute. Did I get the plastic tip? Sure, you went back and changed them. Oh, yeah. You know, Mary, now that I think about it... Jack! <laughs> yes, Mary, I might as well get what I want, and I'd rather have the metal tips. Come on. Oh, look, there's Rochester buying some neckties. Yeah, and that floor walker's waiting on him. Let's sneak up behind him. I think this tie is beautiful. It's very unusual. Yeah, but I don't think my boss would like it. It isn't his style. <laughs> I see. What type of man is your boss? 
Well, he's medium tall, medium weight, and rather conservative. You mean he's conservative in appearance? It goes deeper than that. <laughs> At least he's subtle. Quiet, I want to hear this. Now, here's a nice tie. Maybe he'd like this one. Yeah, that's a pretty thing. How much is it? It's only $3.50. How much? $3.50. Too bad he would have liked that one. <laughs> oh, fine. Well, if you don't want to spend quite so much, here's a nice tie for 89 cents. Well, that's close to what I have in mind and wallet. Of course, it might be a little too plain for your boss. Is he a young man? No. Is he middle-aged? No. <laughs> Is he elderly? Wrap it up! <laughs> Rochester Van Jones. Boss, I didn't see you. I know you didn't. Don't be buying me any 89 cent ties. You keep out of this. I'm working on commission. <laughs> well, now. Now, look, Rochester, you've been with me 10 years now, and I've been very nice to you. I've always tried to make things pleasant for you and keep you happy, haven't I? I'd like to hear Judge Goldberg's opinion on that. <laughs> Never mind. Now, I'm leaving you here, and I want you to decide for yourself whether or not I'm worth more than an 89 cent tie. Come on, Mary, let's go. Say, hey Mary, which tie do you think Rochester's going to buy me? The one for three fifty or the one for eighty nine cents? Well, if you were Rochester, which one would you buy? I'll fire that guy. <laughs> oh, here we are, Mary. Here's the notion counter. Oh, say, Mister. Yes. About the shoelaces I bought. Oh, yes, yes. I've got them all wrapped up. Here you are. Well, I've been thinking about the plastic <laughs> tips, and I think the metal tips would be much better. No. 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 No, but all I, all I want to do is change them. Change them? Change them, he says. This can't be happening to me. This must be a dream. Look, mister. I've always been a good man. Always did the right thing. Look, mister. Worked oh. hard in the store. A loyal employee. Look, clerk. I... When the Christmas season started, they gave us our choice of departments. I know. I could have had any counter I wanted, but I took shoelaces. Look. Shoelaces! And Why? Because I thought it would be easy, simple, Mister, look. metal tips, plastic tips, and we've got rubber tips too. But I wouldn't tell you. I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> Come on, Mary, there's a crowd forming. Let's get out of here. Good night, folks. The Jack Benny Program. Starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, once again we take you to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills, where we find Jack and Rochester in the library. Rochester. Rochester. Do we have to be this quiet? Shh. Be patient, boys. I'm trying to use psychology. Psychology? Yeah. Watch this. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a... We got him that time, boys! <laughs> Now, now, take the mouse out of the trap. Yes, sir. Hey, boss, great news, great news. What is it? We got him before he could eat the cheese. <laughs> well, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have done him any good anyway. It's whack. <laughs> uh, come on, Rochester, let's finish addressing my Christmas card. Okay. Now, let's see. We finished the ones to my relatives. Now, let's address the cards to the movie stars I know, huh? Yes, sir. I got the list right here. Rodney Dangerfield. 
MGM Studios. Rodney Dangerfield. Cyril Forsyth. <laughs> Universal International Studios. Cyril Forsyth. Marcella Underwood. Warner Brothers Studios. Marcella Underwood. Anthony Fisk. Paramount Studios. Anthony Fisk. Yeah. Well, that takes care of the pickets. Let's get to the stars. <laughs> These are stars, every one of them. Now, let's see. Oh, yes, Ilka Thistledown, MGM Studio. Ilka Thistledown. Gee, how she ever missed getting the Academy Award last year, I'll never know. She was wonderful in Andy Hardy Blows His Nose. <laughs> uh, Bertram Holmquist, 20th Century Fox Studio. Bertram Holmquist. Gary Cooper, Paramount Studio. Gary Cooper. Who's he? <laughs> big, tall fella. He's a pretty big star. Of course, he's not a Rodney Dangerfield, but he's <laughs> coming along. Now, let's see. Who else? Oh, yes. Uh, Geraldine... Shh. Just a minute, boss. I think I hear another mouse. What? Quiet. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a... We got him, too! <laughs> Good, good. Is he a big one? Uh-oh. What's the matter? There's nothing in the trap but a note. A note? Yeah, it says, you can recite Gunga Din, you ain't gonna catch me. <laughs> no, stop making things up. Well, all I know is we didn't catch him. Yeah, set it again, Rochester. Uh, say, boss, with all these mice in the house, why don't you get a cat? Mouse traps don't drink milk. That's right. <laughs> well, we're through with the Christmas cards, and I think I got the presents all set. Oh, I meant to do this before. I got to get Don Wilson's house on the phone. Da da bum bum ba dee da dum, da da dee dum da dum ba bum. I got the sun in the morning and the smog at night. <laughs> bum bum bee bum ba dee doo doo, da dee dum ba bum. Hello. Oh, hello, Mrs. Wilson. This is Jack Benny. I was just singing to myself. Yeah, yeah yes. I, uh... Yeah, I know Don is at the studio. That's why I picked this time to call. Now, Mrs. Wilson, I'm giving Don a beautiful pair of shoelaces for Christmas. <laughs> yes. Yes, with metal tips. Oh, no. Of all the things he should have. Are you, sure, are you sure he already has metal tips? Oh, gosh, well, I'll just have to exchange him again. <laughs> well, anyway, Mrs. Wilson, don't tell Don what I'm giving him. What? You wouldn't dare? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The same to you. Goodbye. Wouldn't you know it, Rochester? All the trouble I went through at that department store last week. I could have taken plastic tips, but no. I had to take metal ones. Uh, by well, the way, boss, this is Saturday. You're not forgetting your rehearsal, are you? Oh, no, no. Miss Livingston's sister, Babe, is going to pick me up and drive me to the studio. Miss Livingston's sister? Yes. Mary has a cold, and Babe came out from Plainfield to spend the holidays with her. Now, Rochester, bring me that package with the shoelaces. I'm going to stop by the store and exchange them. Yes, sir. And say, boss. Yeah? If you see a mouse trap that recites the night before Christmas, buy it. I'm getting hoarse. <laughs> I'll look around. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad Mary's feeling better today, babe. Yes, yeah, she'll be all right in a couple of days. Good, good. Hmm, nice delivery. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can talk loud. We're riding in a car. I hope Mert's listening, Dad. I'm bummed. She is a nice... Babe. Oh, babe, put on your brakes, quick. There's a car coming right for us. That's going the other way. It's a new Studebaker. <laughs> Gee, you can't tell when those Studebakers are coming or going. I know. The other day, my boyfriend was hit by one. How? Well, he was standing on the corner trying to figure out whether it was coming or going, and the darn thing went sideways. <laughs> well, what do you know? Hey, there goes another one. It's a cute car, isn't it? It's so much glass. Yeah. Looks like a Silex with wheels. Yeah. <laughs> Well, another star is born. <laughs> I wonder... Don't be nervous, babe. Don't be nervous. 
That is a nice Tudor bear. I wonder what model that one is. They have four models. Champion, Commander, Regular, and Drip. Oh, good, good. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know, babe, I was thinking, people who live in Studebaker shouldn't throw stones. <laughs> oh, Jackson, you keep this up and you'll have your own show, too. <laughs> yes, sir. No wonder my mother hates you. Now, you should read some of the stuff your mother writes about you. Believe me. Hey, there's Dennis standing over there in the corner. Let's stop and pick him up. Oh, Dennis! Dennis! Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. What are you doing standing on the corner, kid? You should be at the studio rehearsing. Well, I'm waiting for the Pico bus. But, Dennis, how can you get the Pico bus on Sunset Boulevard? My mother drives it. <laughs> oh. And it doesn't cost me anything to ride, either. It doesn't? No. Mother pulls the bus up to the curb and shouts, No charge for babies in arms! Then she gets out and carries me in. <laughs> Dennis, stop that nonsense and get in the car. Okay. Uh, Dennis, this is Mary's sister, Miss Livingston. Hello, Miss Livingston. You can call me babe. You can call me toots. Dennis. <laughs> Dennis, that's her name, babe. Oh. Well, let's go, babe. Come on. Say, babe, after we stop at the studio, I want to go down to the department store and exchange the gift I bought for Don Wilson. The shoelaces? Yeah, how'd you know? And Mary told me all the trouble she went through with you last week. Yeah, well, I can't help it. I got to get back and get those shoelaces with plastic tips. I want Don to be happy. Plastic tips, metal tips. With his stomach, he'll never see them anyway. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good, that's right. Take a bow. I'm alone in the car. Take a bow anyway. That's... <laughs> I guess you've never heard of mirrors, eh, babe? What'd you buy me for Christmas, Mr. Benny? I'm not going to tell you, Dennis, but it'll be under the tree on Christmas morning. Gee, another pine cone. <laughs> oh, no, it isn't. Say, babe... Every year I get a pine cone. Say, babe... The first year I didn't know it was a pine cone. What? I thought it was an artichoke and I ate it. <laughs> oh, Dennis, stop. Imagine eating a pine cone. Say, babe... The doctor pumped out my stomach and built a fire. <laughs> a fire? Yeah, I was empty on the inside and burning on the outside. Oh, quiet! <laughs> now, babe, when we get to the studio, we'll only stay a little while so I can go to the store. Phil is probably rehearsing Dennis's number. Oh, I rehearsed my song all morning. Would you like to hear it? Well, if you got to open your mouth, I'd rather have you sing. Go ahead. <laughs> but we're riding in a car. I know. Babe, put the top down. Some people may want to show their appreciation. <laughs> That's very good, Dennis. Well, here we are at the studio. Uh, wait in the car for me, babe. I'll only be a minute. Beg pardon, Governor, but you can't park your car here in front of Buckingham Palace. They're changing the guards, you know. <laughs> Buckingham Palace? This is NBC in Hollywood. Hollywood? My, my, in this fog, I must have strayed a bit off my beat. <laughs> Certainly must have. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll see you in a few minutes, babe. Okay, I'm hungry, so I'll go to the drugstore and get a chiz sandwich. <laughs> the whole family likes them. <laughs> Come on, Dennis, let's go. Now, Dennis, when you go over your number with Phil, be sure... Mr. And... Day, Mr. Day... May I have your autograph, please? Why, certainly. Have you got a pencil? Yes, sir. There you are. Thank you. Mm. Now, Dennis, as I was saying, I don't want to tell you how to do your song, even though I am the star of the show, but when you try to... Pardon me, Mr. David, may I have your autograph? Why, certainly, miss. Have you got a pencil? Yes, sir. There you are. Thank you. <laughs> Dennis. Huh? I'm afraid you'll have to give up your own show. <laughs> now, as I was saying... But, Mr. Benny, people like me. Two of them just asked... I my... know what they did. You've only had your show now 13 weeks. You're going around signing autographs. You don't have to be so hammy, you know. But they asked You didn't me. have to encourage them. You know, kid, when you've been on radio as long as I have, you take those things in your stride. 
You don't make such a big thing out of it. Well, Mr. Benny... Why, certainly. Have you got a pencil? <laughs> Come on, give me your pencil. If you want my autograph, I'm a busy star. Come on. I just want two nickels for a dime so I can use a phone. Oh. Well, I haven't got change. Come on, Dennis. Hmm. I've got change for a dime. All right, all right, you little show off. I got change for a dime. I got change for a dime. It's my own fault. I picked you up when you had absolutely nothing. I put you on my show. I trained you. I coached you. And after working for me for seven years, what happened? I got changed for a dime. <laughs> All right. All right, I'll go to the studio to see how Phil is doing. I'll see you later, kid. Yes, sir. All right, now look, fellas, we've been rehearsing this thing for two hours. Now let's see if we can get it right this time. Will you come on? One, two... Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Now hold it. <laughs> no, no, fellas, that's not it either. I can't hear no brass. Oh, oh Phil. Just a minute, Buster. Now look. <laughs> We're going to try this thing once more, fellas. I want you to give it to me now. Take it from me. One, two. <laughs> What's the matter with you guys, anyway? You're not giving me nothing. Phil, Phil, what are you rehearsing? White Christmas. <laughs> Phil. Phil, are you crazy? White Christmas is a beautiful song. It should be played softly with feeling. Can't your band play pianissimo? They're having enough trouble with White Christmas. <laughs> Phil, pianissimo is not a song. It's a musical term, meaning softly. Look, Jackson, why don't you just take care of the jokes and leave the music to me? I won't leave the music to you. This is my program. I want the music to be good. What are you talking about? I'm rehearsing this for my own show. <laughs> Your own show? Certainly. Why else would Alice be back there playing the trombone? <laughs> oh, now cut that out. You got a lot of nerve rehearsing the music for your show on my time. 18 men at $6 a man. That's $108. You expect me to pay for that? Why not? You've been doing it all season. <laughs> now, how do you like that? I got a good mind to take those boys and throw them right off the program. In fact, I think I will right after the first of the year. You're only bluffing. I am not. Then why wait till after the first of the year? Why don't you fire them right now? Because their green complexions and their bloodshot eyes make a nice color scheme for Christmas. <laughs> I haven't got time to argue with you. I got to go down to the department. Babe, the store is even more crowded than it was last week. Yeah. Did you have to come back here just to exchange those shoelaces? I think it's ridiculous. Well, babe, I might as well get what I want. After all, I'm Jack, not... Jack. Huh? Watch out for that fellow in back of you. Why, what? He looks like a pickpocket. Oh, yeah. Don't worry, babe. Watch this. It was the night before Christmas, <laughs> and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a... Ouch! I got him, babe. I got him. <laughs> hey, buddy, what were you doing with your hand in my pocket? I was just returning a junk I stole from you last week. <laughs> junk? When I turned that stuff in, I was almost thrown out of the pickpockets guild. <laughs> I ought to have you thrown in jail. Come on, Mary. Come on, babe. Let's exchange these shoelaces and get out of here. Okay. Well, Babe Willingston of all people. Well, Sarah, 
sauerbraten. Sarah sauerbraten? What are you doing in town, babe? Oh, I just came out here to get a little California sunshine. Oh, you'll be out here a long time. <laughs> you know, babe, I always thought you'd marry Steve Ferguson, the <laughs> fellow who worked at the gas station. Oh, we broke up, Sarah. I haven't seen Steve in years. Well, you should have hung on to him. He's got his own gas station now with three grease pins. <laughs> He had those grease pits when I went with him. That's why we broke up. Really? Yes. Every time I sat on his lap, I slipped through. <laughs> Come on, babe. Let's go. Say, yeah, uh, who's this gentleman with the mouse trap? Anything serious? Babe, hey, come on, will you? I got a lot of shopping to do. Well, so long, babe. I've got to get back to the music counter. I demonstrate songs here. Okay. Goodbye, Sarah. Goodbye. I'll tell Steve I've seen you. <laughs> Let's go, babe. I want to... I, come on, babe. I want to change these shoelaces. Well, well, if it isn't Jack Benny or Mr. Benny, hello! <laughs> Who's that, Lily Pons? I don't know. <laughs> oh, Mr. Benny, may I have your autograph, please? I gave you my autograph last week. Yes, I know, but on my way home, I lost it. I'm so careless. Jack Benny, so very careless! <laughs> there you are. Thank you, Mr. Benny. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye! What a character. <laughs> oh, babe, there's the notions department right beside the music counter there. Come on. Oh, look, babe, your girlfriend is going to sing. Give me five minutes more, only five minutes more. Let me stay, let me stay in your arms. It's so thrilling and I'm so weak and willing. Here am I, waiting for only five minutes more. Here we are, babe. Here's the notions counter. Now I can exchange the shoelaces. Hmm. I don't see the man that waited on me last week. Well, I'll find out where he is. Oh, madam. Yes? Uh, where's the gentleman who was at this counter last week? Oh, oh, you mean my husband. He's in a sanitarium. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. What happened? Well, some jerk came in here to buy some shoelaces and... <laughs> He couldn't make up his mind whether he wanted plastic tips or metal tips, and he drove my husband crazy. Really? <laughs> All week he's been lying in bed, staring into space and screaming, plastic tips, metal tips, plastic tips, metal tips. Really? I... And once he said, I've got rubber tips too, but I won't tell him. I won't tell him. I won't tell him. do for you. <laughs> well, uh, well. Tell her, you coward. <laughs> Babe, never mind, madam. I'll come in again some other time. Come on, babe. Aren't you going to exchange the laces? No, Don will have to take the metal tips and like it. He's not going to drive people crazy with those lousy shoelaces. Come on, let's go home. You know, babe, it was nice of you to come in and pinch hit for Mary when she got sick the last second. You were good, too. Say, babe, come on, we left the car right around the corner. Yes, I know. Say, babe, did I tell you next Sunday I'm going to do my broadcast for the boys at Birmingham General Hospital? Gee, that'll be swell. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know who's going to be with me? Who? A lot of people who used to be on my show a long time ago. Kenny Baker, Andy Devine, Schlepperman, Larry Stevens, and, of course, my own gang, you know. That ought to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it'll be good to see them again. Just a minute, Jack. Just a minute. What's the matter? I've got a cinder in my eye. Where? Right here in the corner. Oh, wait till I get out my handkerchief. Ow! <laughs> Darn it, I forgot I reset it. <laughs> Good night, doll. This is the Sunday before Christmas. Jack is expecting his whole gang and some of his old friends to drop in for his annual Christmas party. 
So let's go out to Jack's house in Beverly Hills where we find Jack and Rochester preparing for the occasion. Uh, Rochester, uh, hold the broom upside down. Like this, boss? Yes. Now spread the straws out a little. And now we'll try these two feather dusters on the handle. And then... Oh, darn it, it fell over again. <laughs> Here, Rochester, hold it up once more. Okay, boss, but if it doesn't work this time, let's go out and buy a Christmas tree. <laughs> Uh, maybe you're right. Uh, what are they selling for now? A uh, dollar a foot. Uh, a dollar a foot, huh? Shall I hold the broom up again, boss? <laughs> no, no, I'll buy a Christmas tree. I'd like to get one that would touch the ceiling. Touch the ceiling? It'll take a $12 tree to do that. Well, not if we put the tree on a box. <laughs> That'll save you $2. Oh, then we'll put the box on a chair. Uh, that'll save you $4. Then we can put the chair on the table. That's $6. Then we'll put the table on the piano. That'll save me $10. <laughs> what are you laughing at? If we can get the piano on the mantelpiece, we can touch the ceiling without a tree. <laughs> hey, we could have. <laughs> you know, Rochester, you've got... No, no, we ought to sandwich a tree in there someplace. <laughs> I... I wonder if... Uh-oh, somebody's at the door. I'll get it. No, no, Rochester, I'll get it. You pick up the broom and make believe you're sweeping. <laughs> I think that I shall never see a broom as lovely as a tree. <laughs> da 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 dee Hello, Jack. Merry Christmas. Well, Mary, same to you. I'm glad to see you, Mary, and I'm sure glad you're over your cold. Well, thanks, Jack. I feel fine now. I got over it fast. Well, you must have had a good doctor. Oh, I did, Jack. In fact, he was an army doctor. An army doctor? Mm -hmm. Oh, and he was so cute. Yeah? When he came into the room, he put on his white coat, patted my hand, and kissed me on the forehead. What? And then he said, oh, pardon me, I thought I was at the Birmingham hospital. <laughs> Mary. Mary, you mean at Birmingham Hospital the doctor kisses the patients on the forehead? They have to do something. Now the war is over, they're dispensing with polluting. Oh, I <laughs> Well, that is dispensing, yeah. I know, I know. Sound like a comedian there. Huh? <laughs> well, anyway, Mary, you've got over your cold, and that's all that matters. Yeah, but Jack, you should have seen the pills he made me take. Green ones, red ones, orange ones, yellow ones, pink ones, blue ones. What were they for? He said as long as he had to take an x-ray, he might as well see how I looked in technicolor. Mm, a fine x-ray. I'd like to see it. You can. It's opening at the Chinese Theater next Tuesday. <laughs> oh, stop. Stop being silly and come on in. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. I have something on the porch for you. For me? Gee, it's awfully nice of you to... Mary, why'd you bring me a Christmas tree? Because my vacuum cleaner is broken and I want my broom back. Oh. oh. Well, come on, Mary. I'll help you carry it in. Oh, Rochester! Rochester, look who's here! Well, well, Miss Livingston, glad to see you up and around again. And Merry Christmas! Well, thank you, and the same to you, Rochester. Say, Mary, this is a beautiful tree. It's a silver tip. As long as it isn't a plastic tip or a metal tip, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. Rochester, what are you doing? I'm nailing the tree to the floor. Good, good, then it won't fall over. Here, Mary, you start with this box of ornaments and decorate the lower branches. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Jack. These ornaments are pretty, but the red ones are too small. Why don't you buy them? We didn't buy them. Mr. Berry took a dozen more balls and dipped them in the ketchup. <laughs> Never mind. We were going to have yellow ones, too, but he ran out of mustard. <laughs> Rochester. Now, get the Christmas gifts out of the closet and put them around the tree. Yes, sir. Oh, say, Mary, I meant to tell you, I bought a gift for your sister, Babe. You know, it was awfully nice of her to take your place last Sunday when you got sick. Oh, she got a big kick out of it, too, but when she got home, she was awfully nervous. Nervous? Yes, yeah, she couldn't keep anything on her stomach but water. Gee, that's a shame. Every hour, she drank a whole gallon of water. Well, that's a lot of water. How is she now? <laughs> I don't know. She just sits there in her rocking chair and sloshes. <laughs> I can imagine. Well, anyway, your sister Babe did a swell job, and since she was on the program and you weren't, I'm going to show my appreciation and send her your check. Oh, Jack, send her $25. I'll pay the difference. <laughs> well, all right. 
Oh, hello, Polly. Merry Christmas, Polly. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Look, Mary, I fixed Polly up for the holidays. Notice that red ribbon I got around her neck? Yeah, it looks cute. And I also gave her a manicure. But I think I cut her claws a little too short. She keeps falling off her perch. Oh, Jack, you and your fancy ideas. But, Mary, I thought it would be nice. <laughs> hmm. She fell off again. <laughs> Decorate the tree, boss, except putting the star on the top. I'll do that, Rochester. You go in the kitchen and make the eggnog. Yes, sir. Hmm. Now, how am I going to get the star on top? The tree almost touches the ceiling. Mm, you better get your ladder. I haven't got that ladder anymore. I lost it two weeks ago. Oh, yes. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Huh? Rochester told me how you tried to loaf with your girl, Gladys Zabisco. Oh, he did, eh? Yeah, he said that you got up at daybreak, carried a ladder over to her house, climbed up to the window, woke Gladys up, and when you saw what she looked like in the morning, you ran so fast you beat your shoes home by two blocks. Yeah. My ankle's a lot better now. It was a two-story jump, you know. Anyway, I wish I had the ladder. The tree won't look right without a star. Well, maybe we could tip it over. No, Rochester's got it nailed to the floor. Oh, I know. I'll reach up as high as I can and bend the tree down. I'll help you, Jack. Okay. Now pull. Now, just a little more. Mm. A little more. There. I've got the end. I can hold it now, Mary. You can let go. Okay. <laughs> Mary! Mary, get me down! I'm up on top of the tree! Mary, where are you going? Someone was knocking at the door. That was my head banging on the ceiling. Oh. oh. Mary, I can't stay up here. Think of something. What'll I do? Put your toupee on your chest and you'll look like Tarzan. Now, don't be funny. Get me down from here. Okay, wait a minute. I'll bend the tree again. A little more. I'm getting it, Jack. Now, just a little. Oh, darn it. There's the door, buddy. I'll get it. <laughs> Everybody, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hello, Don, Phil, Dennis. Come on in. Come on, everybody. Let's go in the living room. Okay. Say, Mary, I'm awfully glad you got over your cold in time for the Christmas party. Well, well thank you, Don. Yes, and Alice said that she hoped that you. Oh, no. No. Holy smoke, look at Jackson. The party hasn't even started yet, and he's high already. <laughs> there, I know ornaments are hard to get, but this is ridiculous. Maybe if we plug him in, his nose will light up. <laughs> now, cut that out. Come on, fellas, get me down. You can all help bend the tree. Okay, Jackson, okay. Come on, boys, right. pull with me. Huh? All right. A little more. A little more. There you go, sir. Come on, get it. <laughs> Rochester, pass out the eggnog. Yes, sir. Rochester, I'm way up here. What about me? Don't worry, boss. I'll go out and get a long straw. <laughs> you looked a lot better. <laughs> I know, but it, it was uncomfortable. Well, come on, kids. Let's have some fun. Let's get the party rolling. Well, what do you think we ought to do? I know. Let's play post office. Yeah, that's a swell kissing game. Wait a minute. That wouldn't be fair. Mary's the only girl here. You keep out of this. <laughs> Mary, I was only thinking of you. Hey, I got it. Let's play Life Can Be Beautiful. How do you play that? Give me a bottle of bourbon and I'll show you. <laughs> bourbon? Yeah, this game is spin the bottle, only you spin with it. Oh, well, Phil, we're too old to be playing spin the bottle or post office. They're kid games. Kid games, kid games. <laughs> Hello, Polly. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh, she fell off her perch again. Oh, my head. <laughs> Here, Polly, I'll help you up. You want your fancy ideas. <laughs> well, Daddy, sorry. All right, everybody, let's think of something else. We don't want to play those kid games. You're right, Mr. Benny. Those are the games I used to play with my first girlfriend. Your first girlfriend? Yes, I was eight and she was seven. <laughs> hmm. Gosh, Dennis, I'll bet she was a cute little girl. She sure was. And we had so much in common. We both wore braces on our teeth. Both? Both of you wore braces? Uh-huh. I'll never forget the first time I kissed her. Boing! <laughs> it took 
a plumber three hours to separate us. <laughs> All right, Janet, that's enough reminiscing. Anyway, uh, why don't we hold off the games until everybody gets here? You know, I've invited some of my old gang who used to be with me on the program. Larry Stevens, Kenny Baker, Schlepperman. Gee, it'll be good to see them all again. Yeah. Meanwhile, let's do something that we'll all enjoy. Say, boss, why don't you play the violin? Say, that's a good idea. I think I will. Oh, no, Jackson, no. No. No, Jackson, no. Make me a male nurse here at Birmingham, but not that. <laughs> Please. It's all your fault, Rotch. What did you ask him to play the violin for anyway? Well... You never hear me ask him to play, do you? <laughs> when I get two shows, I won't ask him either. <laughs> now, now, quiet, everybody, quiet. I'm going to play. Quiet. <laughs> Larry Stevens, Rochester, where is he? He'll be right in. He's checking his coat. Oh. <laughs> Well, Larry, how are you? How do you feel? 25 cents lighter. Good, good. Say, say, Larry, what's that you got under your arm? A Christmas present for you, Mr. Benny. A present? For me? Gee, thanks. Yes, I hope you like it. Come on, Come on Jack. Open, open it up. Open it up. Open it up. Open it up. You bet I'll open it. Yeah. Right now. Oh, I can hardly wait. Oh, Larry. Isn't that wonderful? And it's gold. Gold? What is it, Jack? A fish. <laughs> Gee, this is... This is swell. I always did hate to be alone in the bathtub, you know? <laughs> Thanks very much, Larry. You would like it. Larry, how could you give Mr. Benny a fish for a Christmas present? Well, he didn't give me such a nice present last year. He promised me a wristwatch and he only gave me a sweater. What? You said you were going to give me a bulova. I said pullover, pullover. <laughs> That's a sweater. Oh. oh. Well, anyway, it feels good to see the whole gang once more. And you too, Polly. Aren't you going to say hello, Polly? Come on, Polly, say something. Larry! <laughs> she heard Dennis say that before. Come on, Polly, say hello to Larry. Hello, Red. <laughs> see, I always thought she was colorblind. <laughs> Gee, she's clever. She picks up things so quickly. Hey, if you think that's clever, listen to this. Come on, Polly. Recite the poem I taught you. Everybody be quiet. Shh. Come on, Polly. Recite the poem. Come on. Was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Not even a... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> What do you mean, a mouse? She got two mice. Two mice? How come? <laughs> I baited the trap with mistletoe. Now, come on. Now, come on, everybody. Be quiet. I want to play my violin for Larry. No. Oh, Jack. Jack. Look who just came in. Who? That crazy boarder you used to have, Mr. Billingsley. Oh, yes. He was an eccentric sort of fellow. Oh, well. Hello, Mr. Benny. Still playing the piano, I see. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Billingsley. <laughs> well, well, Mr. Billingsley, I didn't see you come in. I know. I came down the chimney. Down the chimney? Oh, are you trying to play Santa Claus? Oh, no, no. I, I built my nest in it. <laughs> nest? <laughs> Sorry, old girl. I'm already married. <laughs> well, it's, it's good to see you again, Mr. Billingsley. Thank you. I just dropped in to say Merry Christmas. Now, Merry Christmas to you, too. Why, that is a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll be running along now. Oh, uh, Rochester, will you bring me my hat, please? Yes, sir. Which hat is yours? The, uh, one with the head in it. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. I'll bet you would, you rascal. <laughs> Now, 
What happens to his lungs that spell backwards? It's good. I... <laughs> Gee, he's such a strange fellow, then. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kenny Baker. Kenny! Oh. Hello, everybody. Oh, well, Merry Christmas, y'all. Well, I'm sure glad you could drop over, Kenny. Come on in and... By the way, where's your coat? I didn't wear one. Oh. How about your hat? I didn't wear a hat either. Well, take off your shoes, Bobby. You gotta check something. <laughs> Mary, he doesn't have to. It's just a little convenience I have for my guests. Oh. Hello, Don. Hello, Kenny. You know, Jack, I'm the announcer on uh, Kenny Baker's program, too. Yeah, I know, I know. You're on everybody's program. In fact, I heard one program where you weren't the announcer. I thought it was shortwave from Pago Pago. <laughs> If you ever get sick one week, radio will have to fold up, you know. <laughs> Say, Kenny, I tried to call you one day last week. Aren't you living at your Uncle Willie's house? Uh, no, Jack, I moved. How come? Oh, well, I, I couldn't stand him anymore. He'd get up in the morning and yell at his wife, and then he'd bawl me out, then he'd scold the maid and spank the baby and kick the cat, and then he'd go to work. What does he do? He's a good humor man. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> so now I'm living on my cousin Jasper's farm. It's a lot of fun. It's healthy, too, you know. Yeah. Only it's a little tough on these cold mornings when I have to milk the cows. I nearly freeze my hands off. Well, gee, gee, Kenny, you ought, you ought to wear gloves. Oh, I do. I wish the cows would. Well, that, that's silly. How could a cow wear a... Oh, 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 I see. Oh, come on, hey, come here, Kenny. I'd like you to meet Larry Stevens. Oh, hello, Larry. How Good are you? Nice to meet you, Kenny. Thanks. And uh, you, uh, you remember Dennis Day. Oh, I sure do. How are you, Dennis? Gee, the place is lousy with tenors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Kenny, I listen to you on Glamour Manor, and I think you're wonderful. Well, thanks, Dennis. I hear your program every Thursday, and it sure is swell. Thanks. But starting this week, my program's going to be on Wednesday instead. Uh -huh. In fact, it starts on Christmas Day. Oh, what time? Gee, I forgot to ask. Dennis, it's 8 o'clock in the east, 7 o'clock in the middle west, and 9 o'clock on the west coast. Gee, Mr. Benny knows everything, and he's not even a tenor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know everything. Wait a minute, fellas, wait a minute. You're all popping off about your show. What about mine? Bill, we know all about your show. It goes on between my show and Charlie McCarthy. I know, Jackson, and I'm getting rich in that niche for fish. <laughs> Which niche? The fitch niche. <laughs> well, Phil, we got as much of that as we can, you know. Now, quiet, everybody. We'll have a little music. Uh, I'll play my violin now. Oh, Mary. Mary, go answer the door, please. Yes, the bell didn't ring. I know, but it will as soon as I start playing. <laughs> oh, don't be funny. If you're going to play, play. Okay. I knew it. I knew it. Come in. Well, Slap it! Well, Slap it! It's sure good to see you. Uh, the feeling is likewise. <laughs> well, tell me, Slap, how do you feel? What are you doing now? Well, I'm in the radio on Kenny Bagel's program. <laughs> Uh-huh. And I'm also connected with the Gesundheit Insurance Company. The Gesundheit Insurance Company? Yeah, if you get a cold, we pay through the nose. <laughs> oh. On Jimmy Durante, we lose money. Well, Slap, I've been thinking of taking out some more insurance myself. Maybe you and I can do business. Yeah, it's possible. How old are you? 37. How old? 37. <laughs> That's what I like about you, Jackie. <laughs> what? You look like C. Aubrey Smith and you talk like L. Earl Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> the same old slip. Well, sit down. Make yourself comfortable. We'll have some fun. Excuse me a minute, Jack. I want to call home on the telephone. You know, my wife is expecting... Well, congratulations. What for? She's expecting me for dinner. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Yeah. There's a buzzer again. Who can that be? Hello, everybody. Merry Christmas. Hey, that must be Santa Claus. No, it's my sister, Babe. Oh, yeah. Hello, Babe. Hello, Babe. Hello, Babe. Hello, babe. Merry Christmas.
The Jack Benny Program. The Lucky Strike Program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, there are only three more shopping days till Christmas. So let's pick up Jack and Rochester on their way down to do their last-minute Christmas shopping. Rochester, how far is it from my house to downtown? Uh, about seven miles, boss. Oh, fine. We ought to be there about noon. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing we started last night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gee, there sure is a lot of traffic this time of year, and I have so much to do. I better check over this list. Clark Gable, a half a dozen shirts. Barbara Stanwyck, one dozen initial handkerchiefs. Gary Cooper, two pair of silk pajamas. Claudette Colbert, a lace negligee. Rochester, I hope we can deliver these things by tomorrow. Yeah, you promised them they'll have their laundry back before Christmas. <laughs> We may have to work nights. <laughs> oh, well, let's not worry about that now. Donna, we'll never get downtown at this rate. So slow riding behind the trolley. Do you want me to cast off and hook onto a bus? <laughs> no, I can't stand those fumes. You know, Rochester, Christmas is a lot different now than it was years ago. I remember one Christmas Eve when I was a kid. The ground was covered with snow, and as I looked out the window, in the distance I could see someone dressed in red. Suddenly there came a patter of hoofbeats and a knock on the door, and the door flew open, and a man said, The British are coming! <laughs> he did not. He said, Merry Christmas. It was Santa Claus. Then he came into the house and gave my cousin Cliff a sled, my sister Florence a doll, and Rochester, you'll never guess what Santa Claus gave me. What? A violin. <laughs> the sweet old man did that! <laughs> Rochester, don't be so... Oh, there's the store. We better start looking for a place to park. Here's a place. Slow down while I see what it says on the sign. This parking lot reserved for the patrons of the Paddock Swimming Pool Company. One hour free parking with each $6,000 purchase. <laughs> Gee, it's a shame we've already have a swimming pool. Oh, look, here's another free parking lot. Let me see. This lot reserved for the patrons of Dr. Whiteside, the friendly dentist. One hour free parking with each tooth pull. <laughs> Rochester. I went last time. It's your turn now. <laughs> well, never mind. Let me out and you find a place to park the car. I got to meet Miss Livingston. Okay. <laughs> Gee, there's certainly a lot of people downtown today. Jack, oh, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Jack, I've been waiting for 15 minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. We got held up in traffic. Let's go in the store. Mary, you have my Christmas list, haven't you? Yes, here it is. What does it say? It says, uh, Dear Jackie boy, I couldn't meet you last night because a customer spilled a chocolate soda all over my uniform. So I... The ha list is on the other side. <laughs> Give it to me. Wait a minute, Jack. Who's Josephine? Uh, the little blonde car hop at Simon's Drive-In. <laughs> She used to work at the Glendale branch, but they promoted her to Beverly Hills. <laughs> Gee, I hope that chocolate soda incident doesn't send her back to Glendale. <laughs> you know, she's very pretty, Mary. The drive-in uses her pictures and, and all their newspaper ads. Oh, yes, I remember. She was Miss Cheeseburger of 1946. <laughs> yeah, she'd have made it this year, too, but her mustard was on crooked. <laughs> Just goes to show you, fate. A little thing like that, huh? <laughs> Let me see that list, Mary. Here you are. Gee, I still have to buy a present for my old girlfriend, Gladys Abisko. I don't know what to get her. Do you think she'd like a lipstick? I don't know. She got lips. <laughs> yes. Oh, stop being so catty. 
I know what. I'll just send her some flowers. Now, come on, before I do, uh, do any shopping, I want to open a charge account. There's the credit department over there. Now, uh, Mr. Benny, I think we have all the personal information we need. Now, would you tell us something about your financial qualifications? What are your assets? Well, I own my own home, my own car. I have three paid-up insurance policies. I have a radio program, and I own some stocks and bonds. I see. Now, what are your liabilities? Are my liabilities? The horn blows at midnight. <laughs> The horn blows at midnight. Oh, yes, that was a picture. Thank you. <laughs> now, Mr. Benny, in what bank do you keep your money? Uh, the Bank of America, California Bank, Security Trust Company, Farmers and Merchants Bank, Mercantile Trust Company, Security Savings Bank, First National Bank of New York, Pittsburgh Trust Company, National Bank of Commerce. Can I help you, young man? Help me? Yes, yes, you've been standing in front of this counter for 10 minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm confused. Well, that's understandable. You're confused because it's Christmas time. You've got the Christmas spirit. You're doing your Christmas shopping, and you're looking at so many different things. Well, that explains why I'm confused in December, but what about the other months? <laughs> well, I wouldn't know. I'm just standing behind this counter because in a moment of enthusiasm, I sold my pants. <laughs> Well, I'd like to get something for my parents. Oh, your mother and father, eh? Yeah, how did you know? <laughs> oh, I just figured it out. Gee whiz, I don't know what to get for my mother. You know, young man, looking at you, I can just picture your mother. You can? Yes, small, petite, gentle, a kindly smile for everyone, and spends most of the time sitting in a rocking chair knitting. That's my father. Now try and guess my mother. <laughs> Oh, boy, she sure makes him toe the mark. You mean your father's afraid of your mother? Oh, everybody's afraid of my mother. When I was born, the stork left me a block away from the house. What? It's a good thing I knew the address. <laughs> Gee, I wish I knew what to buy my mother for a Christmas present. Oh, I know. I'll get her one of these. What size is this one? 38. No, that'll be a little too small. What size is this one here? That's a 44. That's fine. Put some bullets in it and wrap it up. <laughs> yes, sir. Send it to Mrs. Patricia Day and put a card in it saying, with all my love, Dennis. Yes, sir, I'll do that immediately. First National Bank, Bank of Manhattan, Sacramento Savings and Trust, San Francisco Bank Exchange, and the Benny Trust Company of Waukegan. <laughs> well, well, you certainly keep your money in a lot of different places. Yes. He's also got a St. Bernard with a coin slot in the brandy barrel. <laughs> That's in case I get lost, isn't it? Well, Mr. Benny, as far as your credit is concerned, that's all the information we need. Thank you. Now, come on, Mary. Let's get my shopping started. Let me see that list again. There's Don, Rochester. I know what to get Dennis. He told me what he wants. And it's such a silly thing. Well, what does he want? A bulletproof vest. <laughs> Say, Mary, what would be a good thing for a nine-year-old boy? I want to get something for little Stevie Kent. Stevie Kent? Isn't he the little boy who tackled you in the football game and sprained your ankle? Uh-huh. And you're buying him a present? Mary, it was an accident. He didn't mean to do it. Then why are you suing him? I'm not <laughs> suing him. I dropped the case after he paid the doctor bill. Now, come on, let's Mr. try to... Mr. Benny, Mr. Jack Benny, please report to the credit department. Oh, darn it, what do they want now? Uh, pardon me, miss. Would you mind waiting on me, please? Well, yes, sir. What can I do for you all? Well, honey, child. <laughs> you the same little gal waiting on me last year. You from Alabama, ain't you? I uh, show sure I am. Are you all from the South? Am I all from the South? Honey, when I was born, the doctor held me up by my feet and slapped me with a candied yam. <laughs> My jewelry to date little old Phil Harris. That's me, baby. They purchased Louisiana because I was in it. <laughs> I don't doubt it for a minute. Now, what would you like to buy? Well, uh, I don't know. How would y'all like to see something nice in lingerie? Now, honey, you know you shouldn't throw me a line like that. <laughs> Mr. Harris, you're 
you're so cute. Yeah, everybody notices it. <laughs> You know, Mr. Harris, you're so much different than I pictured you to be. On the radio, you're such a braggart. You sound so conceited. That ain't nothing. Wait till I go on television. <laughs> Are you all gonna go on television? Honey, when a man is as good looking as I am, television ain't a luxury. It's a necessity. <laughs> now, let me see. Uh... <laughs> Let me see. I'm wondering, honey, what I can get for my wife. Um, oh, I'll tell you what. Hey, give me one of them negligees there. Why, yes, sir. Shall I wrap it as a gift? Yeah, and fix the package up so she can't peek into it. Seal it over with some of that scotch and soda tape. <laughs> I'll have it wrapped up for you in two shakes of a possum's tail. Wait right here, Mr. Harris. <laughs> Say, mister, there was a call that I report back here to the credit department. Oh, yes, Mr. Benny. The store has checked your financial standing, and we're happy to say that the papers are all ready for the loan. Loan? I don't want to get a loan. No, we do. <laughs> oh. Well, how much... Jack, you... come on. You came here to do your Christmas shopping. Oh, yes, yes. You better call me at home, mister. Uh, come on, Mary. I might as well buy the flowers for Gladys Abisco first. Okay. Hiya, Jack. Huh? Oh, hello. Long time no see. <laughs> That's right. Come on, Mary. Jack, who was that? Oh, he's that racetrack tout who used to hang around Santa Anita. What a guy. Come on, let's get away from him, huh? Oh, wait a minute, Jack. I want to stop the lingerie counter. I like this shade, miss. I'll take this pair of two-thread hose. You're wrong, lady. This hose is three-thread. Oh, no, it's two-thread. I beg your pardon, but it's three-thread. Listen, sister, don't argue with me. Not so long ago, I was standing right where you are. Let's <laughs> tell her, Mary. I don't know why I'm so fresh. She's making more money than I am. Only during the holiday season. Anyway, Mary, you don't have to buy stockings. I was going to give you a pair for Christmas. I'll buy my own. I wore the stockings you gave me last year, and everybody thought I was a nurse. <laughs> well, how do I know the kind you want? Now, come with me while I get the flowers. Hello, Mr. Benny. I see the Yule time is catching up with you. Oh, hello, Mr. Kitzel. Hello, are you doing your Christmas shopping? Ho, ho, ho. Look at this arm loaded bundles, the things I am buying. Now, what's in that long, thin package? This is a present I'm sending to my brother-in-law. It's a hacksaw. A hacksaw? If he gets it in time, he'll be home for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kitzel, your brother-in-law is a prisoner? No, he's the warden. Well, if he's the warden, why does he want a hacksaw? He was playing truth or consequences with the prisoners, and he lost. <laughs> oh. Say, Mr. Kitzel, what are you getting your wife for Christmas? I got it already here in this box. It's a beautiful fur coat. Well, uh, that's nice. What is it, a fox or sable? On the label, it's sable. In the box, it's fox. <laughs> Well, don't you know what you bought? I mean, didn't you ask the salesman? For $29, I should start an argument. <laughs> well, maybe you're right. She'll probably like it anyway. Well, goodbye, Mr. Kitzel. Merry Yule time, Mr. Benny. Merry Christmas to you. Too. Merry Christmas. Say, Mary, uh, while you're waiting for your stockings, I'm going over and pick out some flowers for Gladys. So. Gee, all these flowers are so beautiful. But I think I'll get these roses. Yeah, they're the nicest. Hey, Jack. Jack. Uh-huh? What you doing? I'm buying flowers. What kind? <laughs> I'm buying roses. Uh-uh. <laughs> Uh, 
What? Take the carnations. <laughs> but look, I, I don't want carnations. I want roses. Come here a minute. Huh? Don't be a jank. The roses are a buck a piece. That's even money. I know. The same don't want carnations will get you six to one. <laughs> Six to one. Don't take my weight for it. Here it is in the seed catalog. Look, Mr. I'll, uh, I'll show you. Now, let's see. Uh, poppies, gladiolas, chrysanthemums, poison ivy. Now, oh, that's been scratched. Uh, violets, daisies, roses. Yeah, here it is, roses. Blooms early, fades in the finish. <laughs> Well, look, and I don't care what it says. I'm still going to buy the roses. Okay. It's your money. I wish that guy would leave me alone. <laughs> sake. Oh, miss! Miss! Now, uh, let me see. I have my rifle, cartridges, my rod and reel and hooks. Yes, sir. Now, is there anything else you need? Oh, yes, yes. A tent. Very well. How about this one over here? Well, that looks good. Shall I have it delivered? No, just put sleeves on it. I'll wear it home. <laughs> oh, Don, Don. Oh, well, hello, Jack. Hello. Doing your last-minute shopping? Yeah, I was just going over to the perfume counter to get a present for my sister, Florence. I'll see you later. Jack, Jack, I've been looking for you. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary. I stopped to talk to Don Wilson. Oh, say, Mary, don't let me forget to buy something for Fred Allen. Fred Allen? Yeah. I don't know what to get him. He has nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll buy something for my sister first uh, Here's the perfume counter uh, Pardon me, sir, I'd like to buy some perfume Okay, mister, what kind of perfume would you like? <laughs> well, I don't know, what's popular right now? Well, here's something that's not too strong, yet leaves a trail of broken hearts. Oh. It's called Avec Très Jetain Beaucoup My Cherie Très Vin. What does that mean? I don't know. I didn't take French when I was at Harvard. <laughs> oh, well, anyway, I don't think I'd like that. What else have you got? Well, here's some other perfume called Essence of a Locker Room. <laughs> No, 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 I don't want... Say, here's a perfume that looks nice. How much is that? 68 cents a gallon. <laughs> 68 cents a gallon? What do you think, Mary? The same as you. The price is right. I didn't mean that. If you want something cheaper, here's some perfume for only 25 cents. 25 cents? What kind of a bottle does that come in? That don't come in no bottle. We keep it on tap. <laughs> On tap. When I draw it fast, you ought to see the head on it. <laughs> no, never mind. I'll get something else. By the way, mister, how come they put a fellow like you behind the perfume counter? Oh, my regular job is in a delicatessen department slicing Limburger cheese. <laughs> Limburger cheese? Yeah, once a month they send me here to neutralize me. <laughs> Well, you must have just come up. Huh? Come on, Mary, let's go. Mary, uh, let's go to another counter and see... Oh, look, there's Rochester buying some cufflinks. Oh, yeah, I wonder who they're for. Let's sneak up behind him and listen. I think these are beautiful. They're very unusual. Yeah, but I don't think my boss would like them. They ain't his style. I see. What type of man is your boss? Well, he's medium tall, medium weight, and rather conservative. By, uh, by conservative, you mean he's parsimonious? Parsimonious? What's that? Frugal. What's frugal? Thrifty. You're headed in the right direction, but you've got a long way to go. If I had those couplings already, I'd fire them. Quiet. I want to hear this. Now, let's see. Maybe he'd like something else. Why don't you buy him a nice wallet? He ain't got no use for a wallet. Where does he keep his money? California Bank, Bank of America, Security First National Bank, and a Philco Deep Freeze. 
A Philco deep freeze. Mr. Benny likes some of his money in cold cash. <laughs> Rochester. Oh, hello, boss. I didn't see you. I know you didn't, but if you're going to buy me a Christmas present, buy it. Don't discuss my personal affairs. Yes, sir. Now, come on, Mary. Let's go. Oh, say, Mary, there's one thing I still have to get. What's that? A present for Don Wilson. I can get it right over here at this counter. Oh, clerk. Yes, sir. I was uh, thinking of getting... Say, some... your face looks familiar. Didn't I wait on you last year? Yes, yes, I believe you did. I was thinking of getting... Now I remember. You bought a pair of shoelaces, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I did. Now, I was thinking of getting... You couldn't make up your mind whether to get plastic tips or metal tips. Uh, that's right, that's right. Uh, Jack, let's get out of here. Wait, Mary, I have to buy Don's present. Uh, mister, do you happen to have... I remember how you kept coming back. First you'd get plastic tips, then you'd change to metal tips. Plastic tips, metal tips. It was a hard decision to make, you see. Now, plastic mister, tips, I'd like to metal get... Metal tips, plastic tips, metal tips. Jack, get out quick. Wait a minute. And you came back again and again and again and again. Mister. All the other clerks went home, but I had to stay. Look, mister. But you're not going to do it to me this year. Jack. Plastic tips, metal tips, plastic tips, metal tips. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out. But, mister. Plastic tips. Jingle all the way! Everybody else had fun, but here I have to say... Come on, Mary, let's go. Plastic dip, metal dip, jingle all the way! <laughs> this is NBC. The Jack Benny Program. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Dade, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there are only five more days till Christmas, so let's go down to the local department store where Jack and Mary have gone to do their last-minute Christmas shopping. Mary, Mary, read my Christmas list, will you please? Uh, gold cufflinks, platinum cigarette lighter, silk pajamas, a star sapphire ring, a Cadillac, a diamond stick. No, pen. no, Mary. Those are the things I'm asking Santa Claus to give me. <laughs> my shopping list is on the other side. Oh. Uh, oh, here it is. A package of lifesavers, <laughs> razor blades, toothbrush, shoelaces. Jack Benny, you ought to be a Mary, chef. Mary, I gave you the wrong one. Here's my Christmas list, see? Don Wilson, wallet. Well, let's go. The leather goods counter's over there. Okay. Gee, this yes, store sir. is crowded. Hmm? Can, uh, can I help you, please? Oh, yes. I'd like to see some of your wallets. Well, we have a large variety. All these wallets you see here are $1.98. $1.98? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, Jack, here's some better wallets over here. Oh, yes, I think Don would like this one. It's a uh, genuine cowhide. Cowhide? Uh, how much is that? Forty dollars. <laughs> cowhide. Forty dollars? Jack, stop squeezing it. It won't give milk. <laughs> but Mary... Look, Jack... Don has been with you 15 years. It's about time you got him something nice. But, Mary, $40. Oh, Jack, for heaven's sake, for once in your life, show Don you appreciate his loyalty. You know, Mary, you're right. I'm going to get Don this wallet. He deserves it. Mister, I'll take that $40 wallet. Yes, sir. Does that, uh, does that include the engraving? Oh, yes. Uh, what would you like to put on it? The price. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. I want to enclose one of these cards. Let's see, what'll I write? To Don. A very Merry Christmas from Jack Benny. Here it is, mister. Make a nice gift package and see that Mr. Wilson gets it before Christmas. Yes, sir. Come on, Mary. I want to go to the sporting goods department and get something for Phil. 
Well, here we are. Gee, they sure have a nice assortment of guns and hunting equipment, Jack. Yeah, I think I should be able to get something for Phil here. They seem to have almost... May I help you, sir? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, uh, yes, clerk. I'd like to get something for a friend who is quite a sportsman. Well, we've got all kinds of camping equipment. Uh, Does he sleep outdoors much? Yes, sometimes right in front of the house. (laughs) Jack. Uh, Clerk, he has all the camping equipment he needs. His favorite sport, though, is hunting. See, he makes two or three trips a year to the High Sierras. Oh, does he hunt bear? Well, a few days ago, he... (laughs) Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Hey, mister, mister, ask me that again, will you? Does he hunt bear? No, Petrillo makes him wear his union suit. (laughs) What's, uh, what's the matter, clerk? Didn't you get it? Yes, and if you'll lend me your handkerchief, I'll wipe it off. <laughs> Look, I-, I didn't come here for any of your silly wisecracks. He thinks he's smart, doesn't he, Mary? Uh, don't talk to me. I'm pretending I'm not with you. <laughs> what? And now, sir, supposing you look over some of these items while I take care of another customer. Okay, okay. Do you mind if I fool around with this gun? Not at all. It's loaded. (laughs) (laughs) Say, Mary. Mary, I wonder if Phil... Hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, yeah. Well, well, well. Hello, Mr. Kitzel. Are you doing your Christmas shopping? Yes, I'm buying a Christmas present for my wife. She's always complaining she hasn't got what to wear. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll get her something sporty in the line of clothes, you know? Well, that sounds nice. Why don't you get your wife a pair of slacks? Oh, oh, oh. (laughs) you never saw my wife. (laughs) She's not the type to wear slacks. Why? Well, she should be a slack. She's lumpy. Oh, your, your wife is a little chubby, eh? A little chubby. From the back, she looks like Don Wilson from the front. <laughs> and sideways, you wouldn't believe it. I'll take your word for it. Huh? Tell me, Mr. Benny, what are you getting your neighbor for Christmas? My neighbor? Yes, uh, Ronald Goldman. <laughs> oh, no, that's Ronald Coleman. I don't know what to get him, but I'll think of something. Yes, I suppose. Well, I better finish my shopping. Lumpy is expecting me home for dinner. (laughs) Goodbye, Mr. Kitzel, and Merry Christmas. The feeling is reciprocal. (laughs) Come on, Jack. Uh, Make up your mind. We still have other shopping to do, you know. All right. You know, I think I'll take this fishing outfit. Oh, clerk. Uh, Just a minute. I have other customers. Oh, all right. I'll wait. Uh, That'll be $8.76, madam. Hmm. Uh, Have you decided on that, sir? Good. That'll be $12.75. Gee. (laughs) Uh, Yes, ma'am. $16.50 out of $20. Gosh. Ouch! Finally got your nose caught in it, didn't you? (laughs) Never mind. Just give me that fishing rod. Now wrap it up and I'll call for it later. Come on, Mary. Gee, my nose hurts. Well, it's your own fault. Now let's finish our shopping. Hey, hey, wait a minute, Mary. What's the matter? I've been thinking about that card I put in Don's gift. You know, I think I should have written something clever. I'm going back to the wallet department. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack. Oh, clerk, clerk. Yes, sir? Remember me? I I bought a $40 wallet here a few minutes ago, and I'd like to change the card. But, mister, I've already got it wrapped with ribbon and tinsel and everything. Well, I'm sorry, but you'll have to open it up. I want to change the card. But, mister... Now, please, I'm a customer here. Open it up. Okay. I know what I'll do. I'll write a poem. Oh, fine. Henry Wadsworth, tight fellow. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, oh, I've got one. To Don, 
This gift is from Jackie and golly, oh shucks. I hope that you like it. It costs 40 bucks. <laughs> there you are, there you are, mister. Wrap this up with a gift. I'm wrapping it, I'm wrapping it. <laughs> Come on, Mary. You know, Mary, I'm glad I'm giving down that $40 wallet. Yeah, it'd be kind of tough to get a rhyme for $1.98. Yeah. Now, Mary, let's go up to the mezzanine and... Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Livy, you little fugitive from the doll counter. <laughs> hello, Phil. My, you're certainly loaded down with packages. Yeah, I've been shopping all day. Got presents for everybody. How about you two? Well, I'm nearly finished with my shopping. Your five bucks is almost gone, huh? <laughs> Bill, for your information, I just spent $40 on Don Wilson. What'd you do, take him to lunch? <laughs> no, I... Uh, look out, Phil, one of your packages is slipping. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> oh, darn it, now I'll have to get Remley another present. <laughs> Let's move away, I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> Did you get gifts for the rest of your band? Yeah, I bought every guy in my orchestra a pair of bedroom slippers. Bedroom slippers for your musicians? Uh-huh, I thought if I could get them started with those, maybe we could get shoes on them later. <laughs> oh, that would be wonderful. <laughs> anyway, I got all my boys taken care of. The only one I ain't got a gift for yet is Alice. Uh, maybe she'd like to boo. Could be. She thought he was great in Elephant Boy. <laughs> Bill, that's Sabu. He's a picture star. I wouldn't know. I'm a radio man myself. <laughs> well, I'll be running along. I gotta get Remley another bottle of toilet water. <laughs> toilet water? Phil, that bottle that broke was toilet water? Certainly. If it was the other, do you think I'd have stood here and let it soak into the rug? <laughs> See you later, Jackson. Bye, Goodbye, Mary. Phil. Goodbye, Phil. Come on, Mary. You know, I'm gonna be on Phil's show, but he doesn't know it, you know. Hey, let's go up to the mezzanine. They always have nice things up there. Okay, here's the elevator. Yeah. Uh, look, Jack, we're back on the main floor. Well, how do you like that? I asked him to say it's just as well. You know, I've been thinking about that card for Don's wallet. Jack. I don't think it's an appropriate card for a $40 gift. I'm going back and change it. Well, I haven't got nerve enough to face that clerk. I'm going to buy something for my sister, Babe. Babe, what are you going to get her? Well, she asked me to send her a telescope. What does Babe want with a telescope? Uh, she lives across the street for the YMCA. <laughs> oh. Well, I'll meet you here later. I'm going to change that card. Oh, clerk. Clerk. Yes, sir? What can I... <laughs> oh, it's you again. Yes, yes. I, I want to change the card in that gift. Oh, no. No, no. First you buy the gift, then you write the card. Then I wrap the gift. Then you change the card. But look, then I unwrap the gift. Mr. And then you rewrite the card. And then I wrap the gift. And now you want to write another card! Look, uh, never mind that. Just unwrap the gift, will you? I've already sent it down to the delivery department! <laughs> well, look, uh, you'll, you'll just have to go down there and get it. All right, I'll go. I'll go. I haven't run into anyone like you in 20 years. Oh, why did the governor have to give me that pardon? <laughs> look, look, just bring me my package, will you? All right, all right, I'll get it, I'll get it. I'll get it. Hmm. What an eccentric character, you know? Something like it. Stevie, uh, Stevie, maybe we can buy something for Mr. Benny here. Okay, Joey, let's look around. Something I can do for you boys? Uh, yes, we'd like to buy something for the treasurer of our club, the Beverly Hills Beavers. A present for the treasurer of your club, eh? How old is he? About the same age as you. 39. <laughs> <laughs> Well, boys, it's none of my business, but how come you picked a 39-year-old man to be the treasurer of your beaver club? Because he's such a good businessman. He puts all of our dues in the treasury, and then he lends it out at 10%. <laughs> oh, I see. Who does he lend it to? Us. <laughs> and now that it's Christmas, 
Christmas. We were thinking of getting him a necktie. Well, that's always a nice present. Why don't you buy him one that matches his favorite suit? No, we like this one. It matches his eyes. Oh, are his eyes blue? Bluer than the waters of Lake Louise under a sultry summer sky. <laughs> My, where did you boys learn that? Every beaver has to memorize it before I can borrow money. <laughs> well, I'm sure he'll like this tie. It's $1.50. I'll wrap it up for you. Thank you. Here you are, mister. Now, let's not have any more trouble. Make the card out right this time, will you? Yes, Jack, we've wasted enough time. All right. Uh, how do you think this sounds, Mary? To Don. Your pear-shaped tones, many announcers ape. But no one can match your pear-shaped shape. <laughs> Isn't that a cute, huh? Yes, Jack, it's a beautiful poem. Nick Kenny would be proud of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mary. Hello, Dennis. Well, Dennis, I didn't expect to run into you here. Oh, I brought my mother's lunch. She's the Santa Claus. Your mother is the Santa Claus with a white beard and everything? Yeah, and she sure fooled my father. He climbed up on her lap and told her he wanted Hedy Lamar for Christmas. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, what did she do? I don't know, but now my father goes around singing, All I Want for Christmas is My Two Front Teeth. <laughs> Say, say, Dennis, Dennis, listen, come here, come here a minute, will you? Huh? Dennis, you've, you've been a nice kid, and you've been with me so long, here it is Christmas, and, well, here's a $50 bonus. Oh, uh, that's just a trick to get me to buy something for you. <laughs> it is not. I don't care if you don't get me anything. Oh, yeah? Last year when I forgot to buy you a present, you picked me up and threw me in your Bendix. <laughs> What? And then you charge me 40 cents for washing my shirt. <laughs> Look, kid, if you don't want... Oh, my goodness. What's the matter, Jack? Just a minute. Oh, clerk. Now what? <laughs> now what? <laughs> that, that card I wrote to Mr. Wilson, I left it right here on the counter, and I, I can't find it. Oh, don't worry about it. I found it, and I put it in the package, wrapped it up, and sent it down to the delivery room. Well, I, uh... I forgot to sign the card. <laughs> Jack, Jack, let's go. You're creating a scene. It's okay, lady. I'll get his package. The customer is always right. And this jerk is a customer. <laughs> See, Mary, you, you've got to know how to handle these people, you see? Now, come on, let's shop around till he gets the package from the delivery room, will you? <laughs> Say, Mary, what do you think I ought to get for my sister Florence? Well, I don't know. Uh, laundry might be nice. Say, yeah, that sounds pretty good. Uh, uh, there's the laundry counter right over there. Oh, yes. Uh, pardon me, but would you mind waiting on us? Uh, why not? <laughs> Your money's as good as anybody's. Well, could you show me something in silk lingerie? Certainly. What's your size? <laughs> Look, they're not for me. Uh, they're for his sister, size 34. Okay. Here's a whole box of them. Uh, will you lay the lingerie out for us, please? Well, just a minute till I put my gloves on. Gloves? Touching that stuff with my bare hands makes me a nervous wreck. <laughs> what? Especially the black ones. <laughs> Look. Look, mister, we haven't got all day. Show us something in size 34. Okay. Here's a nice little garment. A genuine, pure silk nighty. Gee, that's awfully pretty. I think this would be very, uh, 
Uh, wait a minute, mister. What are these little loops on the bottom of the nightgown? The loops? <laughs> yeah, the loops. <laughs> yes, uh, what are the loops for? When you go to bed, you hook them over your toes so the nightgown won't creep up on you. <laughs> That's swell, really. Wrap it up and send it to my sister, Mrs. Florence Fenchel. Here's the address. Yes, sir. Oh, look, Jack, there's Rochester doing his Christmas shopping, too. Yeah, shh. I want to hear what he's getting. Can I do anything for you? Yes, I'm looking for a Christmas present for my boss. Perhaps if you told me something about your employer, I'd be able to make some suggestions. How old is he? That and what happened to the gas man are the two burning issues of Beverly Hills. <laughs> Well, you can't go wrong if you get him a nice scarf. We have some beautiful silk ones for $20. Yeah, yeah, I'd like that. Jack, he'll hear you. No, I'm afraid $20 is more than I had in mine. We also have some lovely ones for $15. That's still too much. $12.50? Uh-uh. Well, we have other gifts for about $10. $7.50? <laughs> Six dollars? <laughs> Five dollars? When you get down to a buck and a quarter, wrap it up! <laughs> well, that's not much of a gift. What does your boss usually give you for Christmas? A brand new dollar bill and a lecture on the evils of wine, women, and song. <laughs> oh. Well, look, if he's that kind of a man, why do you keep working for him? Well, it's kind of hard to explain. But he's good, thoughtful, kind, considerate, and he gives me his old toupees to cover my bicycle seat. <laughs> oh. Well, here's a nice red scarf, which is really an excellent buy. I'd rather take this one here. The color will match his eyes. Are his eyes blue? Bluer than the waters of Lake Louise under a sultry summer sky. <laughs> oh, are you a beaver? No, but I work like one. <laughs> I don't know, Mary. Some little joke, I guess. Now, come on. Let's go and see. Oh, Mary. Mary, I just thought of something. Not again. Come on with me. It'll only take a minute. <laughs> oh, clerk. Clerk. Here's the package. I got it up from the delivery room. Now, go on and sign the card. No, no, no. That's not important now. I want to change the wallet. <laughs> what? <laughs> Instead of the $40 one, I'll take the one that costs $1.98. Gee, he was such a young fellow, too. <laughs> well, I'll take the $1.98 wallet and put the money in his hand. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go. I wonder if we have to... Oh, look who's here. Hey, Don! Don! Oh, hi, Jack. Hello, Mary. Gee, what trouble I'm having in this store. Wish I didn't have such a big stomach. Why? Well, it seems there's a piano missing, and they searched me three times. <laughs> Oh, oh. Don, have you bought your wife's present yet? Oh, yes, I did that yesterday. But today I bought a gift for our gardener. Your gardener? Well, what'd you buy him? A $40 wallet. <laughs> a $40 wallet? For your gardener? Jack, the only other ones they had were $1.98, and I wouldn't give that to a dog. <laughs> Well, you can start barking, brother, and Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Merry Christmas, Don. See you later. Come on, Mary, let's go home. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of my sponsors and my entire staff, I want to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas. Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. The Jack Benny Program. The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson.
Ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Beverly Hills. It's morning and hundreds of people brimming with the Christmas spirit are waiting for the local department store to open its door. Oh, Mary. Mary, where are you? Here I am, Jack, right behind you. Oh, yeah. Say, Mary, how'd you like the way I wiggled myself through this crowd right up to the front of the line? Yeah. Those rumble lessons you took from Arthur Murray really helped. I'll say. When we started, we were way at the end, and now there's only one man ahead of me. Hello, Jack. Hello, Mr. Murray. <laughs> Oh, look, look, Mary, they're getting ready to open the store and let the crowd in. I can see the manager walking over to the floor walker. Oh, Jasper. What is it, Mr. Simpkins? It's almost time to open the store. Are all the clerks at their station? Yes, sir. Good. You will open the doors in ten seconds. Are you ready for final inspection? Yes, sir. Hair? Combed. Chin? Out. Jacket? Crest? Carnation? Moist. Good. <laughs> it is now nine o'clock. You may open the doors and guide our customers into the store. Yes, sir. Mule train! Mule train! Get in there! Giddy up, get in there! Get going in! Come on in! Mule train! Here! Here! Mule train? Jasper. Jasper, how could you do a thing like that to our customers? When I saw those faces, I couldn't control myself. <laughs> Wait here, Mary. I'll be right back. Jack, don't get into it. Never mind. Say, mister, are you the manager? Uh, yes, I am. Well, as one of your steady customers, I resent being ushered into the store like a mule. I apologize, sir. I've never been I so... said, I apologize. Put your ears down. <laughs> Now, look, mister... Jack, I told you not to get into it. Come on. Oh, all right. Jack, I'd like to go to a store with you just once where you don't get into an argument with everybody. Look, Mary, I'll admit that sometimes it may be my fault, but not this time. Imagine driving customers into a store yelling mule train. Well, don't stand there complaining. Go have your coat fixed. My coat? His whip tore your sleeve off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'll just pin it and then fix it when I get home. Come on. Mary, what do you think I ought to get for my sister Florence in Chicago? Oh, I don't know. It ought to be something nice. You know, Mary, I have no brothers and no other sister. Florence is my only close relative. I ought to get her something really nice. Uh, what'd you get her last year? A pencil sharpener. <laughs> oh, how sweet, Jack. But then she is your only sister. Yeah. <laughs> After all, you know... Jack, let's go outside and come in the store again. Why? I want that guy with a whip to get another crack at you. <laughs> Nothing doing. He had his chance. Anyway, I can't understand a store like this bringing customers in just the way... Hey, they... pardon me, mister. Did you see my wife? Huh? Are you talking to me? Yeah. Did you see my wife? No, I haven't. As a matter of fact, I don't even know your wife. Then how do you know you didn't see her? <laughs> Now, mister, how would I know... Now, I can't stand here jabbering. I better go look for her. Glowy! <laughs> now, come on, Mary, let's oh, go... Oh, Jack, look. There's Dennis. Where? Oh, yes. Hey, young man, what can I do for you? Gee, I don't know what to get for my mother. She goes horseback riding a lot. Maybe she'd like it if I buy something for the horse. Well, say, mister... Yes? How much is that horse collar? Horse collar? Yes, that white one hanging up there on the wall. Young man, this is the plumbing department. <laughs> Just what is it you're looking for? Oh, I don't know, but I'd like to get something for my mother. Well, I can call the ladies' department and save you some time. Did you have anything in mind? Oh, yes, sir. I think a dress would be nice. Oh, that's an excellent idea. What size dress does your mother wear? 36. 36? Uh-huh. I think I ought to get her a nightgown, too. Size 58. <laughs> Uh, wait a minute, son. If your mother wears a 36 dress, why would she wear a 58 nightgown? She doesn't sleep in her girdle. <laughs> young man, young man, I think you're a little confused. However, I will admit there is a little variation in size, but very slight. 
Gee, I hope that movie company doesn't find out. Movie company? Yeah, they want my mother to take off her girdle to advertise their new picture. What picture? Lost Boundaries. <laughs> Young man, would you do me a favor and shoplift something so I can have you arrested? What? Yeah, let it go. Is there anything else I can do for you? Uh-huh. Uh, those men's shirts in that case across the aisle, are they real silk? Oh, yes, they are. They'd make a wonderful gift for your father. Oh, they're not for my father. I'd like to buy them for Jack Benny. Jack Benny? Do you know him? Oh, sure. He's on one of my shows. <laughs> Dennis! Dennis! Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mary. Hello, Dennis. Doing your Christmas shopping? Yeah. Gee, I was just going to decide on Mr. Benny's gift, and he had to walk up and spoil the whole thing. Oh, I'm sorry, kid. I, I didn't know you wanted to be a secret. Yeah. Now you'll have to close your eyes. Okay. Got them closed? Uh-huh. Okay, mister, you can wrap it up now and put it in a shoebox so he won't know it's a shirt. Can I open my eyes now? Yeah. Gee, that was a close one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, say, Mr. Benny, while my packages are being gift wrapped, would you like to step over to the music counter and hear a record I just made? Oh, sure, kid. Come on. Oh, miss? Yes? Do you have the latest record made by Dennis Day? You mean I must have done something wonderful? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, would you play it, miss? I'm sorry, but our record player is broken. Broken? <laughs> yeah, all day yesterday, every five minutes, some curly-headed jerk kept requesting, that's what I like about the South. <laughs> I think I know who you mean. Uh, why didn't you tell him that you refused to play it? And get hit with a ham hock? <laughs> oh, yes, he's never without one. Gee, and I wanted you to hear my record. Well, if it'll make you feel better, Dennis, you sing and I'll spin you around. Huh? Okay. Okay, come on. <laughs> well, that, that was very good, Dennis. I bet it's a swell record. Say, Mary, don't you think that song will be a... Mary? Now, where did Mary go? Oh, she's way over there at the end of the counter. Oh, yes. May I uh, wait on you, miss? Yes, sir. I'd like to get something for a gentleman. A gentleman? Your uh, husband? Uh, no, my boss. He's been nice to me, and I'd like to show my appreciation. Oh, here's something nice. A gold tie clasp. A gold tie clasp? No. Well, how about a gold keychain? No. How about gold cufflinks? Look, mister, I don't want to get him anything. He can melt down. <laughs> I wish I could think of something. Well, Miss, perhaps I could help you better if you told me how closely you two are associated. Are, uh, are you engaged? Uh, no, we're not. Is he your boyfriend? No, as a matter of fact, he treats me more like a sister. How about a pencil sharpener? <laughs> a pencil sharpener? Yes, we ship one to Chicago every year. <laughs> it goes to a girl named Flossie. Uh, you mean Florence. Well, I feel like I know her. <laughs> hey, hey, Mary. Mary, let's not keep losing each other. Yeah, I spend more... Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, hello. It's uh, on the way to Chicago. So, wait a minute. This year, I was going to get my sister something different. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go. <laughs> You know, it's amazing how everybody knows I'm a comedian. <laughs> Mary, I'm going to get something else for my sister. Now, is there anything else, sir? Well, I don't know, baby. Uh, let's see what I bought so far. Well, there's one black negligee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's for my ever-loving wife. Oh, you... You're married? Am I married? Why, I'm married to Alice Faye, the sweetest <laughs> little gal who ever... Oh, come on now, baby, stop crying. There ain't enough of me for everybody. <laughs> yes, sir. Happens every time. <laughs> now, let's see, honey. I've got everybody's present except one for Jackson. Oh, I know. I'll, I'll get him a pair of socks. What size? Uh, Eleven and a half. These? Yeah. Now I'll just take off my shoes, put the new ones on, and then I'll be Mr. all right. Mr. Harris, I thought you were going to give socks to Mr. Benny. I am. Here are my old ones. Gift wrap them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you 
don't you want me to sew up the holes first? No, 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 just throw in a needle and thread and give the old man something to do when he gets home from his rumble lesson. <laughs> Yeah, put plenty of ribbon on the box so the kids can play around. Oh, Phil! Hey, Phil! Well, dear hearts and gentle people. (laughs) Funny running into you, Phil. Yeah, how's Alice? (laughs) Now, stop it! (laughs) What's the matter with her? Usual thing. She's upset because she found out I'm married. Oh, now, that's ridiculous. You (laughs) cried a little too, Dad. But that was during the ceremony It had nothing to do with you Well, then why'd you cry? Because you wouldn't let him go on the honeymoon <laughs> Harry, stop, I've seen that Now, Jackson, before. I gotta finish my shopping, kids Look, I've gotta get some uh, California pennants California pennants? Yeah, you see, I'm going to the Rose Bowl game And I wanna cheer for California But all they got in this store are pennants from Syracuse Pennants from Syracuse? Sure, there's a big box of them right up there on the counter See what it says? Syracuse pennants That circus peanut. <laughs> Syracuse pennants. Phil, how can you be... She disappeared in the crowd. Good, good. Now, Mary, I wish you'd help me decide on something for my sister, Flora. Well, Jack, I've been trying to think. Gosh, I don't know. Hey, mister, are you sure you didn't see my wife? Uh, Look, buddy, I'd like to help you, but I don't know what your wife looks like. Has she got any identifying marks? Well, she's got a birthmark on... Never mind, I'll look for her myself. (laughs) Yes, yes, you better. Hello! Come on, Mary. Why does everybody have to pick on me? Well, have you made up your mind, sir? Huh? Oh! Oh, I was just looking around. I sure would like to give my girl a ring like that. Well, I don't blame you. That's a beautiful diamond ring. Uh, How much is it? $4,000. That doesn't sound so bad. Uh, Wait till I look at my bank book. Mm. Well? Uh, Wait till I turn the page. Well? Uh, Wait till I turn another page. Hmm. Well? Uh, Just a minute, I'm on the last page. Well, what's on the last page? Put something in the pot, boy. (laughs) (laughs) Well, look, mister. If you want to buy this ring, you don't have to pay the $4,000 cash. You can pay for it on easy terms. All you have to do is establish credit rating. Uh, Credit rating? Yes, I have the forms right here. Your name? Uh, Rochester Van Jones. Are you employed? Yes, sir. Who do you work for? Jack Benny. Oh, what are your duties? You mean you want to go on? (laughs) Why, yes. What are your duties with Mr. Benny? Well, besides being his rumble partner, I'm his personal secretary, legal advisor, attorney at law, and I also select the scripts for the movies he makes. You pick his movies? He has to blame somebody. (laughs) Well, I don't agree with you. I think that Mr. Benny is a great entertainer, whether it's stage, screen, or radio. And as far as I'm concerned, his last picture was one of the funniest I've ever seen. You keep talking like that, you'll be in line for a pencil sharpener. (laughs) Jack, I think Rochester's over there picking out a gift for you. Yeah, I guess so. I don't want to see them see me, so let's move on. Oh, Jack! Jack! Hey, it's Don. Hello, Don. Well, hello, Mary. Oh, say, Jack, I just bought you a present, but I felt it was silly to wait until Christmas, so I'm going to give it to you now. Here. For me? A mop? But, Don, (laughs) what can I do with a mop? This isn't a mop. I just put a handle on it so you wouldn't be embarrassed carrying it home. (laughs) Oh, I see. I thought the widow's peak was so you could get into the corners. <laughs> Don, Don, what have you got in that little bag? Oh, Mary, I'm glad you asked me. Here, here, I'll show it to you. It's the cutest thing you ever saw. What is it, Don? Well, see, it's a little toy merry-go-round. Well, what do you want that for? Well, now, here, let me show you. First you wind it up, and then you release the lever, and it spins around and plays music. Really? Let's see how it works, Don. Okay. Don, that's the cutest toy I ever saw. Yeah, it's a shame it broke. Oh, that's all right. I'll get another one. Well, I've got to run along now. See you kids later. Bye, Don. So long, Don. 
Now, Mary, I don't want to be here all day. I'm going to get that other present for my sister. Let's go over to the perfume counter. Well, Jack, I've got some other shopping to do, so I'll meet you there later. All right, Mary. Don't be too long. Yeah, I wonder what kind of perfume I ought to get. Oh, there you are. What? Where is she? <laughs> oh. oh, for heaven's sake. Why do you keep asking me about your wife? I told you I don't know what she looks like. Well, here. I'll show you a picture of her. See? This? <laughs> this is your wife? Yep. <laughs> Seems silly of me to keep looking for her, don't it? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, miss, she must be in the store someplace, so just keep looking and you'll probably find her. I hope not. <laughs> Come on, Rube. Rube? Come on in. Oh. <laughs> I'd like to get out of here so I can stop running into such silly... Oh, here's the perfume counter. Must be something nice here for my sister. Oh, clerk. Clerk. Boo, what can I do for you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Are you the salesman here? Yeah. You're the salesman here in the perfume department? Don't take my word for it. Smell me. <laughs> I'll, I'll take your word for it. Thank you. Yeah. Now, what kind of perfume would you like to buy? Well, what kind have you got? I've got taboo, temptation, shocking, white shoulders, surrender, and you should excuse the expression, my sin. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think, I think my sister likes taboo, but I don't know whether to get it for her or not. <laughs> taboo or not taboo, that is the question. <laughs> hmm. I made that up myself. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. Everybody says I'm another Milton Boyle. <laughs> well, your your face. Your... Your face does look a little like a kinescope. <laughs> now, let's, uh, let's see some other perfumes, please. Okay. We have some very nice imported ones. Evening in Paris. Uh-huh. Midnight in Madrid. Uh-huh. Here's a domestic one. Morning in the smog. <laughs> oh, are they, are they bottling it now? Why not? We got enough of it. <laughs> Yes, yes. Oh, there you are, Jack. Yeah, I thought I'd stop here and get some perfume for Florence. Clerk, what's that? Oh, this is a very fashionable odor. It's called Eau Jude Oui. I'll spray a little on you. Say, that does smell nice. Yeah. And it's got penicillin in it to fight off virus X. <laughs> That's not a bad idea, you know. You Say, Jack, here's a perfume your sister Florence might like. L'eau de la vie crayon. L'eau de la vie Creole. What does that mean? Aroma of freshly sharpened pencil. <laughs> oh, you're no help. Imagine putting a clerk like you behind a perfume counter. Oh, this ain't my regular job. I just sell perfume during the Christmas rush. I thought so. What is your regular job? I'm a goose girl at Hollywood Park. <laughs> Come on, Mary. I've had enough of this guy. Hey, what's that? Well, we've been here all day, and it's closing time. You mean they're closing the store now? Yes. Jack, look out! Mule train! Yeah, yeah. Everybody out! Get out of here! Get out of here! No, everybody out! Oh, oh. oh, darn it. There goes my other sleeve. Come on, Gee, Mary, this Christmas rush is awful, isn't it? Yeah. Gee, look how crowded this bus is. Hey, Rube! Rube! Huh? How are you? Oh, it's you. 
I'm fine, fine. Did you ever find your wife? Who do you think is driving the bus? <laughs> oh, well, tell Chloe to let me off at the next corner. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the next time we meet, it will be Christmas Day. So on behalf of my sponsor, my cast, my entire staff, I want to take this opportunity to wish each and every one of you a happy and joyous holiday season. The Jack Benny Program. The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny, with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you go out to Beverly Hills and look in the windows of Jack Benny's house, you will see a very pretty Christmas tree, a picture of peace and serenity. But if you could have been there yesterday, well, why not? <laughs> well, we're almost through trimming the tree, Mary. She was nice of you to come over and help me. Well, if I didn't, you'd never get it done. Say, Jack, shall I put the snow around the bottom now? Not yet. I want to see if the lights are working. I'll hold up the bulbs. When I say ready, you plug it in. Okay. Ready? Ready. Pull it out! Pull it out! Pull it out! <laughs> My goodness. Oh, Jack, why'd you make me shot it off? Those lights were so pretty, especially those two blue ones that kept flashing on and off. <laughs> those were my eyes. <laughs> I must have been holding on to a bare wire. Well, it's your own fault. Every time you fool around with electricity, something goes wrong. It does not. I know plenty about electricity. Oh, sure. Remember what happened yesterday when you fixed your doorbell? What happened? I pushed the button, roasted a pig in Encino. <laughs> oh, stop exaggerating. Anyway, hand me that roll of tape. I'll fix this bare wire right now. Here you are. Thanks. Now, let's see. To insulate a bare wire, you just tape it up like, hmm, like this. There. That ought to be enough tape. All right, Mary, plug it in. Okay. Pull it out! Pull it out! Pull it out! Uh, Jack, what happened? I taped my finger to the wire. <laughs> That's what happened. Oh, gee, and that time was even prettier than before. What do you mean? Your nose lit up, too. <laughs> it did not. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Benny, the red-nosed reindeer. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, let's get this tree finished before the gang gets here. But, Jack, what about the light? Oh, we'll have to let that go until later. Now, hand me one of those candy canes so I can... Oh, Mr. Benny! What is it, Rochester? I baked that cake like you told me to. Good, good. You have enough whipped cream to spell out Merry Christmas? Yeah! Uh, say, boss, how many R's in Mary? Two. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, you better add one. Add one? I better cross one out. I got three. <laughs> <laughs> well, leave it. It's better than ruining the cake. Okay. Uh, oh, Rochester, will you please take these Christmas tree lights and fix them? Fix them? Yes. I ain't fooling around with electricity. Now, what are you afraid of? I don't want to get hit by nothing I can't hit back. <laughs> oh, Rochester, imagine being afraid of electricity. Suppose Robert Fulton was afraid. He never would have invented the electric light, would he? <laughs> Jack, what? you're thinking of Thomas Edison. Edison? Well, then what did Robert Fulton do? He wrote Mule Train. <laughs> oh, yes. Now, Rochester, please fix these lights. Okay, okay. Now, let me see. In electricity, there's the <laughs> electrons and the electrodes, and then there's the positive and the negative, but I ain't positive which one is negative. <laughs> hmm. Then there's the atoms. Now, the atoms are supposed to go from the positive to the negative, or maybe they go from the electrons to the electrodes. 
Then again, maybe they go from Amos to Andy. <laughs> Rochester. Now, as long as these atoms keep passing each other, everything is all right. But when they meet halfway and start fighting, they're going to turn on anybody who tries to butt in. <laughs> Rochester, I'm not interested in the scientific details. I just want you to fix those lights. And I promise you, while you're holding the wires, no one in this room will turn on the switch. I uh, know, boss. While I'm holding the wire, you ain't going to turn on the switch. And Miss Livingston ain't gonna turn on the switch. Of course not. But way up there at Boulder Dam, there's a little man sitting in a room with thousands of wires all around him. So what? How do I know he ain't gonna do something just to break the monotony? <laughs> oh, all right. I'll fix it myself. Come on, Mary. Help me finish the tree. Okay, Jack. Hand me that candy cane, will you? Here you are. Da da dum dum, dee da da dum. I'll put the cane right next to the drum. Santa Claus is coming to town. Let's see, where's that star? Dee da dee dum, dee da dum dee. I'll put the star on top of the tree. Santa Claus is coming to town. See, that looks swell. Doesn't he it? sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're away. He knows when you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. So you better watch out. You better not cry. Mary, you're cute, and so <laughs> am I. Santa Claus is coming to town. Well, Mary, we got all the packages under the tree. It looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah, but you better pick those lights up off the floor before somebody steps on them. Oh, yes. Now, where can I put them? I'll put them here on this chair. Now, Mary, some of the gifts I had sent direct from the store, but there's Phil Harris's present. Put it under the tree. Boy, will he be surprised. But, Jack, how will he be surprised you've got toilet water written all over the box? Well, you've got to do that with Phil. When he opens a package and finds a bottle, he never stops to read the label. <laughs> Last year, I gave him a miniature ship and a bottle, and the mask stuck out of his mouth for three days. <laughs> Every time I asked him something, he had to answer me through the crow's nest. <laughs> Believe me, I know what I'm doing. Well, Jack, I guess that does it. The tree's all finished. Yeah. Gee, it looks well. I'm kind of tired. I think I'll sit down for a minute and smoke a Lucky. Mary, have you got a match? No. Oh, say, boss. What is it, Rochester? Are your socks dry yet? I think so. Well, people will be here soon. You better take them off the tree. <laughs> oh, that's right. You take them off, will you, Rochester? I'm tired. I want to sit here a while. Yes, sir. Say, this tree looks awful nice, but it's kind of dark. Oh, no wonder the lights aren't plugged in. I'll fix that. Pull it out! Pull it out! Pull it out! For heaven's sake. Well, what happened this time? I'm sitting on the wire. <laughs> now, as long as you're here, Rochester, give me a match. You don't need it now. Your cigarette is lit. <laughs> oh, yes. Thanks, Rochester. Don't thank me. Thank that little man up at Boulder Dam. <laughs> Never mind. Don't plug that in anymore. I've had enough trouble with it. Come in. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. Well, deck the halls with turnip greens if that ain't a lovely Christmas tree. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, Jackson, you ought to see the one I've got. It's all decorated with a lot of ornaments, and I got tinsel on it and everything. And then right up on the top, I got a picture of Alice. Alice? Phil, you're supposed to have a picture of Santa Claus. She's Santa Claus to me, Dad. <laughs> I know, I know. Hey, but no kidding, Jackson. I think we got the prettiest tree in Encino. Uh, by the way, Phil, what are you having for Christmas dinner? A roast pig. What? <laughs> I don't know how it happened, but when I went out to feed it this morning, it was cooked standing up. <laughs> You see, Jack? I told you. I thought you were kidding. So did I. <laughs> Isn't that strange? What are you two mumbling about? Nothing, nothing. Hey, Phil, what do you got in that package there? Oh, I almost forgot, Jackson. It's, uh, it's a present for you. For me? Yeah. Me and the boys in the band all chipped in and got it for you. Well, thanks, Phil. I'll put it under the tree. No, 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 you don't. Go ahead, open it up now. Okay. See, it's certainly nice of you and the boys. <laughs> oh, Phil, thanks. See, a beautiful turtleneck sweater. Oh, gee. Look inside of it, Jackson. Inside? Oh, Phil. Uh, what is it, Jack? A turtle. <laughs> hmm, a fine present to give me. 
I'll fix him. Come here, Phil. Uh, Phil, uh, sit down on this chair and relax. Huh? huh? Go ahead, Phil. Sit down. Thanks, Jackson. Are you comfortable, Phil? Sure. Good, good. Mary, push in the plug. Oh, Jack. <laughs> you wouldn't dare. Hand me the plug. I'll give it to him myself. Hey, Jackson, what about my present? Just sit where you are. You'll get it. You'll get it. <laughs> it's a surprise. Mary, watch it jump. One, two, three. Phil, Phil, don't you feel anything? No, why? <laughs> hmm. Well, what about the surprise? What's the matter? Uh, we're having a little trouble at Boulder Dam. <laughs> Mary, I can't understand what went wrong. Phil, stand up a minute. Okay. Now, let's see. There must be something wrong with this. Thing. Pull it out! Pull it out! Pull it out! A fine thing to do on a guy on Christmas Eve. Well, it's your own fault for trying to play a trick on Phil. Oh, so that's it, eh, Jackson? Trying to give me a high hot foot. <laughs> oh, Phil, I was just trying... Pull it out! Pull it! Jack, that's the doorbell. <laughs> Uh-oh. Come in! Oh, hello, Don. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. Hey, Merry, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Christmas Don. Don. Yeah, come on in, fellas. Oh, you brought the sportsman with you. Merry Christmas, boys. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure glad you dropped in. Say, Don, did you get many nice presents this year? Uh, I sure did, Mary, and it couldn't wait. I've opened them already. You have? What'd you get, Don? Well, I got some gold cufflinks, a moving picture camera, a television set, a golf ball, and a diamond wristwatch. Well. Thanks for the golf ball, Jack. <laughs> You're welcome, Don. You do play golf, don't you? No. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, you really ought to take it up, Don. It's great exercise for a fellow like you. There's some beautiful courses around here. Well, that's fine. You give a guy one golf ball, and right away you want him to join a country club. <laughs> well? Why don't you give him a flea and tell him to go out and buy a dog? <laughs> <laughs> buy a dog, buy a dog. <laughs> now, look, Mary. Well, well Mary, you're going to stay and have dinner with me, aren't you? Yes, you invited me. Good. Then after dinner, we'll open all the presents. I'll answer the phone, boss. Never mind, Rochester. I'll get it. It's right here. Hello? Now, look, Joe, I haven't got much time, so listen to me. I'm phoning to warn you that my husband's wise to us, and he's on his way over to your house with a gun. So get out of town, Joe. Get out quick. Remember what happened to Charlie. Uh, Jack, what's the matter? I don't know. Somebody keeps getting my number by mistake. <laughs> it's the second time it happened. First it was Charlie, now she thinks I'm Joe. Joe who? I don't know. We'll probably read it in the paper tomorrow. <laughs> oh, Rochester, how soon will dinner be ready? In about ten minutes, boss. Oh, good. Say, Jack, it's a little chilly in here. Don't you think so? Yeah, maybe I ought to put another log on the fire. There we are. <clears throat> mm. Gee, this log is heavy. Oh, Rochester! Never mind. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. <laughs> now, let's sit down and wait until we get... All right, you can stop showing off. <laughs> now, let's sit down. You know, Mary, sitting here in front of the fireplace, you look like the prettiest girl in the whole world. If I were a painter, I'd take the reflection of the fires dancing in your hair and paint the loveliest... There's somebody at the door. Well, answer it, Grandma Moses. You can paint my hair later. <laughs> yeah. Coming! Coming! Yes? Good evening, sir. I'm selling Christmas cookies to raise funds for the Girl Scouts. Christmas cookies? Well, you see, I... Oh, you're Jack Benny, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Well, it would be silly of you to buy any. You bake them for us. <laughs> That's right. How did you know I baked those cookies? All the gingerbread men have blue eyes. <laughs> ah, well, I'll buy some anyway. I'll take a dozen. How much are they? Twenty-five cents. You mean you... 
only make a penny profit? <laughs> I mean, a penny on 12 cookies? If we break any, we're dead. <laughs> Well, just be careful. By the way, what's your name, young lady? Joan. Oh, that's a nice name. Well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Mary, I just bought some cookies. I'll put them under, on the tree here. Who'd you buy them from? A girl who came to the door. Her name is Joan. Cute, too. You'd think her father would dress her a little better. <laughs> You have a cookie, Mary? No, it'll spoil my dinner. Oh, that reminds me. As long as I'm staying here, I better call my maid and tell her I won't be home. Okay. Hello? Hello, Pauline. This is Miss Livingston. Well, I won't be home for dinner, so I thought you'd like to know you could have... Pauline, are you still crying? Pauline, you've got to get a grip on yourself. You've been carrying on like this all week. Now, look, he's married on his way to Honolulu, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Goodbye. What's wrong, Mary? Oh, that maid of mine. Just because Clark Gable got married, she's been crying for five days. <laughs> five days? Hey, that's ridiculous. Certainly, I got over it in two. <laughs> Everybody makes such a fuss about Gable. Mary, let me ask you something. What's Clark Gable got that I... No. <laughs> no, I'd be a fool to throw you a lead like that. <laughs> you sure would. Hello, Mary. Hello, Mr. Benny. Merry Christmas. Oh, Dennis. I didn't see you. When did you get here? I came in with Phil. <laughs> With Phil, that was quite a while ago. Where have you been? Well, I sneaked upstairs and put your Christmas present under your pillow. Oh, well, what took you so long? I fell asleep. <laughs> oh. Say, Mr. Benny, I'd like to thank you for the present you sent me, but I'm all confused. Confused? Why? All the packages got mixed up and the tags fell off, and I don't know who sent me what. Oh, all the cards fell off? Yeah. Well, look, kid, uh, did you, uh... Uh, did you get a wristwatch? Oh, a beautiful one, solid gold. Well, take my card and put it on that. Now, let's... Uh... Wait a minute. Huh? <laughs> Dennis, I'll tell you what Jack gave you. What else did you get? A portable radio, a candid camera, a silk bathrobe, a golf ball... Bingo. <laughs> Mary. Dennis, Jack gave you that golf ball. Oh, I thought it was kind of funny about Mr. Benny giving me the wristwatch. Why? On the back is engraved to Dennis for mother and dad. <laughs> Look, Dennis, on Christmas, it isn't what you get that counts. It's the spirit in which it was given. Every year he says the same thing. <laughs> Certainly I say it because it's true. More people felt that way than... Oh, Mr. Benny, dinner's ready! Where are you? Oh, honey. <laughs> On Christmas Day, you know. <laughs> good, good. Come on, Mary. We'll go to dinner. Uh, Dennis, do you want to have dinner with us? Oh yeah, that'd be swell. And after dinner, we can all sit around the fire and. Um, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Dennis, Dennis, come here a minute. Yes, sir. Over here. Now look, kid. There's an old saying: two is company and three is a crowd. You know what I mean? Yeah, but how can we get rid of, rid of Mary? <laughs> You nearly lost that one up. <laughs> well, all right, Rochester. There'll be the three of us for dinner. Come on, kids. Gee, I'm hungry. Oh, so am I. I hope Rochester has those big raw carrots. I love them. I like the small carrots. I like the big ones. We always argue about that every <laughs> time. Now, Mary, you sit here. And Dennis, you sit over there. There we are. Now, Rochester, you can get the... Dennis, what happened? I rolled off the chair. I had the golf ball in my back pocket. <laughs> no. Rochester, we're waiting. Coming, boss, coming! Uh, 
Oh, Rochester's been a very nice Christmas Eve. The gang dropped in, we had a quiet dinner, and now they've gone home. Believe me, I'm ready for bed. Yes, sir. Uh, wait a minute, boss. I'll fluff up your pillow for you. Mm. What's the matter, Rochester? There's a package under here. Oh, yes, it's from Dennis. It's my Christmas present. Well, open it. Open it. Okay. Oh, well, this is lovely. A beautiful electric alarm clock. And instead of numbers around the face, it has 12 letters that spell out Jackson Benny. Yeah, sure is nice. Well, I might as well start using it right now. Rochester, you set it to the right time, and I'll plug it in. Okay. Uh, it's 11.30 now, so I'll set it to... Pull it out! Pull it out! Pull it out! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Rochester. I didn't mean... Rochester. Rochester. Oh, my goodness. Rochester, speak to me. <laughs> what are you laughing at? The lights lit up on the Christmas tree. <laughs> oh, good, good. Merry Christmas, Rochester. Merry Christmas, boss. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs>